T-Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates, or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this sixth anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island. Harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies 
or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main 6th anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The day island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The night island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates, or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this sixth anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor Welcome ladies and gents and we are here in the grand finals of the PUBG Mobile Champions League 2024 Spring Split with me Choo Choo and Sir Cloud as our cast is here today. Yes, we are finally at the very end. Now three days will decide who will become the champions of PMCL ladies and gentlemen. This is the moment that the teams will be looking forward to. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to the uh, bottom four teams from the league, but that also means that we have found our best of the best 16 teams to go for the championship. And that's true. We do know for a fact there's going to be high contenders compared to previous season. We do see a couple of teams, only around two or three, that pretty much feels like consistently getting on top. But when it comes to this season, I'm loving the fact there's so many contenders here, and it's a very uh, tight race when it comes to even in the grand finals. Now we might actually have the trophy being lifted up by a different champions when it comes to this season, or will it be the same champions again? Yes, that's something that we'll need to look uh, at what's going to happen in the next few days. So far, all the Filipino teams have been looking good. All seven of them have qualified into the Grand Final. So that could be a statement that will come from the Filipino region. But before we head on to our uh, tournament or our first round, let's check out our point system and our format for today. Lucky enough for everyone that just joined us, we're still going to have the same sort of maps and point system when it comes to today. Setting off with Sunhawk as per usual, then we have Triple Irango. Last but not least, we do have two more Miramas by end of today. And also when it comes to the placement points, it wasn't as much as it used to be back in the ancient days. We do have like around 20 points back in the ancient or the start of PUBG Mobile. But this day we're going to stick towards the first place getting that 10 points for chicken dinner. And there's going to be a reduction of starting from 2nd place 6 and the rest of them will deduct only 1 point up to the ninth and 16th place where nobody will get any points they have to rely on only all elimination points which can be 1 point for each of eliminations Yes, so it's going to be the same thing ladies and gentlemen if you've been following PUBG Mobile Esports for the longest time well, 
it's the same for now. But what's not really the same is the hit start points for our team. So Genesis Esports, they topped the league last week and they will have a maximum hit start point of 30 whooping points followed by Harame Bros with 22 points, Yagugaticos 18 points, PBE 16 points, MFG 15 points, Austria Esports 14 points, STE 13, 214 Akira 12, See you soon, X Tiger K E eight TTQ seven points, Myth Clan six, Drek Esports five, TQ four, Exquisite three, Enigma two, and AI Esports, who just made it into the grand finals, will start off with one point. I'm loving the fact that there's going to be a lot of good teams when it comes to grand finals. Not saying that the others didn't make it, actually not that good. They're really good themselves, but it's just sadly they couldn't push it in the very last minute. Now we do know for a fact when it comes to the grand finals, we do have the last sprint here. And we mentioned about the participating teams. Congratulations again to all 16 teams that make it through for the grand final of this season 2024 Spring Split PMCL League Grand Finals here. We do have a lot of Filipino team, but I'm Unfortunately, sadly, I would have to say the only Singaporean teams, two of them, APG Esport and AV, um, or Flash Vision Esport, didn't make it through. Yeah, at least in the uh, previous uh, PMPL C Wildcard, we had at least a Singaporean team in the Grand Finals, but uh, this time, unfortunately not. But we'll definitely be seeing them again next season in summer. But for now, we're going to focus on all these teams. And... Um, Genesis Esports obviously still here. They are two-time PMPLC wildcard champion, so they have the uh, status of um, potentially being the champions, plus the hit start points as well. But the close contenders, of course, teams like Harami Bros, teams like Young Ugaticos, come very close to them. Now, other than just talking about being the tournament itself, we do have some, what it takes to push the players even furthermore. Now, this is going to be a total prize pool of over 60 Sixteen thousand dollars in the in the fray when it comes to the finals only grand final prize pool. We didn't actually add on to as a league stage where we do have different prize pool for each of the map itself depending on the chicken dinner. But this time when it comes to the grand finals, the first place will take away whopping amount of five thousand USD compared to second place. There's a huge reduction there at three thousand USD. While down to third place, we're down to another half a thousand five. Fourth place, not so much different with third. It's gonna be thousand USD now. From fifth to the seventh, uh, sorry, from fifth to the eighth place, all of these guys gonna have something in their hands, which is gonna be seven hundred USD. On ninth place to twelve five hundred, or thirteen to sixteen at two hundred fifty USD. Now everybody can get something out of this today. Yes, nobody's going to go home empty-handed, but only one team is going to go home with the trophy and if we looked at the uh, prize pool it's only going to be focusing on the uh, final placement of all these teams so no extra prize pool for the winner winner chicken dinner or top eliminator so this means that teams can focus on whatever is the best for them to bring home as many points as possible to lift the trophy up now speaking of the trophy here, we're going to start off our kickoff when it comes to the Grand Finals. It's the first sign up of the day. Now nobody want to make any uh, small mistake. There's no room for error at all when it comes to the Grand Finals here. Because it's only going to be three days uh, worth of playing PUBG Mobile non-stop with six maps in between of a day. And not just that, there's going to be in total of 18 maps only between these three days, within these three days. So there's no room for error for any sort of mistake or silly blunders when it comes to uh, the Grand Finals as well as not dropping any balls of any single map because the moment they drop their balls they might actually drop the entire game here and it will uh, kind of detrimentally affect their overall uh, rankings later yes uh, but before we go on to our game we gotta remind all of you of this collaboration with Bentley and PUBG Mobile. There are nine different amazing Bentley cars here available inside the game right now. And it is applicable to any of these vehicles that you can see on screen, the UAZ, the Dacia, the Coupe RB, or even the Mirado. So check it out right now inside the game, outpaced in style. If you guys don't have it, don't worry, you're not alone. We didn't have it as well. But if you do have this uh, chance, and also when it comes to the cash, to actually collect this by yourself, 
just take it away because we do know there's no there's never been repeat of collaboration ever in PUBG Mobile. Once you miss it, you that's gone, and you will actually just not gonna get it anymore in the future. So if you don't want to regret, you want to have all the collections, take it out now. You need to have it in your hands because it's gonna be once in a lifetime collaboration. And if even it's the more reason for you, if you got yourself a real badly in real life, you should have this for yourself as well. So you can play PUBG Mobile. You have your car inside there where you can put up the skin that you do have like a badly like your own in real life. And then like you know what uh, I'm playing like with my car even in in the game itself. Because I do know especially men right don't take any offense over this but i do know a lot of men do actually name their cars in real life right mm, i do have a lot of friends who do that so i guess that's just a, a a big coincidence i guess but anyway other than the beautiful vehicles that you can see here you can add more vehicle skins with this new rp a6 available right now until the 17th of may and if you get it you are able to get a maximum rebate of 720 uc so rps you guys know this by now it comes out every season different concept this is the latest one and while you play the game you reward yourself with some amazing skins I cannot stress this enough because time is ticking, clock is running out and we do know it's only available for 3 months of duration. Now it's going to be starting off March of 17 which is going to be uh, over a week there. I think it's 2 weeks in a row uh, you, if you guys already missed 2 weeks of missions. Might as well buy it right now today because you don't want to miss any more time. It's limited amount of time for you to do all the missions because we ended up on the 17th of May. So make sure you hit that level 100 and get your triple sets of these uh, lilac, uh, lilac finance and also Dread Dog and we have Sky Rain and not just that we have a lot of arsenals for you guys to have put those cosmetics on don't forget about the uh, plane finish too because like me I'm a very broke person in PUBG Mobile so I don't even have a plane finish to start with so whenever I try to play every single map loading into the plane my vision or my V is just super boring grey plane finish which is pretty much nothing on it well, you guys can get something out of this, so get this RP right now. We're going to give you this reminder until every single one of you out there has this RP or the Bentley collaboration. If not, you're going to hear it from us from time and time again. So if you don't want to hear it from us, make sure every single one of you get this collaboration and also this latest RP, ladies and gentlemen. I can assure you that it is worth it with the amount of goodies available inside of it. Uh, even like the Lilac Fitness set, if you achieve a level 100 there are multiple colors for you to choose from so if you don't like purple maybe red is your jam you know you can always uh, go for that instead just like how these teams will go for glory in the first day because you don't want to leave it for the last day now in case you guys already got whatever that we offer just now when it comes to Bentley a, a collaboration as well as the RP even if you have it we're still gonna remind you anyway so you will try to remind people around you to actually have it with you as well so you can you guys can actually do mission together so you won't be alone so not so boring when it comes to you know doing the mission and play uh, the game by yourself you, at least you have somebody to do it, the same goals with you now speaking of today grand finals we do have a very exciting match coming up which is gonna be Sunhawk we're gonna play only three Sunhawk across these three days of worth Prime Finals and I cannot wait to see when it comes to the circle. So far we haven't got a lot of Paradise Resorts sort of circle just yet. I'm hoping to see one here today. Yeah, if, they, if we do get a Paradise Resorts circle, the happiest of the bunch is going to be Genesis Esports. A team that normally drops there and uh, no other team would challenge them. So they will be really happy to get a kind of circle. But we have been getting a lot of, at least for the uh, last few days of the league, a lot of the uh, Camp Alpha sort of circle. So if it goes there again, then it's going to be pretty tough. The team that uh, was the happiest of the bunch to get that circle that time was God of Death 7. But unfortunately, they did not make it onto the Grand Finals. So perhaps another team would take the Camp Alpha Island instead. Now speaking of drop spots and early drops here when it comes to the Grand Finals, there might actually be some changes done by the teams out there due to some teams that didn't actually play. We do have four teams being relegated before. So that means there are going to be four vacancy when it comes to certain spots in each of the maps, Sun Hockey, Wrangell and Miroma later on. So there might be a bit of a shuffle or there might be some clash between some teams 
Then if they do have the same mindset, like, oh, this team got off server and it's not here anymore, we might actually drop into here. So we might actually another team that have the same sort of mindset drop in the same spot where got off server was before. So there might actually be new clashes coming up very soon. But when it comes to the first day, I can actually anticipate a lot of actions gonna come into play. Maybe because they want to test it out what they have been hidden all this while about a secret strategy. They've been cooking up a lot of uh, gameplay that haven't been shown before. And this is the right time for them to showcase it to see if it's actually will work in the grand finals itself yes and uh, this is of course the grand finals and when it comes to the scoring system there will be a head start point in case you miss out on our opening show we're just going to show this to you again so genesis esports if you remember they topped the league during the end of uh, last week so they will have the maximum head start points that is 30 points Following behind them is Harame Bros with 22 points and it dwindles down all the way. So if you notice that after game one, you uh, and that particular team has, oh, why that team has a lot of points when maybe they didn't really perform? Well, that's because of the head start points. Now, speaking of a head start points, we do know how crucial it's so important. It will affect directly when it comes to the grand final points as well, because that's what really matters by the end of the day. That will be determined who will take away the trophy by end of the day three of grand final. Now, we're going to have this run for three days in a row. It's going to be today, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, if you guys who just joined us during the grand finals and don't know what's happened, what really happened during the league takes place back in the days of last week and also the past month for the entire month of March. Now, the teams that you should watch out is going to be GE. That They are the back-to-back uh, -back champions when it comes to the World Cup region, South Asia, uh, of uh, previous PM. We had PM as a... SL or PMPL last season we have so many names these days but when it comes to GE they are one of the most defending uh, champions when it comes to this region and uh, we do have the up and rising not just up and rising pretty much always try to take the number one spot Osha Esport including last season as well now we also have this season MFG and Harami Bro coming up very strong when it comes to the Filipino the only Filipino team that actually do have a great improvement I mean I'm not looking uh, down on the other PBA, uh, like PBE or Filipino teams, but it shows that how much of the progress has been made by the side of Arame Bros compared to the teams that slowly start to catch up here. And I love the fact that Philippine teams now catching up to a Southeast Asia gameplay, despite they being later introduced PUBG Mobile compared to the others. Yeah, let's not forget as well, Austria Esports from Cambodia, they were amazing. Especially when it came to week two and week three, they were really, really strong. Uh, the, the, the reason why they are at uh, number six with only 14 starting points is because uh, their week one wasn't that great. But they caught up very, very strongly on week two and week three. So could they bring that momentum into the grand finals? That's something that we need to keep an eye on as well. I believe that they will be one of the top contenders, especially with the team that has this unique composition of uh, in their first lineup to have two Cambodian players and two Thai players mixed up together. And it works for them. Yeah, I kind of agree, especially Rapul. I think he got himself multiple MVP for this season. There's no stopping this guy, not just that. When it comes to getting two different regions to play in the same lineup, like we mentioned about Gui Red Bull, both coming up from Thailand, if I'm not mistaken, uh, playing alongside with the Cambodian players of Astro Act of Province Skynet. Now imagine the complication between the players down there. It's going to be difficult, but lucky enough, Skynet can speak both languages. So Skynet happened to be the bridge for all the teams down there. But at the same time, it's actually not bad this is what we love about esports and pop and also gaming in general you get to learn a lot of new languages despite that you're not actually that uh, person that born into that nationality but you get still to learn a lot of languages because you play alongside with your teammate they they kind of direct or indirectly teaches you about those languages so i'm looking for for osja esport how far can they go in the future not just this season which is going to be reflecting their next season as well yeah, I mean, they will be playing for another two more seasons at least for this year, so we'll definitely see them. So, like what you say, right, uh, with, uh, with the performance that they've shown, it will be really interesting to see how they will grow in the following season. Since this is also their first season having this sort of combination together, so maybe that's why their first week was like kind of 
rocky but when it came to week two week three they somehow found the formula and it looked really good for them for Austria Esports. Uh, other than that, I think um, another team that uh, showed a lot of promise uh, during week one especially, but when it came to week two, week three, they start to falter. That's Enigma. Now, Enigma, a brand name that is, uh, uh, that is pretty popular in the Filipino region. I believe that the fans would expect a lot more from them. But personally, I do want to speak more about Enigma later on, but I do want to highlight a bit more to its, our top four teams here, which are going to be Haram, Haram and Bros, uh, MMFG, and as well as GE. Now, we do know when it comes to the first week, like you mentioned before, Enigma really showcases their talent and potential when it comes to the first week. But when they uh, their play style or their strategy being adapted to all the other teams, it feels like they're, having catch, uh, they, 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 they're being left behind, not just that. Enigma don't have some trouble to readjust themselves with their environment to um, to have those flexibility of variety of strategy to counter attack again or counter the play style of the other teams whilst we talked about the other four teams you mentioned just now like example here team Harami bro despite to be introduced a bit later for um, compared to all the other teams we do know for a fact that few also one of the most um, veteran players I say uh, where it was the days of PMCO literally zero season where it was a straight zero ground starting off of uh, PM, PMCO days that time but we barely see um, few actually play a lot so I assume that few more towards a sort of the appointed leader when it comes to experience and sharing gameplay trying to adapt a variety of strategies in case they're being overtaken by the other teams like in the case of Enigma that's what they're lacking here right now but team Harami bro I really love their picking off a Duralis from West Point Mamba last season now this is the big addition to its team Harami bro because he brought so much value for this team yeah, as they call it, the uh, Filipino Terminator. And true enough, he is the PMNC top eliminator, especially when he came to the Grand Finals. So he definitely deserves that title. And he is the uh, top eliminator for Week 1 and Week 2 during the league. Week 3, it was Red Bull. So Red Bull's up there as well, as we talked about him earlier on. So a lot of these amazing names, amazing fraggers, and amazing talent as well that we look forward to seeing. None of the names came from Genesis Esports, so that could be the bad that will strike in the grand finals but without further ado ladies and gentlemen we'll jump into game one of our grand finals let's head on to San Hall heading into the first smallest map of the day starting off with San Hall which are Beautiful flight of this splitted map with two side here, but it does favor a bit more towards our left side, which is going to be the west side of a map. Whoever wants to drop a rank up, oh, but there's going to be a high chance of a circle will favor towards that side as well. Because so far, it's so rare to see the circle just loft go towards the eastern side of the map around Lakawi or Camp Rago. Now, that might just be the case here today if we actually jinx it. Now, speaking of this map, we do have our eyes on to lock of Bootcamp because we do know Bootcamp always do have a lot of team fighting up there including Enigma sometimes, uh, Enigma sometimes but will there be any other contenders? Yeah, will somebody else try to take the wave? Because as TE I'm looking at Newbie seems to be a bit split from the rest of the team. Well, to answer your question earlier, looks like Enigma is going to let go of Bootcamp to time to quit eSports. Instead, they're going to go to Cave. So, switch off a uh, drop spot here for Enigma as a start. But speaking about starts, looks like we got Jipna here knocked by the top. Uh, first contact made. Top. Taking out team. West TQ. Having a bit of uh, a good start, but coming up from the side of Dry. Now, Dry is another team that we should not look down. Uh, I do know a lot of teams underestimating them, and we have not put them under the spotlight too much. they definitely being a bit of underrated so far, but Dread, if they want to go for the kills, they want to go for the points, they actually can. They are the type of team that's really love to play as aggressive, if they feel like doing so. It depends on their mood swings of the day. Yeah, and I'm sure they are up for the game today. Uh, it's just that uh, unfortunately things happen and they lost that one player early to the top. So speaking about uh, the quarter, the top 
his teammate Popeye here, now it's his turn to play this round alone at this stage of this tournament. And 2 1 4 Akira is going to be around this corner. They know he's there, and he has the DDS. So let's see if he can pull it off, but no. Knocked down from afar by H2R. H2R, Akira just taking out a tq's player even though top just now got a great start there's gonna be a bit of exchange of hands when it comes to the points smart i think it's the first time looking at smart playing maybe i didn't spot him out but it's so hard to see him tq actually put him in a lineup when it comes to the first day of the grand final spot up the entire crew of 214 kira is thinking about his snap stat but if it's not being careful both his backside kind of bare to be open for bullet shots towards this guy. <laughs> Seems to be connect just a mine of those bullets, but unfortunately he didn't score any. Yeah, it's, uh, he pulled the trigger when uh, the members of 214 Akira got into the UA, got into the UAZ. So the UAZ gave them protection, hence 214 Akira survived it. If not, he could have gotten probably a knock. But if he pulled the trigger early when they were running to the vehicle, then maybe he could have got it. But yeah, it was just about the matter of timing. Speaking of timing, they do have a lot of time for now. Nothing seems to be uh, pressuring the players too much except for the early skirmish. Just a tiny, tiny um, greetings happening between some teams at TQ, Dread, as well as 214 Akira early on today. But everything is still shiny and smooth for all the teams. Now, we do mention a lot of teams when it comes to this first half of the overall rankings here. But don't forget about the teams at the very bottom. They are the ones that really have so much determination, so much drive to prove themselves this season. Now, AIE Sports, can they do that? Hmm, AIE Sports. The toughest hill for them to climb because they have only one hit start point. So even at the start of this game, they're already 29 points away from Genesis Esports, who's at number one. So it's, they, if they want to be the champion, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough road for them. But uh, of course, nothing is impossible. They just need to pull off a lot of uh, chicken dinners with a lot of eliminations to catch up onto Genesis Esports. Because we have to consider that Genesis Esports will be collecting points as well. So they need to really, really work it out. Just what, what Harami Bros is now working out, they are taking this high ground instead. So they're going to take this uh, pole position within the circle. Speaking of the circle, nothing's changed so much. We still have around less uh, than three minutes for stage two to hit. So you can just watch it at home. Don't forget to tell us in the comment section who do you think will take the trophy away when it comes to this season. Or if you don't want to go that far beyond too long or too much further into the future, can just give a bit of your predictions who do you think is deserving to win when it comes to the sun on map because i personally feel like everybody has a shot at this because our army bro rage oh worst timing possible oh just so we can get away from this yeah lucky enough like the uh, angle does not favor his opponents to shoot him continuously so he got away but uh, he also got information that the uh, time to quick is on top of this hill what a prime positions in this first circle at least so now that they know that they're there, they will definitely put a lot more attention onto them. Speaking of the pressure, well, a lot of teams happen to be just parking themselves around the bridge area in case anybody wants to try, try to cross over. And speaking of pressure, we do feel the nerve a jittering of the players. They don't, they, they are not willing to make a lot of uh, big plays early on, not willing to take too much risk. But everything seems a bit calm before the storm as per usual. But Gus trying to find another player just across that river. And TTQ is also another team. I don't know. Personally, I feel like Drap TTQ and TQ, even AIE Sport, they have a shot at this. Because we've seen them three weeks long. We saw when it comes to the final week, everybody just start to lose themselves. And all, all hell breaks loose. Everybody just feel comfortable when it comes to the final week. Hopefully they bring that sort of momentum even into the grand finals, not overthinking too much. Because usually it's always the case of overthinking for the players to start making a mistake in the grand finals. Yeah, I mean, uh, every team has a shot, right? So uh, it's a matter of them controlling their own destiny since they are the ones playing the game at the end of the day. And although it's not like a fresh, fresh start, like everyone starts from zero, just like how it's done in like uh, previous seasons, it's obviously a little bit different uh, this season. So they just need to work out a little bit more harder. So everyone has a 
has a new start here, considerably. Of course, on paper, the points on the team have a little bit more, but in general, teams with a good start mindset, just like Yanku Gaetikos, will aim and to get the title and the championship. And Romeo Boy will aim to get that first one point. Mewtwo, despite the name that we do know Mewtwo always flies, but this one cannot even fly. They don't have wings for this Mewtwo of Y, uh, MFG, sorry. And we do have the very usual common circle, which is going to be Cow Circle. Might actually just drag down or sh shift it down to a sort of top mock in the case of the NP circles around stage 5 or 6 later on. We do have a lot of teams still inside the blues, and this is not great. But as per usual, we expect our Jet Esport to come in very late. That's going to be their signature move when it comes to the season PMCL. But for the side of CU Soon and PBE, they might actually be gatekeeped by Enigma. If Enigma will not willing to shift away from Big Cam, those coming up from Cam Alpha will have a bit of a clear path. But not so much when it comes to MF. Oh, but look at this. Exquisite's in the fight right now. Look at our next hit. And now Unknown is just below Luma. Okay, now okay, five is Where did the Beagle come from? Okay, as long as that Beagle is also back up, that's what they want. Flash from the inside gets knocked down and eliminated. Now Unknown is alone in this building. Trying to get to three from Exquisite. And he fights back. Gets the one knocked down and secures the point. Sadly, aside of Unknown, there's going to be just a little moment where he can actually stand up finally falls down to the hands of Nate's and it's going to be the shotgun game. So you know that's going to be the Sunhawk plays all over the game, all over again of DBS and S12K when it comes to those shotguns. But now we have G only leaving Yucca alone to do the, all the work by himself here. Yeah? But it's going to be him being cornered down and boxing by the rest of XQ as it's down to two more players. If they botch this one, it's going to be the end of the entire run for the Sunhawk of the day. Yeah, exquisite. Got to be careful here. Nate onto the other side. Yatka is very, very low at this moment. Nathan trying to finish him off with that Nate. Okay, cooking this one up. Nate will be tossed out and they won out against FMG. MFG. MFG becomes the first team in the Grand Finals to be eliminated. Nathan. Close enough to watch this one out for MFG. Unfortunately, despite they got himself quite a head start, have to bail down and the first team to go out early on. 2-1-4 uh, Akira start to take Nate to a side of TQ. They've been chasing them for quite some time now. The top's still alive. And Rankid, we do know Rankid love to shut down his uh, victims right across. And he will not back down. He will just obsess to take out those eliminations by himself. But something about Rankin, unfortunately, I have to break the news here because I feel like he's a bit not so much of a teamwork player sometimes. He might actually go solo and just lead the initiation by himself. But instead of PBE, they do have a bit of trading, but on their side, they don't lose any men. Hmm, yep, yeah, um, they can still come on board, and I don't see any other team on the minimap at least close by, so oh, I should be alright. I can't say the same for the top though. Knockdown and uh, Rankit is uh, the one to pick up that elimination point out of the top. The guy who opened up our game today with his own elimination. Fire, see you soon. They do have to move right now. They are at the edge of the circle, but not too far into the center. Speaking of the center, we don't have too many teams actually playing the blues. A lot of them are already in the center in the first place. So whoever is actually late here is going to be a bit of a problem for them to make it through. Ooh, look at this. This circle move towards the left side. Time to quick. Still have one of the uh, best positions possible. That high ground with that compound where they were at the last time we saw them. Still within the circle. So that's pretty nice. But I will be a little bit more worried for the teams in Camp Alpha Island. Look at the save. And Wako is still there. And they're kind of locked in with each other. It's all about a three or three or four way war here when it comes to this sort of circle around top mock we do know it's gonna be a lot of compound in between so many buildings for these guys to hug their corners onto but whether they do have enough utilities when it comes to those uh, hand grenades those flashbangs those smokes and those mollies can actually put it to work because that's going to be the most important utilities when it comes to this sort of circle it's not really an open space but you have to clear the corners if you want to rush into certain compound or certain building but in the hands of 214 Akira I think they know what at stake here when it comes to that sort of circle they will be meeting them all at the end of this run 
So he's trying to scout out as much utilities as possible, or maybe just trying to find out if there's any more players around. Because they hurt those twitches, they hurt those footsteps early on. It's none of them. Uh, they definitely say that's not my footstep. They didn't. I didn't make it any, any sound before. This must be somebody in the air. But they just wasted too long, too much time to find that one particular player of TQ which was safe. Yeah, they're really taking the time though. But I guess they're pretty confident because they have uh, two other teammates on the main peninsula, so they know that they do have like a a, a checkpoint that they can go to, even though they come in a little bit later. But uh, looking at the elimination fee, we talked about Dread Esports, and they just lost Moy through a long range shot by another team, and uh, that's AI Esports just beside them. Now we do know Dread. Esports and AI esports is pretty much on par when it comes to the firepower, when it comes to strategy, very similar as well. Because these two teams are unpredictable. They, whenever they feel like doing or just going, they're just going to go for it. They don't think twice. But the thing about them is maybe they don't think twice, but maybe they think 100 times too much at this case. Where size exported out the players that have been tossed around with the smokes just now. Uh, but he's not willing to stand just yet because the sniper tower were actually just being revealed to us, exposed to us, uh, the players of Dread Esports if he start to stand. But the problem with where size they actually stand is not really in the safe zone. If they want to gatekeep them, uh, the rest of Dread Esports player for AI Esports, they still need to make sure they will not have to expose themselves and run away from the blue zone. If not, it's going to be sharing the same boat where size actually stand. It's not the sweetest spot there is, and it's the best time for him to leave because the rest of the teammate is quite far from his distance. Hmm. Well, the bad news is that the circle is not at them at all. So now the circle might shift away further. Let's see where it goes. Ooh, okay. Uh, time to quake half of it. Snow can kind of hold, but GE in the middle of the circle, I mean, they normally drop in Paradise Resort. So for them to just move on to that left side, it's a quick rotation for them and they can secure one of the best positions uh, faster than other teams. Well, there's a few guys happen to be all Jet Esports fans. They're returning all the way from downwards towards the right and then towards the northern side. There's a lot of long rotation coming up from the side of J Esports on the side of Sizak. I mentioned I did mention early on it's not the sweetest spot that is. He should have joined the rest of the team to get into the safe zone. But he will go down in vain, possibly, if Naughty Boy cannot help him up. Because the rest of AI Esports is a bit too far. But speaking of Enigma, Leon, see you soon versus Enigma. Will Lulu trying to just take down the players of Enigma or not? Here comes the Nate tossing, hoping he can clear off some corners on the side of Lulu. Oh, but uh, Lulu Tf. Now he needs to eliminate, together with his team, the members of Enigma who has this compound. Within the circle, Lulu Tf laid onto the other side, but oh, while this is happening, Exquisite Esports, who had a lot of action earlier, just got eliminated, but at least they got three elimination points, though at number 15, Austria Esports in action as well. Well, they tried to rush into STE when they were fading from the northern side, but STE take this matter into their hands, and one by one dropping their bodies in front of it, and Austria Esports, the first few to be eliminated quite early on in this round. Yeah, unfortunately, a team that showed a lot of promise in the league, but now out, but it's game one. But in game one right now, we do have GE against Harame Bros. Look at the elimination feed by focusing onto Enigma right now. Kupa healing up. QB goes in. QB gets a knock, and QB wins the fight. Enigma, despite they having a bit of rough start during the league stage here, but when it comes to the grand finals, they show us a lot of promise. When it comes to the sprints, it feels like they prefer the sprint over the marathon. Another team bites the dust, which is going to be Draft Esports. For now, we're down to 12 teams. Another two we join very soon because when it comes to stage 5, it will hit in less than 20 seconds. Here we go, long range by Kaya from the high ground. We'll finish off QB immediately. The other members of Enigma can't do much. But what is Kaya going to do next? Because now the blue is on to him. You heal up first. It's time for him to go. No way for him to save zero. It's all on to Kaya now. The rest of us uh, see you soon. 
have to fight against two teams at the same time, which is going to be Enigma and Myth Clan happen to be just butting into the business as well. Shroud pushing himself way beyond the rest of the team here just to shut down see you soon. But speaking of the next circle, there's going to be Harami Bros compound it is. And he got himself not just compound on building, they covered, dominated over the center and even the streets in between. So there's nobody can take over the other side of the compound or building as well. While the rest of them are still fighting for their life just to get into the center. We're going to have um, the teams in the center just now. Uh, I think it's going to be Harami Bros. Not even breaking any sweat at all to get the most comfortable sweet spot right, right where they're. Oh, they broke a sweat with Genesis Esports since they lost one player. I guess they were neighbors at some point. But now for the teams just by the edge of the circle, Playbook Esports joins in onto the party. Enigma now has them to deal with and Koopa, super duper low. Mon boy cooking his mate. He toss out onto the door, he should be able to get it. And then he, he did he? He did not yet, so the fight continues. Mon boy thinking i should save my friend or should i just go for the nade i should save my friend or should i go for the nade i should go for what at this point because right now caps like not thinking anymore just go in with the dbs he didn't save his friend he didn't go for the nade oh. but at least michi do some work alongside with the rest of bbe with gerald as well oh my god that was really close for mumbai he couldn't decide but let his friend decide for him instead Oh, that was the uh, very desperado move, but uh, totally understandable since they, it's a fight that they cannot uh, avoid. But now we have Murph Clan, and they saw everything that happened. Shot with a smoked up vehicle, if we want to charge in, it's a bit of a risk, so he's going to start somewhere in between. Instead, the long range from the other side will knock down Raimon, but Shroud knocked down instead. Now it's down to DZ to go and save him. Gerald, don't think too much. Come on, PBE, don't overthink this. You got what it takes to actually take them down. Charles, like, I can see Shroud. But on the side of 214, Kuron, there's gonna be only a wall <laughs> that gonna save him for now. That less than two meters, square meters. And Akira, oh, rank it. There's gonna be, I'm just gonna stand here till the death reach mm. and greet me. Oh. And rank it, just welcome the mm. death as his old friend. Here it comes yeah. the burn and the barbecue. Oh. He's not roasted. <laughs> the wall actually saved it. Wait, ow! Wow, okay, okay. The angle wasn't uh, good enough. Oh, instead, his nade almost knocked down Newbie. That's a nice counter. But you gotta think about it, right? Even if he moves left or right, he has to tank the blue and he'll be out in the open. Pretty much nowhere for him to go. Now, 762 is raining everything onto Radcat, but Radcat is just immune to all the throwables. Oh, 762. Still counting his days down there with numbers still. Seven, six, and two. And I have to count for how many much time longer he can actually leave while Jerry is still gonna count for the uh, trajectory. Finding Myth Clan Joseph just across between these rocks. Hoping it will connect for once, but for the rest of the team, Edward, the rest of the team still fighting while Jerry and the rest of PBE just invested so much. Invested. Committed to a uh, Myth Clan for now. Devon knocked down. But happened to be, I feel like Myth Clan just being spotted out between too many teams at the same time. Mm, yeah, Myth Clan uh, drawing a lot of attention. But uh, they also want to draw points for themselves. So Playbook Esports will be their focus. And move over to Genesis Esports on the northern side. A couple of them, especially Murnat on the outside. But I guess he tries to lock out 762. Who's just across them. Time to quit Esports Eliminator at number 6. One elimination point as Myrna wants to secure that one point out of 762. The moment you got Blast, that's the very moment also you're being taken away those blessings from their hands. That's going to be all right. I'm a bit frustrated. The shift of the circle moves away from them. It actually favors the Myth Clan for this time. So they decided, you know what? Since our blessings have been taken away, we're just going to shut down on STE, take a couple of eliminations in the process, and just cut across all the other teams who are fighting as well to get themselves surviving the center. And one of them is going to be PBE for their next contender, which is going to be Myth Clan versus them. But at the same time, Arame Bro spotted out Shroud out from behind oh and here sorry, we go he shroud yeah sorry yeah shroud is uh in the circle pretty nice position to be in as you can still lock out a playbook esports but genesis esports coming in from the northern side of course shroud blows up his vehicle so that it will not blow him up instead but the molly came from mom boy there's the opening for playbook esports to charge in the other members of myth clan is on the other side they cannot really see playbook esports now 
Master Ichijii. They want to secure this first chicken away. They definitely want to have a very great start with setting up the tune for the rest of the tournament and giving such a great vibe. Just psyching out all the other players out there, knowing that, you know, we were champions. If we get this chicken dinner, you guys know we're going to get the trophy this year again. That's what the message being portrayed on the side of uh, side of GE right now. But they're leaving with only one last player. But lucky enough, Master Ichi managed to pick up on Westy. He's going to be happy for now. But look at how they're boxing into it. It's the side of GE. DZ on the then being spotted out by Ramon. We're leaving it down to three more players. Players. It's going to be two from the Philippine teams, BBE and also Harami Bros fighting against GE. Here we go, Genesis Esports by the edge of the circle, but we got for the Relis here on screen. The top eliminator for Harami Bros and the name came from EG to knock down range. And the Harami Bros only has one active player left. Genesis Esports also won. We got EG here, Playbook Esports. Three players in front of EG. They could probably score this chicken dinner. They have the best chance. Now down to 3v1 on the side of PBE, despite it was thinking too long before. There's this spot at range. Arame Bro is going to be only one last player standing, crawling at the state, not really standing anymore. Arrange just couldn't actually be held by anybody. Pedrales is going to play and he got on go, one. Go he knocked on one, but it's not going to be enough. We're down to GE who lasted long enough. Master EG 2v1. Can he clutch this? Go time for EJ, but no, it's going to be play both these boards to score the first chicken dinner in the grand finals. Mumboy, Raimo, Michi, and Gerald takes it back home, representing the Filipino region. That was a close one, by the way, and they almost botched it for the side of a PVE just now. Even this party got himself quite a number of men before. I think it was a four full squad and then taken down by the side of Myth Clan play. And not just that, there's also GE close enough. We've seen a 3v1, 4v1, even clutches it during the league stage. But when it comes to the grand finals, it's going to be a totally different ball game because of how much confidence you have to have during the grand finals. But regardless of that, we have to congratulate PBA who scored himself the first chicken dinner in the grand finals of PMCL. Yeah, and they had a tough round because they were like by the corner and then a lot of teams looking at them, including Myth Clan from the distance, their teams like Enigma, and they, they had to fight and they want all of them to score this chicken dinner. So it was a hard round for them, but they made it happen. Let's check out the best moments from the previous round, ladies and gentlemen. Here are the highlights. And uh, Playbook Esports got 11 eliminations in total. But on the side of a squeeze it or SQS, ah, unfortunately, they love to fight early, but we do know there's going to be some teams that we love early fight. One of them is going to be Enigma and a squeeze it. A squeeze it, I think, is more of a, you know, roll the dice kind of situation. Sometimes they want to avoid those unnecessary conflicts, but conflict just fight them. Trouble is their best friend in this case, but unfortunately for Ultra Esports. This gives so much opp opportunity for MFG, even Harami Pro and GE to secure more solid head start compared to uh, before we start the game of the day. And uh, speaking of um, Osja Esport, uh, will they come back for the next rank of man? Because we do know they're not really, you know, not many teams really solidify their stance when it comes to sign up, but when it comes to the wrangle, it's something else entirely. Well, we got to celebrate our MVP, the first MVP for the Grand Finals, Gerald from Playbook Esports. Three eliminations for himself, set 165 total damage, four knockouts, four assists, 246 heals, and obviously maximum time when it comes to survival inside of Sanor. Scoring that chicken dinner for Playbook Esports, and I must say, they worked as a unit really, really well. I agree. PBE, when it comes to team play, they are pretty strong themselves. But don't. I mean, I mean, in, no, it, not in a bad way. But am I the only person? There, I don't see Jerry a lot when it comes to the MVP of the match, right? But it feels like somebody photoshopped his face into this body for some reason. I don't know. But it just maybe it's just me. But you know what? Congratulations on Gerald. He got himself the MVP of the match. And we do know when it comes to team play. These guys do have the best team play that is among the Filipino teams down there. And BBE, I say, they've got what it needs to, but it's just sometimes don't overthink. Then we saw how much they were overthinking this round. 
Well, most importantly, they scored the chicken dinner. So that is 11 eliminations, 1,718 total damage, total knockouts of 9, total assets of 8, and not even 1,000 heals. But they lost one player in the process, so it was not a perfect game for them. But they still scored this chicken dinner, and of course, they would take home the most points possible amongst other teams in this round. Now, is it enough to overtake a Genesis Esports with this chicken dinner? Probably not because of the difference in the head start points, but it is still a good start for Playbook Esports. Yep, uh, with double digit eliminations as a start, I mean, like this time is setting the tone for the entirety of the tournament. That's going to be the minimum standard for now, which is going to be throughout the entirety of the Grand Finals. We had uh, 21 eliminations before, that's going to be the standard highest achievement, the gold standard that is when it comes to the teams with the uh, record holding. Um, numbers up there but when it comes to the overall stat a lot of players got finished off by the blue zone like you mentioned a lot of teams have to be extended their fight unnecessary fight when it comes to the first stage that caused them quite a bit of uh come it came out as a cause for the entire team in 56 eliminations that's going to be around four players got finished off by the blue zone instead but airdrop like we do now at sunhawk nobody actually do have the time for the airdrop loot so it's just if you happen to be lucky enough, the adult will drop right in front of you. But headshot wise, quite a huge number still. Yeah, I mean, the teams have been really sharp this round. Uh, sometimes you do see a single digit, but this time we see 14 headshots. So I guess uh, this is what happens when you put like some, the best of the best teams in the PMCL together. They're definitely very mechanical skilled. But here are the points from that round. So other than Playbook Esports, they got 21 points. Genesis Esports, 11 points. Only two teams with a double digit. Followed by Harami Bros, Smith Clan, and a 2 1 4 Akira with 9 points apiece. STE with 8 points. We got Yangu Gadi goes to 7. And then look at the gap here. TTQ, time to quit. 3 AI Esports, Exquisite, same as well. MFG, 2 points. Enigma, SDKE, or see you soon. X Tiger KE, and also the quarter, 1 point. But. Red Esports and surprise, surprise, Austria Esports, no points at all. And this is going to be a factor in the record because Austria Esports um, overall ranking later on. We do know that for a fact, but fans, come on, don't be disappointed or sad too early. It's still going to be the first day. It was only the first map. Now, that's going to be just a warm up round for most of the teams out there. I do wish one day we actually do have going to be um, Mirama as the start of the day. So, we do have a longer uh, gameplay when it comes to getting your hands warming up towards the entire idea of the tournaments. The sun is just very short. But when it comes to the world standings, the gap starts to slowly widen up. But PBE and also GE is going to be only four points of a difference. Well, there's going to be a bit of a stretch here. Harami Bros and also PBE do have a six point gap. Where did they drop themselves so far? Osha dropped straight into the second page here because they didn't secure any point in the last second match. Yeah, zero, zero, zero there, as you can see there on screen for Austria Esports. But if we look at the Genesis Esports, they're still on top with 41 points in total because they have the head start points. Playbook Esports now is four points behind Genesis Esports. Harvey Bros, second place when we started the day, pushed down to third place with 31 points. And uh, Younger Guy goes 25 points. And the points are just not uh, big yet uh, because it's still round number one. So it only takes one good round for any of these teams to overtake a lot of them. Oh, we've seen that before. 21 eliminations, not impossible. I mean, like, these guys can actually pull it off. I mean, eh, maybe it's not see you soon, or maybe see you soon again, or maybe it's just all Jai Esports. Suddenly, they shows up high up there when it comes to the Irango map, the first one of the day. We do know a lot of players love Irango map. We love Irango map. Are you guys watching home love Irango map? If you don't have Irango map anymore now, that's going to be a big problem for all of us, aren't we? But um, lucky enough for everyone, we do have a triple Irango for the day, which means teams that have a score in last on our map will try to push as much as they can the next map yeah so irango will be played three times every day in the grand final it will be the most played map of them all and we're going to roll that the next round onwards so this is where the teams will really need to go all out because it is the most played map obviously before we end our day with the two miramas same same sequence just like during the league nothing has changed when it comes to that and irango can be tricky 
depending on what kind of circle obviously if it's a military base circle of course if it's a 50 50 between the main peninsula and also the shooting range yes of course as well so there are a lot of possibilities that can happen in irango and we'll be looking forward to that so before we head on to that we will be taking a short break as usual we'll see you guys after this sixth birthday is just around the corner a merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new in version 3.1 we have lots of new content and updates for players may you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration in the sky high spectacle themed mode the gigantic nimbus island appears on the flight path if you'd like to begin a mystical journey then grab a parachute and drop on in Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7mm ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90! Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use drying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop, and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode. 
will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time. PUBG Mobile's 6th birthday is just around the corner. A merry 6th anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful 6th anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. 
the Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, game number two in the PUBG Mobile Challenges League Southeast Asia Spring 2024. Where your storytellers, my name is Sir Cloud, together with Choo Choo. And we just came off Playbook Esports, scoring the first chicken dinner in the Grand Finals. And they got their playbook right for the Grand Finals here, starting off with such a high momentum performance. Got himself even double digit eliminations. But can the other teams catch up? Will they start to fall down when the other teams start to rise? Or will they maintain their consistency when they come to PBE? But next one is going to be a different map from Tali, which are going to be heading into the OG map of Wrangle. Everybody loves to Wrangle and everybody loves PUBG. That's why you guys are here. So don't forget to. Give us a bit of a support with like and share and also don't forget to sub the uh, whatever channel you guys are actually watching from this current English channel. And also we do have um, more games to go which can be 17 more maps to go in this Grand Finals. Do tell us in the comment section who do you think will win and which team are you rooting for? Yeah, we like to see the fan base in the comment sections, of course. So show your best support to your favorite team because I'm pretty sure that they will take some time off to read your comments, especially during the long break that we will have after game number three. But as I mentioned earlier on, as long as all of you have not gotten the skin, the RP, we will keep on reminding you that this is still up for grabs. Yep, uh, it's going to be at time again for you guys who haven't got a clue what is going on, what is hot. Uh, we talked about this before, not just the uh, new RP, we do have the Bentley collaboration, which can be only once in a lifetime. There's no repeat in PUBG Mobile Cosmetics. If you miss it, then you lose the entirety of your lifetime. They will not have this soft skin ever again. So if you don't want to regret, make sure you have a grab on any of the skins that are available for you guys. Even if you cannot get the Bentley collaboration, at least you got yourself the latest RP, the Royal Pass, which is going to be the 6th year anniversary. It's going to be 6 year, uh, years old of PUBG Mobile Anniversary Pass right now. Available for you up to the 17th of May. Yes, and if you get it, you can potentially get a maximum rebate of 720 UC. So that's a lot of value there. And speaking about value, what would you get together with the set? It's of course all these amazing skins from vehicles to weapons to equipment to the actual entire skin available at level 100, which is the Lilac Fitness set that comes with multiple colors. So get it right now inside the game because while you play the game, you reward yourself as well. It's going to be a win-win for most of you guys watching at home and playing and love PUBG Mobile in the community. But when it comes to the players, well, they're still going to have a win-win and by the end of the day because we saw the stack of price pool previously. Everybody will get away with something by end of today uh, and end of the grand finals. They will not go empty-handed. So at least everybody got something out of this tournament. And not just that, when it comes to getting that number one spot, that's going to be the most crucial one because it feels like the winner takes all because of how much the gap of the price pool between the second and even the first place. Speaking of first place, they have to set the, t uh, the tone for the entirety of the Grand Finals if they really want to take the trophy a win have the flex rights of getting those championship and also you're telling everybody I'm the defending champion will be GE again will be OSJ Esports will be MFG or a different team entirely because next Erangel will actually mark who will be the kings of Erangel and win away the entirety of this tournament oh yeah Erangel will be big because we'll be playing three Erangos back to back so this is where the teams will really need to rank in the points since it will be played majority of the time not only today but tomorrow and also day after so we're playing a total of nine Erangos and since we have a lot of Erangos any kind of circle could pop up I mean we've seen a lot of circles but you got yourself um 
close enough to his jungle pool, but not really in jungle pool. But it gives a bit of a teaser for you. Maybe that will happen when it comes to the grand finals here, because when it comes to the grand finals, this circle gets crazy. And welcome to PUBG Mobile PMC Grand Finals, guys, because we're heading over to our first Irangle map of the day. Just let's fly into it. Here we go, and it's going to be Irangle as our second match in the grand finals. We can't wait to see how this is going to turn up because this is going to be majority of the time that we will see these players play in. And we have seen all sorts of circles inside Ryaga. We've seen a kind, nice circle inside Gaka. We've seen the main to the base. We've seen the northern circle. Even we've seen a Milta power-ish circle tucked in the corner. Gives a lot of teams this challenge. Now, fly path wise start off from uh, Lipovka all the way up to the left side of Jogo Pool. So teams who normally have to drop in the main peninsula and also on the northern side will be okay. But teams like Austria Esports who like to drop in mid to the base might uh, need to float a little bit longer. Well, speaking of floating, hopefully the case of the circle will not be as challenging or as uh, reprimanding for the players at the start of the day in the grand finals here. But we do have a bit more northern flight path, like how we mentioned before. It might be a difficult for some teams to drop themselves in SMB. Because we do know there's a couple of teams who love to drop in the very south side of the map itself. But maybe they didn't even have to go there. Because any time now, the circle will pop itself. We've actually made a bit of a U-turn. But I think for the Southern Project Esports, despite how far or how near the circle will be uh, with them or against them, they're still going to drop themselves in SMB regardless of that because they just love and they do know they're very comfortable they you know every nook and cranny of SMB looting point so they will go into SMB and lucky enough it's still going to be a 50-50 circle if you want to go yourself as SMB but for MFG, TQ and see you soon a big of a long journey and hype just to get to where Milta is and this might be a happy time for PBE yeah, another circle that sort of favors them. And normally they drop around the air of uh, Kameski Stauber. So for them to enter the circle from the north side, it's not going to be that difficult. They just need to hug the coastline, move in, and they'll be in the circle. Unlikely to be challenged, although they're about 1,400 meters away. It's not going to really damper their, uh, their chances of getting in. Rami, bro, this is going to be one of a team that really have a lot of to offer. I mean, like, I love you. He's a very nice guy. If you guys actually met him back in the days when he's not even um, where he's at here right now. I love during the PMCO times. He's one of the most experienced player. I think one of the many reasons is because when he debuted into PUBG Mobile, that's where... Um, if you guys have no clue about the history of PUBG Mobile, I'm going to give it up to you for some of it. If you're going to have first context, but nothing going to happen here, don't worry. When we had the five weeks long in China, that was during the first ever PMCO off, um, offline league stage over a month at that time. So few was one of the very few Philippine teams. I remember that time they have two Philippine teams or was it one where IDX actually is in the team as well. I don't know what happened to the player where Ice was the only female. Uh, there's... The only female player during that time, or two was it, there's two of female players. One of it is IDX players. And few have a thing with uh, that player as well, I think. And then, because of how he actually mixed in with all the OG players, if you guys know Motto, if you guys know RQ Athena, so he got the exposure, he got the opportunity to learn the strategy of all the other Southeast Asia region that's not in this PMCL and they have their own PMSL at that time and those players are legendary players they are the one who be the playmaker of strategies that be implemented today that's why few is actually so so extremely available for the Filipinos team for him to be the reference and for him to share his knowledge and exposure that he learned back in the days even though it's a very different gameplay compared to the recent ones but he is actually the one that can help the community in Philippines to push to push further where from where they are at today. Yeah, it sounds like the uh, key reason of success for Harami Bros for them to not only win the uh, PMNC Philippines but also to be the best team 
from the Philippines here so far in the PMCL, especially with the uh, starting points that they got, which is uh, the second place from the league. So looking good so far for Harami Bros. And uh, as this, as of now, they're only like 10 points behind Genesis Esports. So if any other team were to be able to challenge Genesis Esports, definitely Harami Bros. Well, don't forget about GE as well. Now, we do know for a fact every single team will have this pride. They're playing for pride, right? I mean, prize pool is a drive, definitely. But there's also the pride of you want to defend your title every single year. That's what gives us a bit of competitiveness in every single game, right? That you don't want to lose against a team that once upon a time you don't even know about them. And you you this champion and you you like... Ah, I lost to this rookie guy, I lost to this player, I played longer than they do, and uh, you know, they still have this kind of drive for GE. And it just shows, and the fact that GE, they don't, I think GE is one of the most, uh, one of the team that have the most, I won't, I won't say oldest, but it is what it is. They don't really swap their players, and I love the fact that they work with what they have. Yeah, and they have been really consistent with their lineup, right? Like the entire year of 2023's lineup is still brought on to 2024. And they're still performing the same. So I do agree, like uh, the drive that they can still maintain after so long is still really, really good. And we can see here, speaking about GE, we got Ichi. And he got shooed away by Exquisite. And lucky enough, he wasn't knocked down out in the open. So he's okay. And that is one of the uh, reasons for GE to still be on top of there. Despite them being pressured, they can still handle it and they can still survive. True. Now, speaking of um, XKS, squeeze it. I mean, Lufa. It took so much for a player to leave the team that bring them forth into the eyes of the world, which was the global championship team. Um, reject Scarlet in their first season in the previous season it was a reject Tokyo in the last one Lufa willing to leave the team I don't know if he's being loaned or just permanently leaving I'm not sure about the roster of reject Tokyo or reject Scarlet these days but for him to make such a big decision the leap of faith we're talking about to play for the Filipino team he's a dual national player he got himself the nationality of Japan uh, he's Japanese and half Filipino as well. For him to actually willing to contribute to the Filipino scene, I think is something we should mention for a bit here yeah, because it's something that not every top player would willing to be to sacrifice about. You know, to leave your already big career behind just to join in and start up again in a community level to bring up Pudge Mobile as a whole down there. Yeah, so uh, just to answer the fact, um, he permanently left uh, the Japanese team to join uh, this team currently, which is Exquisite. And yeah, I guess uh, with his presence, uh, one uh, immediate achievement, well, he actually joined after the PMNC, but at least the immediate achievement is that they got themselves into the Grand Finals of the PMCL. So that is a great start. And he joined them later after the PM, uh, PMNC Philippines. So uh, with the amount of time that he has spent with the team, he's still able to show that he's one of the top players around. And he even got an MVP for himself as well. So like what you say, right? I really like the uh, fact that he came back to his home country to contribute back to the scene and that brought a lot of excitement to the community of uh, PUBG Mobile in the Philippines. I wouldn't say his home country um, because he got himself dual, <laughs> dual national down there. Very well is actually his home country. So, But it's his home regardless. He got more than one home. That's something that's very uh, lucky for all of players and all uh, as a human being out there. I would love if I got myself a two home thing. But the thing is, not very lucky for the players is the circle just happened to be really challenging the first one because it's going to be 60% of water. That's not enough land. Look how concentrated and colorful. It's like a very small slice of pizza to be eaten by all the players. They're so hungry right now. Yeah, it's not the first time that we see this kind of circle. We've seen it before. So it looks like it's going to be a repeat that we have the best 16 teams from the league here. And being the best teams, they want to challenge each other. And we can see some teams finding opportunities to crash onto each other's compound. STE not able to find an opening, so they'll be still on the outside. But as we look at the minimap even, like teams moving into the circle, it will get really, really cramped and they will need to find space as they come in a little bit later. 
It looks suffocating to me. It's beyond cram. This is like something that we see in a sardine can. But back on the side of PB, who just won themselves the last... Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, they actually won themselves the last chicken. And Jerry was actually the last MVP. Now, Myth Clan it feels like they're having a beef against the side of PB. They've been chasing them down since Sunhawk. Even in the next Sunhawk, it feels like it's something that... Uh, gonna be eternity of chase between these two teams. Fated to be meeting up quite early again at stage number two, but they fight against each other way too early. Well, I do believe when it comes to long shots, one boy is pretty good, and, and it's gonna be PBE trying to uh, have the first contact made. But Mr. Clan, they not so interested into fight against PBE, knowing the fact that you know what they are actually at the edge of the circle. It's a bit too early, but they will try to fire back, but it's not gonna click anyhow. But for the set of strangers, they're not that strange anymore when it comes to fights. And Enigma as well. We did mention about how AI, Enigma, and also MythClan love early skirmishes. Hmm, I'm waiting for the early skirmish here in this round. So far, we saw some early skirmishes, but nobody got eliminated yet. One player from Playbook Esports down, involved in that early skirmish, but not revived yet. Interesting enough. I wonder if he's out in the open now, but looks like he's back up. That should be a long range knock. But we can see that Milta is getting crowded here we already have two teams at least on the minimap we'll probably have more on the left side of milta and yes we do with uh, enigma coming in shroud spotted Jarrow pretty low himself but i think he's using just bandits on there michi taking on tq pbe they do split two ways here fighting against two teams at the same time that's bold with what they have left i still managed to still secure out of all the fights they've been in involved in, they got themselves one of nations and got themselves quite an upgrade of loot as well. But the circle just gonna mm. give it a better day for everyone. Why do we want to give them land if they can actually swim? Let's swim, everybody. Wow, 50% of water still with the stage of the circle. And man, it's either like you play, you hug by the beach, and uh, that is like you really need to play with the terrain. Or you'll be out in the open, or you'll be gathering around the area where just as Esports is at, the only area that has some compounds, but yeah, it's all taken by now. So good luck to those teams who come in late. Exit. We're trying to find an exit out, obviously. Just go straight, exit into the ocean if you plan to. But they can actually play around the rock. Now, when it comes to this soft circle, a lot of them want to play at the edge of those rocks. But on the side of YG, spot out GE. Not a great start for GE, but they fought back. A bit of a one-to-one -one trade between YG and GE players. But the problem is, if they prolong this sort of fight, it's going to be turned into not just three-way war. Because 2 one for Akira is nearby. And another team will be starting to step into the circle. We might actually have a five-way star war here. Yeah, and after all that rotation, we already got the first blood. And uh, the quarter lost one player. But Austria Esports loses another one as well. Skynin, Astro X, looks like in the fight with the uh, Myth Clan. And uh, Austria Esports, as a start, two players down. They got a zero point route earlier on. And if they go out zero again this time, it's a big, big loss for them. Master Ichi shredded almost his helmet trying to look around the forest of the dead trees just across them. I remember, unfortunately, despite they got himself the top tree before, be eliminated quite early on. They'll be pushed down just like how Osja Esport were before. And Osja Esport dropped into the next spot with two more left. Next is going to be the These are the ones that are thirsty and just striving to get themselves the top tree. Only got a pretty rough run in the league. But when it comes to the grand final, it's a different player game inside. The next man being shaman and hammered down by two, two or three teams in the center. Sandwich so much that PBE keep fire onto the sound of the uh, bullets flying over the inside of this man. But he's going to fight all over the place. Even TQ beats for the MFG. Ooh, all the shots are fired. Just to show away teams trying to rotate to their location. So MFG still hold on to this edge of the uh, map. And now SDE, they do have uh, visitors here in the name of the quarter. Popeye and Smat on the other side. Skadi together with his teammate on the other side. So they have a decent spread. But for them to stay long enough in this compound, they must win the fight against the quarter. Strangers, TQ. Skadi, but bits. Split it down, but Scully to be the one that pivotal enough 
to shut down TK if they made a mistake here. I'm sorry I mentioned about Team Quester before. I'm kind of confused. Their name is so, so similar. It's going to be Team Quarter here. But as TE, they want to pick out, but there's going to be another contender. Welcome, see you soon. Will they see this player soon, or will they go back to the lobby too soon? Well, see you soon. They have only two players here. And uh, see you soon. They try to win this fight, but they try to go in. It's going to be so hard. Oh, Scotty. Oh, just right in front of him, but Scotty. Oh, no. He could not aim it because he was just behind that window. And it was countered by Lulu Jeff. What a quick, smart move by Lulu Jeff. Very agile and very reflective of uh, his position here. Yeah, Lulu directs his free plays just so fast, but on the side of Strangers, not so much. Minus 762 trying to just flush out the rest of TQ players. But on the side of Popeye, he's going to be okay for now. He managed to save on Smart, but they don't have that much time and space anymore as, as Strangers will try to pressure towards the side of TQ. But they might actually make an active out. But see you soon, we'll try to shut down on Smart. The moment he opens the door, didn't see him through. This is the time for Popeye to exit out as your AIE spot. Breathing down behind their necks with Enigma creeping in behind. They need to get out of this conflict. Long range here by Master Vape onto Enigma and he's trying to get away. Master Vape still on the outside of the circle, but he has his teammates within it. Now putting pressure on Enigma, locking them out of the circle. Master Vape trying to get a knockdown. The smoke is blinding him. Enigma buying time, but time is no longer on their side. They have to find a solution. Pressure on Enigma. Why is you being eliminated without any sort of point? Two teams out, Rami Bro and YG both happen to be in the top five teams. They have to fight out quite early. This will be detrimental for their overall rankings. But on the side of AIE spot, they're quite spreading out, very thin among themselves. Risky plays, but well worth it if they can the jackpot. But that not so much. Here comes two one for Akira. Just finish off. Another one bites the dust. Bulldoze with those plays by Opti with his DBS. Wow, one of those blink and you miss it moments, ladies and gentlemen. Walking with the DBS. Now we're on to GE. Master Ichi secures his point. And the first point for Genesis Esports, who will be playing the rest of the round without their MVP smile. Playing by the edge of the circle. Their next opponent will be 2 1 for Akira. And to come back to our winner winner chicken dinner, winners of round number one, Playbook Esports against MFG. Oh, the Nate Biax is so beautiful. Look at that. There's a lot of Nates flying over by the side of that PBE. But PBE just tossed it too far. Now MFG exit almost got clipped down entirely. But lucky enough, it actually go against the flow. So he'd actually not, not been clipped up entirely by those Nates being lopped down so far by the side of PBE. Now PBE, they're going to play at the edge, just like where MFG is at, around the rock. But the problem is they're not alone. Just spot can actually spot out their bare back for this out of PB. Now, MFG, if they can hold their angles right, they will run the move in Krenny, they're going to be fine because Zorja will try to shut down PB, but can PB get out from the sticky, sticky situation? Oh, same goes for Enigma too. Can they come out of this sticky situation with AIEs for still locking them? And now we got the Naughty Boy on one angle at the forefront, Coca-Cola together with QB, the duo that has to do it for Enigma. No circle for them right now, but also no further points for Myth Clan as they got eliminated at number 13. Mom boy, trying to take out the rest of Horse Jai. He's to come out from the hiding spot down there. Red Bull. Oh, they spotted out. That's swimming Red Bull. More like a swimming red fish right now. Not so great for Osja, despite having a rough run before, didn't score any eliminations, even in this round. If they keep this going, they might be eliminated and not score any point once more. They'll push down to the bottom 15 oh, in this case. Of 2 on 4 Akira, the nades and the spray. Here comes another crossfire. Oh, 2 one for Akira, winning the fight against Genesis Esports. Now only two left from Genesis that's still alive. And the zone is closing. They're playing by the edge of it. 2 1 for Akira. We got H2R grabbing his vehicle, ready to make that move away. But Wako spots out DJQ from afar. Nice knockdown onto Liquid. Down to two players, H2R and Wako. They're trying to manage with what they have. CTQ, on the other hand, they still have a lot of members. But one knockdown for now. As 2 1 for Akira make a move, a transition himself to where they're not. They want to be a bit more safe, but there's no safe spot here anymore. Everybody hog around those edges at TTQ! 
Waco take the leap of faith, jump straight into TTQ's smokes just now. I was so close. The next Suki spotted IMFG, tried to save the rest of a member of TTQ, being knocked down by Akira players who just rushed straight into their compound, or not even a compound to start with, it's just a tower. But lucky enough, they managed to fend themselves a bit more longer for TTQ. Oh, TTQ. Lucky enough, they still have Zuki alive, so he's going to be the healer for the team now. Popping up those smokes on the minimap, we don't see other teams. But looking at their vehicles, one Ploma, one Buggy, probably not going to be enough, but they'll think about how to deal with that later. As Enigma, we saw them earlier on, locked out by AI Esports, eliminated. So no place on points for Enigma, only one elimination point. Two squats with a full roaster in AI Esports and Exquisite still there. AI Esports spreading out, trying to find the victims. It's going to be 3-1 formation while Red Bull is still swimming. I mean, he definitely had that energy drink to have so much stamina to keep on swimming for the entire stage here. But how much longer can he hold? Because mm. Michi will end the run for the set of Osja Esport. Will be eliminated, did not score any and this will be painful to watch for the overall rankings later. And it's also painful for 762 now. No more first aid. Right to get the back. Oh, that's it. Oh, no. 762 before he goes out to the zone. He took two out. But can he secure the point? That will be the next question. However, great attack by 762. Strangers will be another one to be eliminated. It's going to be GE. Two teams almost got knocked down back to back. But Strangers are going to survive for now. No more full squad except for AI Esports. Will they put their advantage in numbers to uh, go at work here? As it's going to be AI Esports approaching to a side of Liquid. Being finished off by another player across the map. Suki barely hanging on. Exquisite don't really touch the rim of the circle. PBE, they lost it long enough. Despite being hammed down between MFG and also uh, Osja Esports before. I'm surprised PBE is still just hanging on to his dose rock at the coastline. Surprise with this our circle that we have four teams here locking with each other, including uh, the quarter that has CU on the other side. Smart with the snake, he's prepping it up. Zero could be the target. Zero survives. Popeye tosses his own nade across onto Zero, but Zero two nades onto him, but he's still all right thanks to the wall. Here comes the Tiff. So we can see the, the nade being cooked up quite a long time here. Yeah, then explosion hits right on the dot. What a Kobe perfect timing and execution, maybe. If you're gonna finish off the knockdown, and that's a perfect cleanup crew. Coming up, see you soon. They definitely see everybody way too soon to go back to the lobby for them. And as the rest of see you soon, we'll try to finish on finding the last player of STE Miner. Now, can AI Esport get into this business and try to steal away the points now? Well, 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 STE might want to steal away the points out of CU soon now. Miner waiting for the moment. He does not have any nades. You know, he might rain it down on CU soon. Our two teams on the outside. Okay, see Zero grabbing that vehicle. It's probably not going to be an easy target. So he's going to let that one go for now. But Zero's still shot by someone else. Now, definitely not Miner. But Miner is waiting for the right moment to pull his own trigger. Miner wants to stand up against Lulu, but it's just, I just missed the spot. I just missed the perfect timing in the window. And Miner will try to pop the smoke and jump down. He know for a fact he needs to leave the rooftop or around the uh, veranda, veranda area. Around the balcony of the second floor. But Michi, oh well, there's not going to be no point for you. As you deny his own point. But on AI Esports, it took them for quite a bit to finally make a move yet. Uh, here we go, AI Esports, like what you said, it's time for them to make their own move and they have a gatekeeper inside. See you soon though, it's just right below Bunny. So this is the good spot for him to catch them to secure elimination points. Now Miner is still in trouble on the outside circle and with that nade toss on the Miner, that gave Bunny a clue that Miner is still there. Nate, Bunny, Bunny, this is the perfect time for you to pick out. Just next to Bunny, just barely have the visualization to us. It's like Miner tossing that Molly trying to finish off, but Bunny is just too scared to pick. It's just right across him. Nobody's spot out Bunny. No, not there. Down there. Just go for the pick. 
but on this, the other side, STE managed to shut down the momentum of See You Soon by that one wall. Here comes the blue. And Bunny misses time. He doesn't want to waste his bullets anymore. His reserve is running dry. But See You Soon, on the other hand, they need to get out of there. They got themselves no numbers. But they're fighting against minor strangers as well as a uh, eSport player who happen to be full squad still. Well, it will be really interesting to see who finally gets Miner or will Miner somehow win this fight. Our circle, nowhere on top of all the uh, three teams that we can see here on screen. Now we see you soon's call. Are they going to let this one go or are they going to focus on the game to the circle? If they want to focus on the getting in, they must win another fight. But Bunny definitely wants the money in terms of points. Down to only five teams left. Bunny, he's the one pivotal player that can actually take the entire team down there but it's just taking too long and he just exposed himself into the open by not giving and not getting any sort of pointer and his his clips running low as well that's not definitely not the shots that we hope for on the side of bunny but back to a side of exquisite super pickles only got themselves a barricade of one leak it has been out but bunny finally make a comeback and redemption time now he managed to shut down on CU soon and Kai got finished off by the blue zone but we're down to four it's gonna be four v three v two v one and one two train for you way here we go fighting against the team now he's sliced down oh, not like no. this not like no. this you way no. not this no. way oh, my god oh no not like that this slips down Target, but because of the smoke applied at him and he slipped down and because of that you we went down oh no not like this it's gonna be back to the side of pbe who has been sitting quietly at the side of the edges of rock for the longest time pbe mitch is spotted out the reservoir ie spot miner is still there breathing and hanging on while pbe do have two versus three they can outnumber still because PvE, they love the odds against them and they might actually 2v3 if they can actually clutch this. I mean, I'm surprised if Miner can actually call out the miraculous clutch of Chicken Dinner. If it actually wins, now that's jokes on you on PvE and AIE Sports. Well, the fact that he could still survive till now is already miraculous enough. And it looks like AIE Sports, they're not really putting focus on the Miner. So, like what you said, it would be an interesting surprise for them. Circle, obviously, it's not a Miner right now. It's his call to move. This is his time to backstab AI Esports. Now it's going to be snake time for all the teams down there. Miner, the tree snake as we call it, trying to camouflage himself with the white bark of a tree. And Sizek on the other hand, the castle we call it, as Naughty Boy, is the buggy snake. We call them all these names, okay? But the problem is, nobody willing to pick out to see where are the snakes hiding right now. They don't have any reserve of their utilities anymore. They barely got any nicks to push out these players from the edges of a circle. And we're down to five more seconds to go. There's no more circle. It's going to be entirely blue. If they want to make it right, this is the, per the perfect time and the best time for AIE spots to finish off everybody else if they want to secure this chicken dinner. Well, unless Miner comes in and he would do Playable Esports a big, big favor. He's crawling behind, he sees his target in front, but not in a hurry to pull the trigger yet. Now, Sizek is still pretty focused on the Playbook Esports. They do have to move as well. Playbook Esports are uh, two active players that all of them put down to one corner by AI Esports. But still, Miner, that is going to be the big factor in this round. Miner is just waiting for the right time to pick out AI Esports. There's no clue he's behind them. Oh my god, Miner, you have to pull this clutch, man. If this happens, it's going to be a big one. And it's going to be devastating on the side of AI oh. Esports. No team board didn't spot him, man. I got a clear view. Not yet. Wait for the right time. Now, wait. Patience is a virtue, Miner. You have to wait it out. When they start open fire, imagine if Miner scores those chickens. It's going to be epic. Oh man, for him to do that, the two teams will need to be uh, fighting over each other and he come in at the very last minute. Now everyone is holding their ground. This is going to be the Mexican standoff. Miner is still there. But now the focus is on the side. Zach, on the Michi, Michi popping up that smoke and into the circle. But Miner, no surprises, eliminated. But got to give it a lot of respect for lasting that long. A well, valiant effort here being spotted by Mombo in the very last minute on the side of Michi. Got himself... <laughs> It's gonna be here 
the fight has begun. 2v3, who will take away from the Gregor of the Grey Bunny is down. It's going to be 2 back, 2v1, and 1v1. Mono to mono, Naughty Boy versus PBE Michi. Who will take this as they got himself a double digit elimination of the son of PBE? Can this secure more? 13 for now, as Naughty Boy still has full HP. Nate did not clip a bit too short. Oh, Michi, he got no cover. Back, but Mitchie got it! Mitchie! Mitchie through the long range! Still got it! It doesn't matter! No covers, no problem! Because this is the second chicken dinner for Playbook Esports! Brought to you by Michi san A back-to-back -back chicken dinner at that! Not just in the back-to-back -back in the grand finals in two different maps as well! That's gonna be PBE! Playbook Esports plays a different level of game entirely. They make the game work for them when it comes to the grand finals of the PMCL 2024 Spring Split. Congratulations, sort of PBE. I have a feeling it's either Bomboy or Michi will actually take away the MVP this time. We had Gerald last time. Now, can they keep it going? Will we have finally, first ever, the whole day of Chicken Dinner by PBE only? That's a bit too far fetched, but why not, right? Well, yeah, it is still round two, but hey, you know what? Nothing is impossible. Um, but uh, it, we cannot still deny that it is a very good start for Playbook Esports. And obviously, just as Esports, they, would, they were nowhere in the top three, top five. So... For sure, they will overtake Jester's Esports because the last we saw them, they were only four points difference. Now, let's check out the best moments from the previous round. And uh, for Playbook Esports, the final number for them is 15 eliminations and 25 points. The number keeps on going higher and higher and even the game is just being hotter and hotter. I'm loving this grand finals. If you guys missed just now what really happened, yes, AI Esports do have the advantage. You screw it out the window, but man, it's just so difficult for them because they were quite agitated. They were nervous about against PvE where they don't have... Uh, enough information regarding their split just now but also we have to give credit on the side of uh, STE minor lasted long enough if it's not mom boy you know what I was rooting for STE to get that chicken and grab it away for himself to steal it just under the noses of AIE for the PB but regardless of that it was still a very good round and a big number by Michi this is wow. the MVP with thousand over damage by himself yeah, that is almost half of the uh, eliminations from that round. So he got seven out of them with 1,084 damage with two knockouts, three assists, and three necessarily on heal. So a little bit more than Jero, but it's okay. He still survived to the end, so that's maximum survival time for Michi, the MVP for this round, who scored that chicken dinner for Playbook Esports towards the end. Yeah, I love the fact that Michi and also Mumbo work so much together just now. It feels like they are the deadly duo when it comes to PBE lineup. And also, PBE, how much chicken dinner can they score? We will jinx it. We definitely will jinx it. That's why the casters keep on repeating it. So some teams will actually take advantage of that and try to put themselves in the chicken dinner. But so far, PBE Grand Finals, I mean, they are definitely prepared for this Grand Finals. Back to back chicken, two different maps. Will they keep it going? Yeah, they're looking absolutely hard. So let's check out the stats from uh, Playbook Esports with the second ticket in there. Two out of two, 15 eliminations, total damage of 2,737, eight total knockouts, seven assists, and three away from a thousand total heal. But it's all right. Survival time, obviously, they got the ticket dinner, so it's maximum for them with the same lineup they, that they have had. The entire league, no swaps, no substitutions, but yet, this is the performance that they can put up in the Grand Finals. Uh, speaking of me being a bit uh, triggered by my OCD, but I feel like um, another three points will secure all the 7 to 0. So maybe this is the chicken in and they are contributing to as God of 7, who knows, right? That's why there's a lot of 7 numbers in there. But speaking of BBE, I mean, also we have to point out a West Point Mumba. I mean, everybody knows West Point Mumba back in the days. Even Federalis uh, is being split out, West Point Mumba being dispersed out the players. But I have to say, all the players of West Point Mumba, including Michi in this case, do have high value to contribute towards the side of a team. But when it comes to the overall step for all the other teams' performance, and there's still a lot of players that are being eliminated by the Blues. And last time we had four players, this time we had three. At least the number's going down. That's a good sign. 
Yeah, although it's like a tuck in the corner sort of circle. But we also have a increase of amount of headshot. So it's 17 this round. And as compared to the previous round, that was like 14. So the numbers keep on rising. If it goes up further than this, then, well, it's really going to be an interesting uh, grand finals. And that's what happens when you pit together all the best teams in the PMCL. Global use obviously will be more because it's a bigger map. You got uh, more loot, you got more time to use those throwables, so naturally it will be a lot more. And when it comes to a lot, in this case it's 332. That is definitely above average. True. And also when it comes to the current standing, this is where everyone stands here. We want to see this one, the most important numbers of the mall, despite of all the data just now. This one is going to be the match standing first. PBE, despite we thought they were, I thought they were overthinking, they calculated everything perfectly to fit into place. There's going to be a high IQ intelligence, just like how Einstein plays it, PBE plays it that way. That's why they're doing the playable game sports. AIE Sport, on the other hand, they will catch up to all the teams up there. And speaking of teams up there, where are they? All Jack Esports, quite a very difficult position at 15th place. Two times in a row, Harami Bro just being up above sort of all Jack Esports. GE, at least they still stand at the first page when it comes to the match standing. Yeah, and 2 1 for Akira doing pretty okay. I mean, four points is not that bad because, yeah, if you look at the price side, there are other teams that get uh, lesser points like MFG, Myth Clan, two points, Enigma, Dread Esports, and Harami Bros. Harami Bros. especially, only one point. And Yaku Guy to go join the Austria Esports without any points in this round. But when it comes to overall standing, so we do know because of after that chicken dinner, they will overtake a Genesis Esports now as the top performing team. 62 points held by Playbook Esports and they are the only team that has gotten 20 plus eliminations now. They are on a roll. Well, there's only two maps and they conquered two maps. And we still have a lot of maps to go, but so far they definitely conquer everything else. They're not giving any show, not giving any spots or space for any other teams out there. So I love the minds of PBE as a start of the day. Take it away for everything else. Why not? Because we never had the entire day be covered by one team to get all those chicken in. I want to challenge PvE if they can actually do that. If they do, I mean, like, that's going to be great. I don't know. I don't have anything to give them, but definitely I will free them a lot. But GE and Harami Bro, this is not where they want to stand. Same goes for the side of those JE spot. Seems a very shaky, despite they got themselves the head points a bit more than the other teams down there. Now, this feels a bit rocky start for the teams that show so much promise during the league stage. Yeah, I know, right? Like, uh, week two, week three, they were amazing. They got MVPs. They got the most chicken dinners among all the other teams in the league stage. But yet, their first two games in the grand finals, mm, looking pretty iffy. Not any, having any points at all for a team of that status. So, I don't know. I don't know. But And, and on the other end, you have like teams like PBE who's performing really, really well with double chicken dinner. And for this season, it is not about uh, the multiple slots that might bring them to the next stage. It is only about the trophy. So, it is pretty much number one or nothing else. True. And also speaking of the players, right, I'm glad to see it. I mean, like, I'm sad that West Mumba are actually not being together anymore. But the fact that PBE and also Arma bro both pick up uh, not just the side of Federalis I mentioned before. There's also Michi coming into from West Mumba do have so much value. We're talking about these are the players as really remarkable players and now being picked up by the team that really fits them perfectly well. And this is what I love about PUBG Mobile during off season. The shuffle actually do work for some of the team. But will it work? for more when it comes to Rango or was it just a one shot at the start of Grand Finals where they had the momentum for PPE? Don't go anywhere because we have more games to go so see you guys after the break. Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the Sky High Spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. 
Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use frying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time. Welcome back ladies and gents as we walk into our third game of the Grand Finals in day number one of the PMCL Southeast Asia Grand Finals 2024. Day one, we hit it off with quite a high energy performance of PBE. I'm your caster here for today. It's going to be Choo Choo joined by Say Clap to share the dust with me. What a great start for the Grand Finals.
Yeah, two chicken dinners back to back. I mean, what kind of better start can you ask for? Or maybe three chicken dinners later. But so far, great start for them. And in their both chicken dinners, they got double digit elimination. So it's not like that quiet coming in the, at the end type of chicken dinner. No, they work hard for it. So great work there for Playbook Esports, waving the Filipino flag up there at number one place, pushing down Genesis Esports to number two. They're pushing down not just GE, they push down everybody else down there. I mean, man, the gap is just quite big for the first two maps in the very first day of the Grand Finals. And speaking of getting a hat-trick, we had hat-trick before, but I want to see more than hat-trick. I mean, like, we're so demanding, definitely, but we want to see something that's always new because the bar and the standard of every single tournament they just keep rising up. There's no way we're going to go down, right? But before we're starting off the next wrangle map, and then we head into a 30 minutes break for the Ramadan break or the Iftar break, which can be fast breaking for the Muslims out there, we're going to go into the overall standings once more to have a quick look to know each of your team that stands where they at right now. Yes, and uh, Playbook Esports, Double Chicken Dinner, puts them up at number one with 62 points, so they are ahead by uh, 22 points now against Genesis Esports followed by Harame Pros with 32 points and we got SDE 27 points the points are close enough uh, between them to one for Akira as well as Young Ugati goes with 25 points Time to Quick Esports 21 points MFG 19 points Murph Clan at page 2 with 17 points AI Esports and STKE 16 points Exquisite 15 points Austria Esports the only team to have not scored a single single point in the grand final so far still stuck at 14 points at number 13 the quarter nine points dread esports six points at enigma now at uh, number 16 with four points now that 17 points of gap between ppe and ge if they don't score for the next one ge that's going to be problematic for them the catching up game we've seen this before and that happened in the final week where osja esport did pull that one off at the very last minute now we don't want that to wait until the very end because it's going to be a very highly pressured sort of performance for the teams. Now, if they want to catch up, this is the best time to make sure that they really can be confident enough to just maintain their performance instead of keep on playing the catch up and tug of war game. But before we talk more in depth regarding the game itself, it's going to be at time, ladies and gents. And you know what's heading over this side. It's going to be the Bentley collaboration. Yeah, this is where you guys can get a head start among your friends by getting a disc collaboration that features nine different vehicles here that you can see on screen. Amazing cars from Bentley and it can be fitted into one of the vehicles as you can see here as well. The UAZ, the Dacia, the Coupe RB or the Murado. So get this right now because you can outpace not only yourself, but your friends in style with this collaboration with Bentley. But we also have the new Royal Pass out in the game and you can get a rebate of up to 720 UC with it. That's true and it's going to be only three months duration that you need to just go for the missions and you have the perks over 80,000 UC. Now, why would you want to spend a little just to get so much uh, well definitely you have to spend it but you have to put a bit of uh, effort and work in there make sure you put yourself in uh, in the game as much as you can if you already played the game so much I so just take the RP and just do the missions away because while you're playing you don't even realize you actually do the mission anyways if you have the Royal Pass already on uh, for your account so make sure you have all the stats because there's no repeats like I mentioned before in PUBG Mobile it's gonna be once in a lifetime you missed it you're gonna lose it for your entire lifetime now it is yeah it so is. get it right now and don't miss out just like how playbook esports is getting the points in they are not missing out on those chicken dinners so far that is now it'll be interesting to see if they can score the hat trick like what you do say and if they can well well the heat is well the heat is already turning out but they will be on fire 
It's gonna be bombastic in that case, and definitely when it comes to GE, that's gonna be a challenge for them as well, because they are the defense uh, defending champion. Now, I do know there's gonna be a lot of torn supporters in between the comment section. Do we vote for Ultra Esports, but Ultra Esports is not performing? Do we go for MFG? Well, I'm going for MFG. Uh, also, this Harami Pro, where are they? Now, there's gonna be PBE fighting for their pride and a lot at stake here. And so far, we haven't seen any World Cup region being taken the trophy over by the philippine team now if they actually do score this one this is going to be the first time ever for the philippine team to take the trophy into their lands and just secure this one for the season yeah they have not won a major title yet for the region at least so this is so far looking good not gonna lie and not only pbe they also have like all of the teams in the grand finals all seven of them made it so if we do the map then the chances for the filipino teams are looking really really good but of course the competition is tight and the points are still close enough so teams like well chances esports and there's still a lot more rounds for Austria esports to really catch up but they have to stop not getting any points at all in the round now, speaking of the next few points, uh, will PBE get another back-to-back well, -back chicken dinner? Because they might actually just call this one now. Or will somebody else will cut off the momentum? Finally, we get to see another banner flying for the first day of the Grand Finals. Let's not waste any more time. Get into a wrangle. And here is a wrangle number two. Game number three. Before I extend the break, ladies and gentlemen, so all these teams will want to at least leave this round feeling nice before they have a good dinner and we'll come back for another Erango. Of course, we'll be playing three Erangos in total every day and in this Erango, we're going to have a very different life map. This time, we're going to start from mid to the base up all the way to Starbuck Kameski. Now, uh, we have this sort of circle, uh, circle that's really just favoured on the right side, a bit skewed towards Milta before. It was really tough till the end because of how little space of land they have to stand on for some of the team, even force them to actually have a bit of a swim. But if the circle just contradicts and go up north or just around cheating rage this time, it's going to be something that unprecedented, unexpected by the players and the teams that happen to be in the grand final. It was just equal, at least they have a good start. It was a really rough one previously because of how far the flight path and the SMB was before. Mm, I'm also looking at the Novo because uh, Rosal is a later drop, so Jesse's Esports changed their drop spot to Novo, and that is the home of STE. So they will challenge each other for the pride of Novo. Very interesting start here for Jesse's Esports. They drop straight into the city while STE drops on the outside of it. Oh, that's going to be rock and roll music for you guys to start off and kick off when it comes to second wrangle here. But GE sharing a bit of a space, not too much of a space to be shared. Definitely, they're not happy to have to share the loot with another team just nearby. Uh, I'm not sure who exactly that was, but it's going to be Strangers, Scardian 762. Guardian 762 always move as a duo, I don't know why. When it comes to surviving, these two always last longer than the other two, newbie and also minor. But minor lasted long enough just now for the sake of a team. Well, instead of GE, will they have another rough start? If you're being spotted out, there's going to be a big, big problem because they barely got any point progress from the last one as well. Hmm, yeah, so looking to pick up from that, um, especially with uh, a lot at stake here, other than the prize pool, the, the trophy. So this has to be the round that uh, they need to do well because you don't want to go into the break feeling like, um, you know, we should have done this, we should have done that. The points are not that much and you have to like dwell on it for the next 30 minutes or so, um, waiting for the next round. No. They do have a very quiet start, as per usual. There's a couple of players using pistol. I mean, that would be amazing. If you want to challenge yourself using pistols and crossbow throughout the entirety of the tournament. And like, now I'm not going to use rifle because I'm, I'm badass like this. I'm cool like this. I don't want to be the mainstream. I want to take the trophy only using a crossbow and a pistol. And nobody can deny my skills doing that. I mean, like, why not? Show the world what you're made of and show them what you're capable of and nobody can replace you at, this, at that point. I mean, if you can actually shoot so great with crossbow and pistols, 
that be so convenient. You don't have to look too long to find your victims, and not just that, a different set of skills that are required. It's just undisposable to find a replacement of a player like that. Nobody actually do that yet. Still, nobody can actually deliver that. I mean, like maybe you guys watching at home and listening to this sort of like podcast, PUBG Mobile. We're talking right now. Maybe you can actually deliver that if you actually do. I mean, like. Be a lot of teams that want to recruit, uh, recruit you and become, uh, you know, one of their main roster's players. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if anyone wants to pull that off, then that will definitely be something interesting. I wonder if there's like this channel or whoever does specific content related to that. That'll be pretty interesting to watch. But what is interesting to watch as well is between time to quit these bots and as well as uh, exquisite on the other side. Um, oh. TQ, uh, the quarter. Apologies there. Because these two teams, they're not in the circle. They're inside Severny. Don't see them leaving the area yet, though they do have an exit point because they're by the edge of each other. But they don't seem to be interested. They seem to still want to get something out of it. Will that get something out of it? Well, Edward definitely might actually have something this time. Oh, clear shot at that! Chris down on the ground bleeding out. That was quick and swift from Edward. Even a clean one like that. And he scores another. We'll be saved by the rest of the homies of TQ. But for Edward, TTQ versus TQ. This is going to be a bit of a tongue twister fight. But top. Ring around the road. Edward, here comes the shotgun. DBS put it in play when it comes to CQC. And an easy execution by Edward. He scores two. Wow. Two is an opening. Now looking for more, let's see if- it, Oh, Chris got saved, so that's not secured yet, but he got saved instead. So now save on his knees. The quarter, only two active players left. Chris, probably only has bandages, don't see him healing up yet. So now it's uh, time to quick eSports to- Edward, can he spot another one? Oh, Bengal, not this time, he's been punished in an instant by Popeye. Buy some to spray down, finish off Edward, the TQ Gillis, which is going to be fighting against TTQ now. Popeye trying to make a bit of a damage control with what they have got. Edward, despite Scott 2, it's going to be Zuki's time to shine. He's got another 2, and that's going to be their shot of another T-Sibling. TQ eliminated by the hands of TTQ. Mm, first team to go out. But they joined the double-digit club though with that one elimination onto Edward. But still, it puts them at the uh, bottom of the second half of the overall charts. Uh, not the place that they want to be at. But uh, four points for time to quick eSports, so not going to complain about that. And with that number, they now even up the same amount of points with 2-1 for Akira and Yangu Gatikos. GE, on the other hand, Westy happy to be alone up there. I think they're quite nearby each other. Damn, but the rest of the team still having a full squad. It's either you have all or you have none. Where TQ have none anymore. TTQ comes at the cost for that fight. But well worth it with the full squad points in their hands. They lost Edward, yes, but uh, for four points, why not? It's going to be a huge trade-off there. But GE, on the other hand, knowing the fact the circle shifted f away from them, now they have to leave, they have to move. There's not a safe spot anymore, but at least they got all the loot they need. Merne, on the other hand, oh, let me get this one more last bottle. Let me get this one more energy drink. I'm going to go now. And it's going to be okay. Still, they have quite a number of loot on the side of GE. If they want to pick a fight, this is the best time. Yeah, let's see if they're going to do this, though. But Wes is alone. I guess he's going to do the scouting work with a bike. It's fast, but exposes himself uh, too much. So he's going to take the safe route. Just going to move from compound to compound to continue on the loot while they still have STE at the horizon. Two teams are still with each other and they have some of the circle, but uh, the next phase, they'll need to get across the bridge. So getting across is going to be interesting if they move together. Oh, GE Wasty definitely not moving together with anybody. He just all by himself and now scouting his perimeters, get some info, to relay back to the teams if he can actually get any sort of any available information that way. Well, Myth Clan on the other hand, we do have Shroud. Happy to got himself a Daisy and just go straight into the Mushroom Tower. The problem is he doesn't have a, a clue about Opti's position. If he actually just park and pull over to get into the Mushroom Tower, it's going to be his death back. 
waiting towards the hands of the uh, 2 1 4 Kiron. Shout is playing a very dangerous game here. Hmm. Playing the scouting work, so I have to take a little bit of risk. But at least the way he scouts, you can see that he doesn't really expose himself. Trying to get as much information as possible with the TPP. Probably sees if there's any vehicles, probably hear footsteps, and doing so far so good. It takes a little bit more risk, and he probably saw what would happen there. But circle time, pretty similar like before, but not as stuck to the corner. But this time, the hills around Amilta, that will be the focal point. It feels like a rinse and repeat for now. The circle do favors a lot of Milta today, but at least it wasn't as crucial or that tormented circle with too many water ratio before. It was uh, it was okay. It, it's still better than the last one. It's around like what 10 15 percent of water in here, still a lot of space. But will PBE scores because this is going to be another sort of very similar circle if they can pull off what they did before. This is not impossible to have a hat trick back to back in day number one. Yeah, that's my, my not favor, Ichi, as minor, the guy who lasted the longest for STE previously, will knock out Ichi, Ichi taken out, minor no first aid, but maybe he can loot, he's not checking the boxes yet, but he wants to make sure that he's on the clear, Murnat did not follow up, so without any first aid, well, he gotta find some, because yeah, obviously he's in the blue. Minor. With that minor bandage, which is going to be bandages. It's not going to work too much. Well, yeah, at least he got himself a bomb for say. I think he found himself one that's going to be okay for now. In the perfect time. I don't know if Mane can actually see that. He saw the moment. I, it feels like the way he instincts follow through with the narrative of what happened to Sada Minor. He saw the moment he pulled through his HP full. It's like Mane's like, okay, we're done. It's not going to happen here. And GE took a very wise decision not to overextend themselves in this position because if not, they'll be gatekeeped so hard later. And not just that, stage three were hit. And the moment they just leave the blue zone, it would another blue zone would try to shrink and just drown them even further more because of just how late they extend themselves the back. So it's a wise call for GE to start to move. But all GE esports quite scattered here. But I think it's still pretty okay. But so far. Point-wise, they don't actually get much. Ooh, but speaking about points, Mon Boy picking up his first knock and maybe that point, still waiting for the confirmation. But if there's no fallout, it's probably a long-range knock. So no first point yet for Playbook Esports. But it is in the position that they can try to take on other teams to secure their first few points. YTZ, spot it out. See you soon, players. Quite a number of magazines, 300 bullets, ammunition ready to be disposed of. Smile, taking on one of the players from afar. The execution not being made by YG, this is a very dangerous car, he needs to leave. But lucky enough, just made it on time and Cloud parked in the garage. It's gonna be safe. Ah, say Cloud, Prius hurt and he's A-OK -okay now. Now circle time, still at the high ground of Milta. And we can see that there are a lot of teams there for now. I'm looking at Playbook East was our highlight team. So far, they're on the outside circle, but they should have an okay entry in. But the northern side, we have at least three different teams trying to get into the circle. It might get messy there. Speaking of messy and ugly, the southern side and the northern part, it's going to be super, super interesting. Extremely hard to get in, but the one that actually on the left and the right side is going to be quite vague and clear path for them to get into the center. But GE after one the other, this is not going to be happy for them. No more happy hour, no more happy moment. The style, uh, sorry, it's Stranger Esport, STE, just going to hunt them down regardless of how they were trying to part ways just now. I, I feel like mine, they do have a bit of a grudge against the side of GE players. Oh, GE is still stuck in the blue though, man. I mean, they might be able to win the fight, but they need to consider how to get into the circle next. 762 gets taken up by the zone. One boy knocked down by TTQ Liquid and GE still with SDE. Now, Miners together with 762, but I'm not sure if they have enough utilities to heal up. As Smile comes in, putting pressure, forces him go to go up to the second floor. And now Miner is stuck in this building, not able to get out at all. Smile. Barely got enough first aid down to only one last one. But Manet's still having a fall. The smokes will not act to save too much at this point. He needs some more. Oh, a couple of angry grenades. Finish off the job. 
keeping the floor clean. Smile and Monet just finished off fast. He, despite being hunted, despite running away, he made it out live. Monet almost got picked off by the blue zone. Now working as a duo with Small, they're gonna be okay for now. Well, what's not gonna be okay is Austria Esports now, as they have AI Esports just across them, still with the circle. Urban warfare between two teams inside of Milta. It will be interesting if the next stage, the circle moves away up all the way to the uh, high grounds of Milta. Hiking up will be a big problem and they might need to fight to go up. So Isaac, Milta seems a bit occupied right now with too many teams surrounding every single compound that is. Not much room for another team. Now around the wood shop area or the uh, wood factory, we do have a couple of teams. Enigma and 214 clearly run. Happen to spread out in a line for both teams. 2-2 two, two formation, 2-1-1 one, one for Sado Enigma. But on the side of uh, 214 Kira, they split it, still not too far, clustered as a fall. Enigma, they still want to fight and determined to commit to this fight, but they do have another visitor coming up soon. Harami Brew might actually be butting the business of between those two teams, but there are some teams that are playing very late here. Smile! It's gonna be tough for him to save Manet since he got himself knocked down in the open. So I think GE are trying to hold on as long as they can. Yeah, he made it across, but unfortunately not his teammate. And like what you say, it's pretty much impossible for Smile to go in for the save. He has to focus on the circle that move up onto the high ground of Milta. Still some part of the Milta city in the circle, but AI Esports has made their move to exit the city first. So that might leave Austria Esports behind and they could be also locked out by AI Esports. Austria, Red Bull and Sky, they're gonna make a bit of a push against Isaac and Bunny. A bit of trading and greetings of Angry Nate between these two teams right now, but not Nobody willing to leave their home just yet. Nobody willing to leave their apartments there. While well, AI Esports trying to take advantage from the flank side at the blind spot of all the other players. But they're having a hard time to spot the ones that actually indoor. Now that's going to be tough unless you got yourself quite a number of mollies and hand grenade to flush all the players out. It's going to be a no way entry at all for these guys. There's no way they can actually shoot from the windows if the players inside just decide to hug the corners. Well, I'm looking at the Eliminator B. Looks like the Dread Esports Moy is in trouble. Eliminated by Coca-Cola from Enigma. So that's five points now for the number 16 team. Uh, coming back on screen, where AI Esports is at, nobody actually went all the way up to the high ground yet. And I guess, even though AI Esports made some moves, but they're also aware that they don't want to be shot at from behind by Austria Esports. So they are playing this still safe and they have the circle so they can still buy them time buy their own time out might actually get into that uaz and just flee here because there's too many teams will have to pass through him myth clan if they want to survive they need to leave here asap with fucking but the nade flying right on top shout taking 40 percent of hp away now you realize, oh man, I don't want to sit here. The moment I sit, stand still, something gonna happen to me and it's gonna be awful. Holy Langeo will try to hike up, might actually bump into Miff Clan, while well, Miff Clan happens to be bumping into T14 Akira as well. And Miss Clan, how do they respond to this? They want to push forward, which is gonna be towards the center of the circle. It's gonna be another team gatekeeping. They have to force the fight now. Oh, here we go, forcing fight, T14 Akira, but. Opti tries to gather information, not able to see exactly where the members of Myth Clan are at. They managed to shoot him away, so now he's back with his team, a resetting at this moment. Wow, Myth Clan sends a main across, and Opti, wait a second, it came from Koopa! Enigma buttoned in from the other angle! Now changing over to his DP28. That pizza gun where we're having some problems to aim with those really hard to control recoils and barrels. A Koopa just gonna keep the pressure on those nades and keep it going. Here comes a couple of taps and sprays. 
Benigma is so hard to visualize on this particular angle. But two on four, Akira just keep taking the players down. One by one, their body's been flown out of the compound behind him for one. Make Lan also take a bit of a greeting and warming up towards those hand grenades as well. Caps Lock taking a bit of a pressure to a set of Mick Lan and keep the pressure on, but Dread is on the other side. They need to leave. They barely got covers. Enigma, this might actually dig in their own the hole of graveyard. Oh, here we go with Enigma coming in, but also new splash. Playbook Esports eliminated fairly early in this time. No points in this round. This is news for Harami Bros, who still has a full squad to try to catch up onto them. But we'll focus on Enigma now with this high ground against Murph Clan. Coca Cola blinded by the smoke, but he's waiting for them to show themselves. While Caps will take care of 2 1 4 Akira on the other side. Unknown, take it on Kaya. See you soon. And MFG happen to be just fighting against each other as well. But Coca Cola, here comes Enigma. Spot out our Myth Clan players to fight the war. Maybe another team coming up. It's written under the Holy Lanju. Trying to take down the players of Exquisite. Quite fine, quite ambitious down there. YTZ ends that. Rest of YG, here comes AIE spot. This is going to be tough for the last player stands. Naughty boy, he tried to clutch this by himself, but can he actually fight against three of YG? Oh man, with that amount of health left, he managed to reset himself. That is going to be pretty tough still for Naughty Boy to put this fight against Yaku Galacticos. And Seikon landed it in on Naughty Boy. That is the end of AIE Sports. Cloud, say Cloud. Trying to find the players that are coming across those high grounds, going into the center. They got themselves quite an elevations up there, but the problem is, if you're not in the safe zone, that's worthless with those uh, 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 elevations. But the problem is, to get away from that, the moment you step down, it's coming in open space. Threat taking on Nathan, that's Quizzit in trouble. 2 on 4 Akira, 2 on Enigma. And it's going to be 2-1 for Akira to be eliminated first, but at least they score themselves one elimination for now. Another team back to back. They've got finish off, taking out of the equation. YG now finally spotted out Ozja East, but happened to be late all the time. But this time they're late in fashion because they still have a full squad. Oh, 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 started to collect two elimination points but they will start to collect placement points as well so this is the time for them to show what they are truly made of unknown barely have enough now and a couple of first eights remaining but he got more than enough actually not really bad that one and Nick Mom there then taking a fight against a very close quarter combat between them and TTQ and TTQ got 11 eliminations despite the start they can wipe out the entirety of TQ before and lost at work quite early on this is going to be an incredible run this secures even the chicken TTQ taking out Enigma players from afar while the side of PP being eliminated, there's going to be shut down on the hat trick. But while TTQ takes this one away, they might go for more as Coca Cola being punished. No more his stands, another one in the hands of TTQ. And that is the end for Enigma. Nader down by Liquid from TTQ. And TTQ, they won this fight, but they're not out of it just yet. Look at the circle, it moved away from them. And Harami Bros, one top contenders currently at the circle. Yangu Gadigos, they have new cute Loki in the middle. Trying to stop MFG from coming in. On the south side, Austria Esports still struggling to get in the circle. Speaking of struggles, there's going to be quite a struggling circle. They even barely got any compounds in between. Small shocks definitely are being offered here, but it's not really quite in the center as well. Jib. Got himself the shack. Don't take the shack. Nobody wants to be in the shack. Nobody wants to be in the shack. That's not even the circle right now. But the problem is how to get into the center without the circle. Well, there's only a couple of vegetations. And Q Loki got himself the only compound that actually will work inside of this circle. But there's a lot of visitors. But the moment it's awesome, there's nobody there anymore. As YG exposed himself, Loki, for nothing just now. But at least they've managed to eliminate the threat. They just opened the door in that very center. MFG oh. spot out the entire Osha! Oh my god, what a swift response from unknown. And only one more left from Osha, that Sky is his super duper low right now for the Bison. Spraying on the Sky, they're putting pressure onto him and Sky Eliminated 
but at least this time Austria Esports did last a little longer at number six with two eliminations. MFG have a bit of a pickup for all the members here. Lucky that one known was so good at that counter attack. If you didn't defend it for the rest, the MFG is done for. It was an insane clutch by Unknown, carrying so much for the team. But I don't think he will need this days yeah? I think he should just leave it for now. Just open up the space for the rest of the team vehicles to pass through. That was a quite a smart move. But TTQ, despite it got himself quite a huge volume amount of eliminations, leaving only one player left. But the elimination is more than enough to cover the chicken dinner. So it's a bonus if they even score themselves those chicken dinners. Yeah, it's the highest so far in the Grand Finals. So TTQ looking pretty nice. If they can add a little bit more, of course, can't complain about that. But chances are quite slim right now. But among our four teams here, we have one of the top contenders, Harame Bros. Full squad, one eliminations. And uh, so far, they were pretty on the clear. Like, not many teams actually passed by them. So that answers why they only got one elimination, but they still made it into the top four. This is gonna be fun. We still have full squats going on. YG. Harami Bros. Now, despite they didn't actually score any chicken in today, but they're quite consistent here. Yeah. Three games in a row, they got themselves in the top five every single round and every single map. While the rest of them, like MFG and TTQ here, even including YG. They weren't actually in the top five that consistent compared to the side of our own bro. So I'm not surprised even how Rami bro can start to chase up the points against PBE. But the circle was shrinked. Who will be favored by the gods of circle? Yeah, that will be the one that the point of factor. That will get the chicken away. YG, a huge chance of that. But Harami bro still having a bit of a, just a tiny edge of it. My gust still not being spotted out. Feels like a minor deja vu, just like what we saw before. Yeah, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to pull off something interesting uh, towards the end. Maybe surprising the teams like what Miner potentially could have did earlier. And uh, so far, for, uh, based on his position, he can still move forward. He can navigate through the threes and he should be fine. He should be able to at least last this stage and wait for other teams to cancel out each other before pulling off a surprise to any team that is closest to him by that time. Deal. I'm a playing a very dangerous game, taking a bit longer time for the for the rally spot to out here. MFG from afar, they took a bit of a risk to put themselves right on top of this rooftop. It's so you can CMFG as well the other side of the hill. But if they're not being careful, it took too long, they realize the time's ticking here. Yeah, less than one minute to the seconds away. The circle start to shrink. That's a bit too late for them to stop. The but they're shot! But the barrel of Scar L is just so difficult for the Rallys to control on. They realize it's not worth taking those shots too long and wasting so much ammunition. But TTQ, I mean, the Blizzard finally shuts him down. Oh, Vico blown up as a barricade. Yangu Gatico is trying to secure their spot. And uh, now Harame Bros know where Yangu Gatico is at. But they cannot go in because MFG is there. MFG also has interest on the Yangu Gatico, but they don't have the elevation. Yangu Gatico that has it. Loki would take down Yaka. That's going to be MFG with three players left. Kit Loki. Ramen bro for Duralis. Here comes the Nate. He wants to flush out the one that in the mushroom tower hits a Kobe. A perfect execution by Federalis. Ramen bro. He still couldn't flush in there because it's gonna be multiple levels here. Two levels on top. But at least they'll finish off and burn off Loki from that point of view. But Ramen bro, they want to flush the entire of YG and they will keep raining down the Nate. And they have nothing to stop them either. They got so much utilities. They can keep it doing this all day. Here comes the Lost Molly, and here comes a cleanup. But MFG is there to steal it away. Mm, oh, but Dale, just as when he arrived, he immediately got knocked out. Federalis knocks out Romeo Boy with the Molly. And like what you said, now MFG is going to come in a little bit later as the third party, try to find their advantage. Brain knocks down unknown to stop their other tracks. Federalis is still alive. The top eliminator for the PMNC for the Southampton with the spike away, but losers because of exit. Mono to mono here. 
Axet trying to finish off the last play of YG with two more players against MFG. MFG have the highest chance here. Will they botch this one? No, will they let it slip by? Or they will actually finally execute this? Rami Bro is quite consistent. But MM being spot of MFG. Here comes MFG as a trio. MM might be finished off. Rage takes his back out. Yo. And MFG. My god, mother father, the god of chicken dinner. And they got themselves winning with a chicken dinner as well. A great run by MFG. MFG, a team that has also shown a lot of promise during the league stage. And now they will take that chicken dinner away from a PvE. At least the streak that is. So great work here by MFG. Waiting for the fight to happen and waiting for the fight to end before they come in to wrap things up. And they also scored a couple of extra points from that fight. Now, also, I do, I do want to see how many eliminations by the teams out there, especially TTQ. Since they didn't score those chickens, but they still lasted long enough to obliterate all the other teams. And last time we kicked count, it was around 11 eliminations. I think they had more in the very last minute. And there's a lot of teams that got themselves a high kick volume till the very end here, which is going to cost quite a bit for the teams at the very bottom. Because we do know you might actually end up with a lot of zeros of teams out there because of how they barely got themselves any elimination points. And then the side of Austria Esports is not so great, including GE. Now, funny enough, the teams are actually rank quite top when it comes to their league uh, stage here. Do you struggle quite a bit when it comes to the Grand Finals? Yeah, and the team that did not struggle is MFG Esports. As we check out the best moments from this round, 12 eliminations for MFG. But I really like want to see the, the 17 eliminations. Like, how far would they push them? Like what you said earlier on. Let's see as we check out these highlights. We'll tabulate the scores later on. But some of the best moments, I must say, is for MFG to stop Austria Esports from coming in. The moment they arrived, three of them got knocked. Skyning was super duper low. And Unknown just need to come in with the Bison to finish Skyning off. True. And also speaking of Arame, bro, I mean, like, I'm not surprised if they finally spot themselves a chicken after this. Because just how consistent they were at being top 5. So they sort of formulated this final recipe of we kind of trying to get our strategy done by surviving till the very end and getting ourselves these eliminations but down to only one last equation they need to solve to get those formula to finally work as perfect as it can be. That's going to be executing those chicken dinners. But when it comes to MFG, Exit, this is a high potential player that I feel like he can go so far that I'm not surprised one day he will be in the uh, global scene one day. Oh yeah, looking forward to see more of these players going up as MFG have exit here as their MVP. Six eliminations, 1007 damage, two knockouts and two assists. And this is not his first time getting the MVP for himself. So great work here by exit and also MFG. G with of course maximum survival time 26 minutes and 10 seconds in this round so mfg could it be the dark horse team that might surprise all the other teams here in the pmcl that's kind of true i mean like mfg it feels like they are they are the teams that they have a bit of a feel of ge teams like once upon a time when ge starts to change into a different team entirely have to be this monstrous team that quite consists and F MFG do have those spots in them so it's just a matter of time how long they, they actually do need to be on the par as maybe Haram and Bro or they are on top of par of right now I mean like how much consistent they can offer to us in every single season with double digit eliminations six knockouts six assists that pretty much tally up the numbers damage wise a bit okay I think this is pretty much average but heals I mean like these guys really being targeted by a lot of teams out there oh yeah but uh, they are the living undead with those amount of heals there dished out by them so great work there by MFG to score this ticket there the first one for them in this grand finals and also the first one coming in from a non-filipino team mfg representing Myanmar to take it back home and now look at the overall stats here uh total headshots not as many as before so we went down a little bit to 10 and we still have the uh, two airdrops looted so teams still have the time and also this is going to be a keep on improving for the team's performance because nobody being eliminated by the play zone just now we had it the numbers decreasing 
over time in every single map. This time we had none. So four players actually alive for the chicken dinner here. And that was the side of none other than MFG. But when it comes to the numbers, I think it's very very much a very standard numbers that we've seen before. The Pro Bowls around 350 to 250. That's going to be the average um, mean of the numbers when it comes to the trovers utilized in every single map here so all the numbers are pretty great and pretty standard but i want to see when it comes to those eliminations because if tt uh, sorry if mfg if it's a kill on some six or seven eliminations here ttq definitely more who else scored more look at this elimination my god tt gets 17 mfg 12 and there's a lot of ones but two, only two teams have scored any, so that's actually very good news. Yeah, but the not so good news for Playbook Esports, the only team to not get a single point this time uh, after coming out for double chicken dinner. So no back-to-back, -back, triple, but maybe they can continue on later. But for now, some of the other big teams here, Harame Bros is the uh, top, uh, one of the top uh, performing team out of top three teams in the overall with 10 points. And the rest of them, Dread Esports, doing pretty well this time with 8 points. Lots of force as well. Austria Esports, Enigma, GE, all having 4 points. STE with 2 points. And like what you said, lots of ones. Myth Clan, Exquisite, 2 1 for Akira, AI Esports, and CUSU X Tiger KE at the corner as well. All of them coming up with ones. So a lot of the points distributed at the top this time. Now, we do know for a fact MFG with this explosive, bombastic performance, same goes for the side of TTQ, will push themselves so much higher up there. Because both teams, if I'm not mistaken, MFG especially, they were, uh, they they are, and they were starting off at the first page, by the way. So this definitely pushed themselves to the top five, possibly. And not really did, and not exactly it is. MFG are literally at number five. And you guys, this is going to be a bit of an update. If you see a bit of a bracket in there, that means that was their head start bonus point. So GE, when it comes to the league stage, they were number one. So they're being actually rewarded with 30 points as a head start point. So the ones in the bracket is a head start point of each of the team before we're starting off the day. So PBE, despite they were half of the start head start points against GE, look where they're at right now. Oh yeah, it's still on top, still doing pretty well with a gap of uh, 13 points against Justice Esports. Harami Bros and TTQ sharing the same amount of points that is 42. So not too far away from Justice Esports as well, only 7 points difference. MFG with a ticket dinner. Welcome to number 5 like what you said, so that's 41 points, only 1 point behind the uh, two contenders that we last, that we mentioned about. And uh, the rest of them, 30 points and below. But uh, because we are only into game number three out of 18 games to be played in the grand finals, still tons of games for surprises from page two teams. I mean, there's still some time. I won't say a lot because we do know there's going to be only like, what? Well, since we're done with three maps, that's remaining with only 15 more maps to go. Maybe less, yeah. If we get into our fourth map later on, which means they cannot afford to make any mistake at all. If the team's special on the second page, if they want to play the catch up game, this is the time for them to actually start to wake up because if they're still in their slumber and they, they're like, this is the first day, we need extra time to just warm up. Two days is not going to be enough because the gap is going to be tremendous between the first place and also the second page. Yeah, I know, right? I know, right? Especially with uh, some teams doing really well and some teams not so well, that would naturally like open up that gap. So looking at some of these teams though, Austria Esports had a lot of promise. Yes, this is the start of their points collected in the Grand Finals, but they need a lot more because it's all about the championship, especially if you're a team that has uh, a huge fan base in uh, your country and also with a status like that I mean there will be a lot more expectation for Austria Esports to climb up but maybe that might change after our longer break because this will be a extended break ladies and gentlemen so we'll see you guys after this one do not go anywhere birthday is just around the corner a merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new in version 3.1 we have lots of new content and updates for players may you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration
In the sky-high spectacle-themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates, or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use frying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main 6th anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island. Harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect down players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text, and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated, and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island. Harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. 
On this sixth anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use frying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect down players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main 6th anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner winner, chicken dinner. See you next time.
PUBG Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates, or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90. Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use frying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has And we are back after the break, ladies and gentlemen. You are still watching the PUBG Mobile Challenges League Southeast Asia Spring 2024. This came out of MFG, netting the chicken dinner, breaking the streak of PE. Now, also, will they score a back to back chicken just like how PBE did? Because we do have one more wrangle map going to be dropped later on before we're heading into a double, into the double Mirama next to wrap up the entire day and speaking of the points just now now despite you got yourself quite a number of uh, of the head start point doesn't really matter when it comes to the performance of the grand finals here but just to recap what really happened the entire day halfway through we're on almost halfway done here when it comes to the first day of the grand finals the one in the bracket is actually the head start points despite ge had the most head start points but still pbe they're actually way more lower half of what GE has as a well, head start point still lead the ranking so far. Yes, and uh, that is th thanks to their double chicken dinner today. So they are 62 points, 13 points away from Genesis Esports, followed by Harame Bros with 42 points, 7 points difference. 
and TTQ has the same amount of points as well. MFG after the dinner now scoring this as 41 points, one point behind Harami and TTQ. Followed by Young Guga, it goes 36 points. And we have some other team on page number two with now only Enigma, the only team with a single dip point. Now, the second up to the fifth place when it comes to the gap is very tight between the scores down there. Everyone in their 40s with less than five points in the gap in a total of second to fifth place. And what when compared to the first to the second place, it's still quite a stretch here. Last we've seen them. But next, Irango will change everything. We know that for sure. And it's going to be certain because we saw how much of a difference when it comes to the first Sunhawk, the first Irango, and the second uh, Irango of the Delta map of the day just now. But when it comes to getting a back to back, can MFG secure another? Because we saw how PBE, despite it got very sim similar circle as the first Irango map just now, they're still, having, they're still having some sort of difficulties to secure those chickens due to how the rotation slightly just changed. And it just changed so dramatically for the dynamic despite its very sim similar circle which was milta yeah i guess that's the uh, adaptation of the other teams right so um adaptation is going to be really important just like how you guys should adapt with the new things happening inside of PUBG mobile including the uh operation with bentley that features a nine amazing bentley vehicles here that be applicable to either the UAC, the Dacia, the Coop RB, the Mirado. So you have nine to choose from, nine to collect, and you can pretty much only choose them if you collect. So collect them all so they can choose which one to outpace your opponents in style during the game, or maybe even on the outside, you flex it to your friends to say that, hey, you know what? You only got one, you got two, I got all nine of them. That is a big flex. Now also, uh, with this side of uh, cosmetic skins, where you can interchangeable be just because of how you feel the mood for the day for that skins that applicable for all the vehicles there is. It remind me of one time that I tried to look up onto search to find if there's any sort of paintings or including like paintings or wall or like um, paint over for a vehicle that do have sort of a nano technology that can switch colors like how you control RGB I feel like there's already one vehicle that actually executed it I'm not sure where was the country origin just now I think it's around Dubai or Bahrain because they're usually pretty advanced but speaking of advanced don't forget about your RP the six years of anniversary and PUBG Mobile available just shows that how much PUBG Mobile appreciate you to be one of the community and this is something that you guys should grab on because to have this triple set in one RP it's gonna be a lot not just that there's also add-ons towards the other arsenals or the weapon skins out there for you guys to have a commemoration of the sixth year of PUBG Mobile anniversary now speaking of the next wrangle map right I have a feeling it's really been a good run for a lot of uh, the Philippine team so far. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, Playbook Esports was in charge with the two chicken dinners and the fact that they got all seven teams from the Philippines qualified into the Grand Finals, that puts them in a, a good percentage of, uh, of doing well. Now, other than Playbook Esports, Harami Bro up there, they're top three. They have they dropped one round, but it's still with at least point. But on the other two rounds, they got a third place in Sanhok with four elimination points. They got a second place and with four elimination points as well in Irango. So is that too bad? Not really. They're still keeping up with the pace. Now, speaking of uh, keeping up the pace, can actually scores another one because now might be the best time for the rise of the Cambodia team because we're heading over to the last Irangle of the day. Final Irangle for day number one it is, ladies and gentlemen. So let's hook it up with a fly path that is almost similar to the previous Irangle. Starts from into the base, up onto Starboard. But this time with Severny beside of it. So probably gonna see similar tactics here. Genesis Esports might drop back into it because Novo is quite far away and they didn't really have a good time in Novo. So it's probably back to home ground for them. I love the flight path, it's just evenly distributing to its two sides of the maps here between left and right, east and west of the fight. But when it comes to the circle, we'll be as generous <clears throat> as the flight path here. 
because we have to wait for the circle to pass. But coming up <clears throat> with this sort of flight path, we do have the sort of distribution for teams to drop themselves in the initial drop spot within their reach. They can drop wherever they fancy because it's how easy to access all the compounds and all the towns due to this sort of flight path as a start. It's always the usual question mark as every single map appears to be. Where would the circle pop itself? Because regardless of how you got yourself quite easy to drop, it's quite difficult to get yourself into the circle, especially today's has been favouring towards Milta and it has been favouring a lot of sea water ratio in it as well because this time we do have it more towards the left side. Got car region, it's not even a space or place to call it on the left side. We might as well call it counter Milta sort of circles. This means what we do have on the right side. This is going to be counter Milta or just south of hospital to be more exact here. But when it comes to the drop, I think it's pretty straightforward as the start of a game here since all the teams can drop wherever they fancy. It means their drop should be quick. They will swiftly try to equip everything, get their gears and loot up as fast as they can without wasting any more time. So we can expect when it comes to stage number two, or even in stage one, some teams will start to find their victims and their preys down there. They'll be predators trying to shut them people down. But with this sort of circle, especially with the players and teams that are more towards on the right side, there are chances the teams that have been contradicted by the circle itself will be more aggressive than the team that actually already got himself the circle. The teams that got themselves nearby or already on top of the circle don't really have to move as they will try to gatekeep as much as they want and they're trying to play with the comfort zone. They will try to play with all the compounds and apartments and buildings that they've known for ages where they used to loot from, they're going to stay there for a bit. But the teams on the right side on the other hand, that's including PBE here who actually scored himself a double chicken back to back here today there's a high chance they will try to bulldoze all the teams at the current moment the moment they're done with their looting they're done with the gears and equipment and even their utilities is already up they will try to rotate and migrate themselves transitioning into the circle and since they are the furthest one away they will try to run over towards all the teams that might actually cross their path with them so no, when it comes to this sort of circle it's really crucial for the team on the right side to make the perfect. I mean, you're back, Cloud. Uh, I've always been here, but anyway. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, okay. Uh, um, not too sure. But anyway, um, I didn't do anything, though. Got a message a little bit late ex to now to be exact. But anyway, uh, um, yeah, I guess... Um, that was uh, the, that's definitely that they need to do because they need to keep up with the pace. So for now, uh, what happens as uh, the game goes by? But I guess I'll need to do what I need to do first. So yeah, that was a short one. Uh, speaking of an early start. Well, we don't have any much due to how easy accessible it is. Um, everything can be at ease for the teams that try to get themselves a loot. So it's not much fight except for SQS definitely. We finish off by TTQ. For the side of Exquisite, it feels like the momentum is not working out for this season. Exquisite, yes, they do have a PMGC play in the lineup, which can be loot for. But I personally feel like the chemistry is still being off. It doesn't feel right yet. So I'm looking forward that they don't actually swap roles or players. Because they do have potential, it's just they need a matter of time. Well, I guess I'm talking by myself here for now. Cloud went missing, but you know, he will be back, don't worry. But <clears throat> back to as a game we go, I do notice that some of you guys are being split. It. Some of you guys want to go for GE, some of them saying GGTTQ. But I have to say, every single team, I personally feel like a team, especially when it comes to the top. Uh, especially top 8, I guess, when in this case. But I personally have um, favourites of myself. Do tell me about your favourites in the comment section as well, because I I feel like the one that can actually go pretty far, if the condition or it's going to be, they don't change their lineup for next season. Since we do know next season, there will be going to be uh, PM World Championship, if I'm not mistaken, PMWC, if I'm not mistaken, or is it something, uh, different acronyms entirely. But... The, the World Cup region will have a shot at that. This season, the World Cup region don't really 
get engaged too much with the other tournaments out there. So, but it will be for the next season. It's actually a good prepping time for the teams in the World Cup region this season to know how the format will be. <coughs> Despite they don't have a seeding towards a different tournament entirely after this. So, so far, things are doing great for TTQ. They do have a bit of injury by Edward again, but Edward always the first one to pick out to find those eliminations. So I'm not surprised the scouts are the one that actually been anti fragger always been taking a bit of damage compared to those who wait and just hold the angles for support. But back to Harami Bro. Now I have a feeling Harami Bro might actually have a shot at getting this trophy this year, just because how consistent they are so far. Harami Bro and PBE <coughs> might actually be good rivals when it comes to their performance well coming up from the side of our pbe and also the philippine national championship i'm not surprised of how the performance here for both teams since they're fighting the same regional of a national championship before hence it's actually good to have a very good player to engage with the rest of the community of certain region to bring up the standard of PUBG Mobile scene and gameplay of that certain organization or team before a competition hit. So in this case, Filipino teams, I have to say, it's been huge growth since the last time we saw them. Hmm, yeah. I had to keep it short. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, for reasons only known to us. But anyway, what's important is that these teams are not keeping it short. For sure, well, there's a time limit to every round, that is. But interesting enough that uh, Exquisite unfortunately lost one play early. So that's the only casualty as of now. Um, I guess uh, that happened off screen when they were trying to grab vehicles and yeah, that one player just fell. But we'll get a good information or a good view of who exactly went out early. But for now, uh, I guess the focus is now on to STE. We got Skadi showing away AIE spots, and they seem to be still on the outside of the circle. They were not engaged on the side of AIE spots. They're not one of the big fans who love early fights. AIE spots will start being a bit aggressive when it comes to their fourth stage or mid game, usually. But on the side of STE, they are no stranger to as aggressive at all. We're talking about since the start of any stage, regardless of if they got any, any weapons or did loot up or not, they're still going to go for a fight, including YG and TQ and Chris. Having some trouble, but easily finish off by Cute Loki, who will deliver and translate into one point. But YG, I'm not sure where are the rest of them, but they might actually follow up and try to cover Loki. But so far, nobody interested to be his wingman so far. Hmm, so, so far, he's still A-OK -okay on his own. Perhaps, uh... Trying to, I don't know, maybe just waiting for the one to lead him. And I guess that's okay for now. He got a vehicle in between as well. But uh, what's okay as well is going to be the circle. So no side, side, side circle like what we have seen before. It went on to Gaka. So a lot more space for the teams to play this time. And that means that a lot more teams in the circle now. We only have two teams on the outside. But that means that we will see the elimination beat roll with Harame Bros. Range knocked from afar, but Enigma is going to come in. Too far. I don't think DBS worked that way, but whatever works for him, it actually might work in the game as well. Cuba swapped over to Rifles. Trying to spot down the rest of the team. It's going to be two teams, so eyeing them out. More than that, possibly. At a long range at that. QB will try to reposition himself. They find it difficult to spot the players. They've been shooting and bombarded them from quite a far. GE lost one man knocked down. Same goes for the side of YG. Harami Bro also starting off as a duo now since they had at a tree before. But due to uh, their circumstances, out of nowhere, the all fangled shots been taking them down one by one. Here comes he using the John and the rest of the cavalry was shot down on Imam. Oh, Imam, that's the worst hike with that vehicle. Mm, okay, I mean, uh, no points for Harami Bro this time, and MFG is just behind them with one point, so they could be pushed down further. But look at the elimination feed. Uh, West from Jesus Esports eliminated, Yanku Gatikos loses WTZ, and we have uh, GE now against Yanku Gatikos with uh, Romeo Boy on the other building. And with that one nade from afar, from the inside of this compound, Yanku Gatikos takes out Genesis Esports. Uh, I'm worried about the fans. It might be infuriated by the fact that GE has been losing a lot of... They're dropping a lot of balls here. 
when it comes to the first day of the grand finals. Just hopefully tomorrow they make a comeback. I don't know about them in Roma later, but they haven't scored too much when it comes to the Wrangel map. Plus the Sonhawk so far. So this is going to be detrimental. It's going to be tough for them to defend their title of the championship this season. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, it is still day one, but because of it's day one out of three days, then it's a, it's a big worry for Genesis Esports. And plus, DTQ is behind them, so they could be pushed down as well. They still have a full squad with two elimination points now. And PBE, the top contenders now, still alive, well and healthy, so they could still gain more points. Well, they can and they will. And so far, they haven't engaged in too much sort of conflicts just yet. They're just trying to stay at bay and try to calculate, possibly just um, observe about the navigation of the other teams or if there's any attempt for them to actually go for any free eliminations from afar. Why not? Because PBE is the one that's a very strategic. Sometimes they do be a bit of reckless move some, uh, here and there, but at times they're being strategic, especially when it comes to the last um, wrangle of the day here, because they do know for a fact, and we've seen it before, PBE... If you compare Murama and Rango play, it's just so different. They have more confidence in this map compared to Murama. Hence, they want to score as much as they can when it comes to the last Rango map here. Being a bit more calculative compared to Murama later. Yeah, hopefully they'll be able to at least have the gap. So if Murama is not really that thing, then they could still be like, okay, we can still kind of chill with a decent amount of points and that's going to be okay. But uh, yeah, not so okay for Harami Bros and GE as they were put out to be uh, one of the top contenders for the number one spot. Now we have MFG, one of the teams that is rising and uh, with their survival ability so far so good. Yes, they've been sprayed out by Coca-Cola but navigated through the terrain smartly and they will survive. Back to MFG. Well, Mute always the first one to be finished off quite early. This time they do have a bit of time of survivability trying to sustain themselves as long as they can exit try to scout everybody who quite not that far from him and they're quite alarming with his mini 14 it's not the best case scenario to use this well this mini 14 at this sort of range but koopa we're on 416 just try to spray down wherever they can hear the audio cues on by exchange of nade but it will expert on him first maybe take covers it will be okay for now avoiding those explosion he managed to negate those damage out, but 2-1 for Akira taking on STE. Seems like another fight just bursting out across the other side of the map. Oh, and Miner from STE is the one that got knocked down. Newbie knocked down by Ranked. Okay, STE only has two players left now. And MFG looks like they're not interested with Enigma. Probably knows that it's still pretty early and there's still a lot of teams. So they might as well take the best position possible than uh, try to overtake the members of Enigma. It's time we move on to see you soon. Looks like they have teams to see them. John trying to open one door to the other, but naughty boy. Where did those shots came from? PBE out of nowhere. Just taking advantage of the third party every single time. Didn't know where to pick. They ninja themselves in here without... feeling the presence of PBE for see you soon and AIE spot. They are both will be finished off. This is going to be a loose, loose situation between these two teams because PBE, they are the cleaning up crew for these two teams. Oh, one of the knockers. See you soon. Let's see if they can clean this up quickly because they don't have to circle now. They shifted away. The John blinded by the smoke now comes in. Sprays and he will immediately get that one. So now, Kaya knocked down. Master Vape needs to defend his ground. Can he secure that one elimination point at least? And he will. Master Vape now pinned down to the corner as the other members of CU soon is coming towards him. A PBE, gladly, they're not taking this fight, they're not interested in here. They just wait and gatekeep into the inside of a circle. But AIE Sports, unfortunately, they did not secure those eliminations, then did not clutch that one. Now, the John and the rest of CU soon will try it for now, but for how much longer? We saw how they repositioned themselves for PBE, waiting inside, just waiting for gatekeepers. So, speaking of gatekeeping, He's going to try to defend this Shaq by himself. Scotty of STE. Can he clutch this? He got himself one, and the small hut plays were actually put in game. And can he score another as they toss the name? Mm. Oh, may have Shroud from afar. Wow, Shroud had to butt in to 
Whether you want to look at it as saving or whether you're looking at spotting it, well, both of them are pretty much correct. And But what's correct is that he gets the point, but PBE not correct for them. As one of the members now, QB comes in spraying with the FBP. And UMP is head, but he turned around and Jarrow took advantage of it. Now the fight's not over yet, that's Jarrow! Make that over now, Jarrow single-handedly eliminated the final few members of Enigma. Definitely well deserving MVP previous one in the previous map as well earlier today. I said if PBE doesn't have enough time to just gloat just yet because he needs to revive his teammate who just happened to be one more knocked down. And on the side of MFG, they were holding these high heels of nearby the Gutka field quite some time for now. But they have to defend it over 360 degree against all two teams. A lot of teams coming out around the corner. They're running up their supplies and resources. It's running dry. They have to figure out how to wrap things up as fast as they can because the circle will shift away from them. Oh yeah, very, very likely because they're by the edge. So they have to clean up each other. That will not be an option for them to disengage now. I'll see you soon, still navigating around. Jaro just in front of him, but he doesn't know that Jaro is there. He thinks that Jaro is in the house, perhaps. But I guess now they, they have an idea. They're waiting for that moment, resetting. While the John looks for an exit plan. Jaro cooking up the nail. Oh, not really, just using a bandit. He got five hand grenades, by the way. If he actually toss it at that perfect angle, he can have just wiped out the entirety of... See you soon, but Jarrell, can he push the pull off a clutch and be the MVP again? They are at number one, but he needs to last long enough. To be in the top five, it's not going to be an easy fit with so many teams having a full squad and a trio down there. And speaking of MFG, I'm not sure how, they, how do they resupply themselves since they are in the center of everybody else here with tossing nates non-stop for such a long time now against Red. Yeah, they have been using all their utilities for them to resupply. It's probably to eliminate Dread Esports, but they're not in a good position and they realize that. So they focus on to get into the circle and look at this. The moment they move, they still have that edge of the circle. So now they can play the gatekeeping role against Dread. So it away. Ostra. Will this be it? We, they got themselves the biggest compound. There. The circle just favor them since since uh, this stage started all they need to do is just defend and can they finally bring back the a game they have been showcased to us since the third week but on the side of general this one man show this the course one there's one more to go he needs to score another he secures another point for the team here they will not go down easily for the side of pb they will not give an entry at all for the team to take away the number one spot yeah, jaro has been doing very, very well now. The MVP himself. Name from the John to try to take him out. But Jaro is still holding it. But now he does have the circle. The John, he does have his buggy. So he can still find ways to rotate. But for Jaro, he's on his foot. The moment he shows himself out on the other side, then that's pretty much it. I mean, there's like three other teams there. Jaro. Back going solo and just hiding for the longest time. And the John happened to be sharing the same boat as Jarrell since Jarrell actually hurt, hit him with the karma. Uh, getting himself into one solo play for the rest of the squad. Myth Clan, 5214 Akira with h 2 still got himself the shot quite far apart from the rest of the team. Jeps on there then from Drat. Spotted out the last player of CU soon. And he got finished off by another team apparently on the other side. I think it's either 214 Akira or Ultra Esports. Ooh, trying to rotate away, but Dread Esports is trying to get in as well. And it's going to be difficult because Enigma is there. And now Dread Esports, only Moy and Holy Landru leading the charge to come in. And they should be fine, okay? Trying to evade. Oh, two knockdowns back to back. Oh no, Exquisite Super Pickles was the one that did it. And went back on self TTQ. As per usual, I always initiate a good fight for the team, but the problem is he might actually just overexpose himself towards the rest of the team. They're having their eyes watch out towards this angle right now. Edward, he got, got himself and Zuki. The deadly deal for the side of TTQ happen to be having a good run with four eliminations in the back. But instead of Dread, down to only one play, MFG and 2 for Akira as well. A lot of teams are dropping out like flies at stage number five. Less than a minute when we actually head into stage number six, but Guffs at worst timing possible. Lucky he still got a full squad down there. He just fall himself on the ground. Maybe his vehicle's been shot down. Oh, 
Sea Cloud are knocked from afar by Davan from Myth Clan. And now Loki will need to come in. But he has TTQ to do with on the higher ground. Edward, someone has an idea that he's down there. Davan from the far. He's Romeo Boy. Sprays away. 50% of health shredder. Now Edward will continue on to get away his teammate to try to get a knock. Edward. Trying to scout and just gatekeep the Romeo Boy. They're just making sure he denied the entrance. So what's his end? But Liquid out of nowhere. Loki managed to pause on one big nade to open up the green passage they've been waiting for. This is going to be the opportunity that YG! Oh, Romeo, he needs to leave! The blues have started to close in. He barely got enough first. He got last one instead. But there was a close one for TTQ, but still a splendid run regardless of that. And they scored themselves five eliminations. Oh, five eliminations. Not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see if they can get more... Uh, for especially for the other teams can get more out of this. Look at this, right? I'm looking at Osa Esports now in the circle by the edge, and that's fine. But they survive up to this long, so somehow the break did them a favor. Speaking of favors, who will be favored by the zone and also the circle later on? One that being favored by the blues is not really being blasted, it's being cursed at that point. MFG, Red Bull. From Oz Jay Spot next, Oz just still having a four. Now this is gonna be their rise up for Oz Jay Spot slow and steady. And Gooey just gonna spray. This is where Ozja always go for their best aggressive plays. Yeah, stage six is gonna be the time to open fire by MFG. The last chicken in the place, leaving only exit left with that one Kobe hitting unknown from unknown angles, bleeding out exit. Spotted out wide, you be sneaky behind. Now have troubles to clutch this by himself. Yeah, it's going to be quite hard for Exit now. Mr. MVP from the previous round, and now they know he's there. Exit slight elevation, but that's not going to help him win against Loki, who had that DBS. But Loki shot from the other side. Who was the one? It's the Van again. The Van tapping out to the side of Loki a couple of times, but due to the uneven terrain. Feels impossible to hit those bullets right on top of him. Vegetation has temporary recover. I'm not sure if Romeo Boy can save him in the very last minute. The tap still works. Romeo Boy, will it be too late? Oh, both of them are in the trouble. He walks straight into the sight of Davon. That was high risk, but so lucky for Romeo Boy that Davon actually ran out of bullets. Ah, uh, yeah, but Davon got a couple of uh, eliminations from that, but he has to relocate himself. And hopefully he's able to find more ammunition to replenish. I thought he'll be depending on his uh, bison. That still has about 200 is bullets. Magic gets out into the circle, but spotted out by Austria Esports, but okay behind the tree. So the Pico's going in for the rush. Even got himself on his point. A remarkable extension is going to be the last of Dread down there. We're leaving out to for Austria. This is the chicken they should secure here. And will be the rise and their comeback for this day one grand finals. Oh, Austria Esports. Uh, they have to make it this round. It's their best chance. Like what you said. Now, 4v3, v1, v1. With the circle, with the compound, still looking good. Let's see if they can get stage 7. If they can, then it's really all in for Austria Esports now. At the same time, while they wait for the next circle, they will start to pin down teams. Especially Davan by Skynin. Skynin tapping out from a floor. Squeeze it. This is going to be one of the highest chance to get himself this chicken. It's so hard to see that Squeeze it actually survived for the top four in the very last stage, few stages of the map itself. Now, they don't want to let it slip by their fingers. To get up to the stage is also quite difficult for Exquisite. They need to bank it in for those chicken dinners, for their points there. Why are you being eliminated despite being so aggressive before? And now only Myth Clan Davan remains. I'm not sure he got himself any um, first aid since he's not healing up. But Austria versus Exquisite, this is going to be fun to watch for this chicken. Oh, yes. And Austria has the circle still. So they have the advantage. Exquisite though. They have the two players here. Nathan together with Yue. And Austria East was gathering information. Nate toss on the side of Austria, but nowhere close. Davan still being looked at. This time by Red Bull. Making sure that he doesn't do anything funny. While Exquisite with this elevation. This could be their advantage against Austria Esports. Davon hiding out in a plain sight. 
got himself only barricaded by those exploded buggy and cover of trees. That's a Nathan. Hurt those already accused by OJ Esport. Get listed is going to be super handy for the side of a squeeze it right now. You we got it. It was a quite a dramatic tragedy. Tragedy, sorry, for Yue just now when he slipped down around the edges of the previous wrangle. Now, this is going to be redemption time for Yue. Got himself this uh, even Gilly suit to work around it. But also, Oz Spot has no clue where they're at. But the next circle is going to be less than 45 seconds. And that's going to be the last safe zone that they do have. Like it or not, they have to work at advantage. And best for Exquisite here, it's going to be sneaking up from behind. A sneak attack will actually equalize the field between these two teams. I want to see if Davine can pull something insane. I mean, it's been almost every round that we see a solo player still making it into the top three and could potentially be the one to steal that chicken dinner away. But uh, Davine is position compromised. Anyway, now Nathan, Nathan down to 50% of health, forced to turn back, and Super Pickles finds an off angle against Yui, but could not land the shot. So it remains as three teams here for now. Nobody willing to make a move. Whoever tried to make a first move will actually try to make the mistake exposing themselves to their positions. And their pos it's not going to be fun. On the side of a squeeze they are split it into a 2-1. As Davan actually feels like a teammate for Super Pickles right now due to the color scheme. But it's not actually the friend here. He's actually the biggest foe for both teams. Or J.E. Sport. Despite they are outnumbering. All the other teams out there, they are uh, trading this on thin oh, ice. Red Bull spotted out Davan, and that's going to be 4v3. And this is where Exquisite want to fight back and not be sitting ducks. If not, they'll be done for. Oh, Yue. Now that's not have to circle. But he has a good off angle. Let's see who's done for this time with this sort of off angle. And now Super Pickles fires back. Super Pickles with Skynin. Skynin in front of him. So we got both of them out of nades but he does have a molly and now he tries to land that molly but that will not shake skynin he's still a-ok -okay. just right below super pickles still quite an off angle there oh. super pickles the pivot to player finish off boxing down to only two players left you wait and nathan they might have been pressed down by every possible angle there is as Oja boxing them in, you went down, Nathan as well as Oja as a floor, as a four. Got himself the chicken dinner, it's either all in or all out and they secure a clean win and finally back in the grand finals. Wow, just like during the league stage in week one, they weren't that good. But now they are, well, what, I, what can I say about Aussie Esports? Right? Week 1, they weren't that good. Week 2, week 3, they were amazing. It feels like what? The first half of today weren't that good. But second half, they were amazing now. At least starting off with a chicken dinner. I must say, Aussie Esports. This is the mentality of champions that they're having. I don't know about the mentality of champions, but it feels like a roller coaster right from that perspective. Up and down they go, hot and cold sometimes. But as long as they hit themselves right this time when things really matter, where this is the grand finals, it's the first day, yes, but they cannot afford to just keep losing their grip over the scores because if not, they're having a hard time to play catch up. And it's not fun to play catch up games, especially you have a very short amount of time of sprint of three days grand finals. Yes, uh, very little games, especially if it's the Grand Finals, like what you said, but every game counts. So, this highlight here features Austria Esports, 9 eliminations, 19 points in total. Not as many as the teams that got the chicken dinner before, but still, it is a good restart here for Austria Esports. As you check out this highlight, Skadi, he thought he won that fight, but then again, from afar, uh, he was shot down by Davan, and that just had to happen. But Davan, he lost it long enough. I actually salute and respect his uh, sustainability until the end of it. It's such tenacity, he tried to play it quiet and tried to be as opportunist as he can actually get whenever he can actually score those one eliminations. But unfortunately, he's been outnumbered and outrun by this guy. But, um, but it's just a bit disappointing for me. It's going to be squeezy. They do have a shot against those Chikadina. It's just so difficult to see Exquisite to be up there in the top point every single map and once they got the opportunity to let it slip by they just overthink and just quite hazard to make a move but Red Bull 
this is the guy. I mean, like, if the other teams out there trying to scout this guy, it would be really silly for OJ Esports to let me go. He's just one of the most highest value players in OJ Esports right now. Yeah, the top performing individual player of week number three in the league, Red Bull. When they score a chicken dinner, he's the MVP. So now with the stats here, four eliminations out of nine for Austria Esports. 705 total damage, two knockouts and one assist. And this is one of the least heals that we've seen from an MVP individual so far, 114. And of course, they survived the longest, so that's a maximum survival time of 27 minutes, 17 seconds. So great stuff here by Red Bull. The player that, like what you said, they cannot let them go as it is part of the winner winner chicken dinner team of Jia Esports. Now, for the team stats here, uh, this feels like uh, average damage of a team these days. It's not over 2000, but close enough at 1009. I feel like they can definitely go for more. I feel like the minimum for total damage of a team should be around 2000, but this is close enough. Total domination of 9 on the side of OJ Esports is more than enough to secure themselves a bit of a bump or the jump towards the uh, towards possibly on the bottom of first page if he got himself in the top eight or maybe even more who knows but last we seen them they dropped themselves quite a huge number down there dropping a lot of stairs up down to maybe 11th or 13th place last time we saw them but this time it's going to be uh, the numbers of wonderful numbers of miracles where they got themselves in the top eight possibly yeah, let's see how far will that bring them though. I really want to see now. But definitely page one. Just whether it's top eight or maybe further. So we'll have it discussed in a little bit more as we check out the overall stats from this round. Exactly 300 throwables used. So that is something that you don't always get to see this kind of number. But uh, because I guess it's a kind circle in the area of Gaka. So teams have time to loot airdrops. So we got three of them. Now, speaking of the airdrop, I mean, like, we saw how many Gilly stood till the end of it just now. So that kind of secures a lot of... That's why it's so fun. Because it's, it secures quite a lot of players till the end of it. And they just happen to be not being spotted out due to the Gilly in the airdrop being looted early on. At shot wise, I think it's pretty much average. Just like how the troubles. Also, like I mentioned before, 250 to 350. Distance, well, it depends on the map, right? It's very average map for... But, sorry, 6x6, six six, I think. When it comes to wrangle but on the uh, longest elementary distance is 377 i think this is one of the longest the furthest elementary distance we haven't got ourselves around the 400 but so far when it comes to grand finals this might, this might actually be the furthest for the snipes and yeah, we might see an even longer one later in mirama but for now the points collected in this round, Austria Esports, we are aware that they got themselves 19. Yaku Gatticals with 13, with uh, 9 eliminations. Exquisite, 11. Milk Clan, a lot of them from Davan, 10 points collected. See you soon with 8 points without any placement points. TTQ, 6 points. MFG, 214 Akira, and Playbook Esports, all of them with 5. Dread Esports with 4, Enigma, STE, AI Esports, and Genesis Esports with 1. But unfortunately for the quarter and Harame Bros, this is the round that they did not get any points at all. Is that yet their worst performance for Harame Bros? The first time we're looking at them not getting not just the top 5, but not scoring anything. And another thing about Harame Bros, it feels like a bit of a hot and cold moment for them. They have been consistently getting themselves a top 5 and scored a lot of points there. But due to this one particular point that they're not getting at all, they've just been pushed down out of the top 5 where they play themselves 6. Still doable, but they didn't budge themselves in the 40 still. But when it comes to GE, they start to catch up to us a PBA. Same sort of a gap like we had before, 17 points exactly that. But YG and GE is too close for complex. Same goes for the side of TTQ and also MFG. Look at how tight the race in the top six here. We're talking about these teams, not even one map. It's just halfway, maybe up to four stage in the next map. Things can still change so much in the top six. Yeah, even one good round from Austria Esports, if they can score it again, then they can be in the top three. So looking good so far for Austria Esports. On page two, we got uh, STE, 30 points. Also not too far, even Myth Clan's not that far. Exquisite too. Even see is not that far, but Enigma still remains as the only team with a single digit. So if any team were to work out something right now, it's going to be Enigma. 
Well, they did try. We can see they're really trying, but it's just uh, timing-wise, it's not the perfect one. You have to be impactful when it comes to the grand finals. Everything matters. Every single small, tiny details really matter when it comes to the grand finals. Here, yeah, one mistake can just drag down the entire team, just finish off their run in the grand finals. But when it comes to the next map, we have a different factor coming in, which is going to be vehicles and how large the map as a whole. 8 by 8 kilometers when it comes to the big desert of Birama, heading into the sandy dunes later on. So there are some teams that's not really um, liking this map so much. So I assume the one that didn't score too much, Rango will actually score in this one. Yeah, hopefully uh, some of those teams that haven't been doing so well can do well next because we'd like to see the tough competition to the end for entertainment purpose, obviously. So looking at you guys at page number two, especially Enigma still with that single digit. You don't want to be ending the day with the only team with a single digit. So hopefully the Mirama map is the map that they have been looking forward to. And for us as well, we'll be looking forward for Mirama. But before we go into that, we'll be taking a break. So do not go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. See you guys in a bit. Mobile's sixth birthday is just around the corner. A merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new. In version 3.1, we have lots of new content and updates for players. May you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration. In the sky-high spectacle themed mode, the gigantic Nimbus Island appears on the flight path. If you'd like to begin a mystical journey, then grab a parachute and drop on in. Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island. Harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Truck Stop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7mm ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90! Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system 
will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends, gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time. As Ozja Esports rising back from the dead just now. Early on today, they were nowhere near up there, but finally pushing back to, num uh, to the first page. This is going to be the PMCL 2024 Spring Split, which is going to be the Grand Finals Day 1. We're down to two more maps. It will be a contest for today, which is going to be me, Choo Choo, and Sir Cloud. And we will be starting our first Mirama of the Grand Finals right after this is in January. So let's see if the map actually changes the fate of some of these teams who will be looking for points, especially page number two now. Now that Austria Esports, that break did them a favor. Next, I want to see Enigma doing it. But before we head on further, let's review the points so far for these teams. Now, we do know for a fact that despite they got themselves 30 points, GE start to lose some momentum. They haven't showcased any of their uh, flashy games here. And this ministry, I'm sorry to break the news here. I might actually, some of you guys don't like this statement. But other than those head start points, they did not gain any points too much when it comes to the entirety of the grand finals here. They actually scored only 20 points, 7 from their rank point, 13 for the eliminations. As that, that is not as good as it's supposed to be. Maybe they just need more time to warm up, but it's just really tough to catch up if they don't start to wake up now. Yeah, I mean, uh, the competition is starting to get tight, even like page 2 teams uh, rising up too. So if they don't gather points for themselves then it might be very difficult at some point to so let's see if uh, mirama might do them favors after this maybe it's the map that they've been waiting for so yeah i guess it's the same for all the other teams too and for teams that have been doing well hopefully mirama won't be their kryptonite true and um i'm looking at the numbers yeah the most aggressive uh, team actually performed by far is going to be TTQ. They got themselves the highest elimination across the board for the eliminations only. We don't include their rank points when it comes to aggressive play. So far, with that one particular wrangle that TTQ got 17 eliminations, that's the highest by far in the grand finals in day number one here, and that scores themselves one of the highest team for eliminations. Second is just one point shy of elimination, which was PBE. But speaking of more to go, this is going to be your tournament as well. We do have this Bentley collaboration for you guys. So in case you do have this, do take us. We saw the trailer, it was amazing. The far right and the far right skin, which was another Bentley, possibly going to be used between Daisy Akubar 8 or Mirado. I saw how the stars kind of have a 3D effect in it. It feels like sort of an LCD structure of the skin of the car and actually the stars are blinking inside. It just feels a nebula galaxy kind of feeling. Wow, it feels like taking you to space with that sort of uh, mm. feeling and animation. So if you want to experience it yourself, ladies and gentlemen, as usual, get it inside the game. It's available right now. And if until all of you get it, we'll be reminding you on this collaboration together with our new RP2. So make sure you all get it if you don't want to hear it again from us because 
we will still be showing it to all of you until again every single one of you gets it but you don't you don't hear from from us until the end of the time don't worry it's until just this sunday where that's gonna be the last day of the grand final so make sure you already booked your, yourself that day because that's gonna be the last day of the pmcl this season the spring season where we do have a lot more seasons to come but for this season in particular it's gonna be only three days short for now but speaking of three days short something that's not so short is gonna be we're having the um rp the royal pass later on which can be lasted long of three months duration from the 17th of uh, march to the 17th of may so make sure you grab it as well but speaking of the, the Bentley, we cannot get enough of it because I don't know about the other skins. We don't see a, a lot of the trailer for the dark ones. But the flashy ones too actually been displayed quite a number in the trailer. Yeah, but we do get to see this inside the game too. When you log into it, you will get to see the new RPA6. It's currently available now. And if you purchase this, you will get a maximum repeat of 720 UC. It's now available until the 17th of May for a very limited amount of time. And since this is an RP, you need to do the missions to gain the level. So if you get it early, you have more time to do the missions. And the higher you go, the more rewards that you will get. Just like the Lead Fitness set that is waiting for you at level 100. I would love to see one day, like example, the purple prowess stun grenade, right? Instead of you see a flash with, uh, with this sort of skin, instead of uh, the one that being stunned, instead of just looking at the flash grenade white color, you can actually see just a whole animation of, um, you know, the grenade with dancers in it or something like that. We can't see the players anyway. Instead of just looking at white things, it actually gives an animation or, or visualization animation of whatever that grenade skin has to offer you know it'll be fun to watch and it's just like what uh three seconds usually 2.5 to three seconds of stun grenade or flash where actually kind of works like you know that's the difference of having those stun grenades maybe even the explosion do have a different sort of explosion i'm asking too much i know there's going to be a lot of work for, for 3D, 3d rendering of the uh, developer side and the publisher side but it's something that might actually be in the future hmm that's actually a pretty nice idea though so imagine like instead of it going just white you get to see animation something i don't know like what you say dancing you're forced to, <laughs> you're, uh, yeah, forced yeah, to you're, watch. you're forced to see that right even if you don't like it but that is because your opponent used that so imagine the opponent taunts with the stun grenade that would be pretty nice as well so ideas again coming up from the english desk ladies and gentlemen if you see in the future you know where it came from but also you guys that just joined us here today, this is not the normal typical Southeast Asia PMSL. This is the wildcard region, which we do have Southeast Asia wildcard four regions participating for the league stage we had singapore before and then we had malaysia uh, sorry we had myanmar we have Cambodia, and also um the philippine teams there's going to be four regions right for the pmsl it's going to be malaysia indonesia thailand and vietnam this one is another four regions so if you guys are asking about the teams like where's the boys where's boom it's you guys you guys in a different tournament here guys come on but speaking of the uh, singaporean teams right sad that to see none of their representative make it through for the grand finals i just hope they will come back for the next season and come back way stronger but when it comes to stronger i have a feeling that philippine teams do have what it takes to advance forward possibly even match their levels towards the teams that always compete in the world championship yeah so this is going to be really interesting right if they get the championship then it's a statement for the following season because the following season has a ticket to the pmwc and if they get that as well wow it's going to be huge for the filipino region but in case you just join us for whatever reason this is the league standing from the from the one that ended last week so this gives you an idea of how they got the starting points in case you guys are questioning about the star because i do and always some of you guys will question why there's some sort of symbol they had some uh penalty being charged for the side of myth clan and back in the uh, i think it was week final week in the first few days so that's why you see a bit of a star in there but the rest of the team now sadly it's just one point difference right Cloud? That, that one point difference giving such a tremendous uh, boost towards the side of ge with that 30 points that one point in the league stage cost them eight points in the grand finals 
Yeah, I know, right? It was so, so tight there. There's such a big gap as a starting point in the Grand Finals. But yeah, let's see if they can still catch up to it. Huh? Because uh, right now, it's one thing is about them. Another thing is about uh, so happened that GE didn't really perform. So that's why the gap is not that big. But other than that, um, if we were to look at like the number one team now, PBE, they were below GE and Harami Bros. But where it matters, which is the grand final standings, now they are the ones on top. Now speaking on top, can they still be on top for PBE? They had that chicken double chicken back to back, giving such a strong start for the uh, first day of the grand finals. Yeah, everybody just had their eyes open wide and in awe on the fact that PBE giving such a strong performance straight off the bat and but man it feels like they start to drop some of the games here yeah? we're talking about PBE start to slow down quite a bit maybe they're a bit tired maybe they had the adrenaline rush but it's now no more just diffused into the rest of the red blood cells but for PBE can they keep it back their momentum when it comes to a different map entirely you know you have a different vibe you have a different mentality you you feel different when you see the graphics of and the one that actually being displayed on your phone when you're playing a different map it just the color scheme will wake you up now which team that we hope to wake up it's gonna be i think it's gonna be enigma on your side but i do hope is it or did i get that wrong well, because Enigma is the only team with a single digit, so I was kind of hoping that they could at least get out of that the only team single digit name. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. But I just hope for the sake of the other teams though, I, I want to see the bass of Exquisite because I, I want them to secure those chickens, not just for the sake of Lufa. We do know how great of a person he is. Lufa is one of the kindest person I've talked to. He's got a very soft spoken manner and just very polite as well but at the same time that the last Iranga was the closest one um across we've seen entirety of the week number three even as squeeze do have a hard time to execute to finish off the chicken dinner that was the closest one but when it comes to getting those chicken dinner when it comes to 1v1 between two teams here they just questioning too many things they're just so doubtful about getting the information they're not willing to expand themselves for taking a bit of a risk well um if we base out of the results yeah they they don't really get that many eliminations in the grand finals the highest so far is five eliminations in like two rounds and other than that is obviously lesser than that so i guess if we do, were to like based on the numbers then it's probably something that they need to look into is to get more eliminations whether it's um trying to win fights or be uh, more daring in taking fights and obviously they still need to win it because based on their current position on page number two for them to be up there they need uh, both points max they need to maximize both points the place on points and also elimination points together i agree it feels like a good esport don't get their niche yet we, we do know every single team do have sort of their signature move like yg when it comes to defend they're strong as a wall like brick wall strong just so solid it's so hard to penetrate through their defense and vanguard for yg pbe we do know their signature is always you know trying to sneak coming up from different angles just out of nowhere they start tossing those nades up and just make a huge mass out of a, uh, in an awkward angle without anybody sniffing out the positions but when it comes to exquisite when it comes to enigma they don't really have those kind of niche yet you don't feel like they are they are moving in sort of a unison they're not really synchronizing yet and it feels i like still have some ice breaking to do between the players is, is it just me or do you feel the same here uh well it's kind of hard to tell if um if you always go out fairly early so um but what i can say is that if we base on like the good performance from enigma week one um it was ever since that they start to lose the bootcamp fight with uh, time to break esports in week number two onwards they start to kind of like fall so i don't know if that's something related to the mentality that uh, they were kind of um they were kind of shattered by the fact that they lost bootcamp to time to quick esports that's probably my my best observation of what the case is for Enigma right now. But let's see, maybe it's the map that they need a fresh, uh, they need to fresh up. So we'll jump into Mirama to see whether Enigma makes a comeback.
want to get into the Mirama, the first Mirama of the Grand Finals. Now, how will this actually play out for all the teams down there? You do have a beautiful, excellent, perfect, impeccable flight path as per usual. But don't let the flight path fool you because we do know when it comes to the flight path, the circle will be excruciatingly painful later on. So when it comes to this flight path, everybody can drop their fancy because it's so within reach towards down, south or up north. Even a couple of militaries within reach as long as they got themselves a couple of vehicles early on. But when it comes to the vacant places where the other four teams have been relegated before, like Fearless Esports, got of their seven ABD Esports, every Esports, where they used to drop, it's quite vacant. Now will somebody else take it when it, when it comes to this new Roman map? Well, looking at the top so far, no clashes, lost loners. We have two teams and it can house like three teams that we've seen before. And looking at their split inside, Lost Learners exquisite takes the, south, the south, southern side and uh, Mythman takes the northern side. So probably not going to be a clash there. And Playbook East was they're going to be in the clear. They normally drop in uh, Impala anyway. So that's going to be fine. Chumacera should be CU soon only. But circle wise, it's going to be kind of okay. I guess it's, um, it's somewhat in the middle of the map. So majority of the teams already inside of it as they drop. Well, quite a generous circle, even pops out in the center where Graveyard, Power Grid, Representa de Patron is going to be <coughs> the usual, even St. Martin in this case. So I assume Enigma, this is going to be the map they've been waiting for. Well, for Enigma, hmm, around the area of Hacienda, dropping right in the middle of the circle. But we already got Austria Esports and uh, Red Bull. Putting a couple of shots onto unknown for MFG, but uh, it's not going to be that easy to get a knock onto unknown like this. Quite ambitious from where Red Bull actually stands with his point of view. That seems to be interesting. I don't think I actually hurt and uh, can clip from this far. Well, I might as well just loot up, right, as per usual. We do know when it comes to Mirama, it's so crucial and compulsory even to get those vehicles to work. So they need to find vehicles the moment they got themselves a couple of loot and gears up. It's going to be go time for those vehicles going. But Skynin for Ultra Esport, after, it feels like a very similar pattern that they had during their final week here before they had their last push. But it's just a bit shorter time and just they need to have this sort of momentum build up today rather than tomorrow for Ultra Esports since the Grand Finals only last for three days long. And for Ultra, it's always starting off with, you know, we don't really get a lot of eliminations, but we try to get even slower and getting more slower for the rotation into the map and the zone. And when finally they start to get themselves those chicken dinner, they s kind of switch and sync up for their time into rotation and try to get into the circle, d depending on the time and stages, right? Then, after they're done with that, after they perfected about the timing of navigation and try to unfold the circle of transition, that's where they start to open up the opportunity for fragging. It feels like they take one baby step at a time for Austria East, but that's how it usually does. But I'm not sure about the case of the Grand Finals since we're in very short, limited amount of timeline here. Yeah, so far, I guess they are uh, pretty much doing the same pattern. And I guess at the end of the day, it's about uh, doing what you're comfortable with first. And then you kind of think of like, okay, adaptability and all that. Because if you do something that you're uncomfortable and it doesn't work out, then it's not going to be a fun conversation within the team. So if you keep it comfortable and if it's okay and if it works, so I guess why not, right? And so far, whatever happened in Ultra Esports from the previous round, I guess they did something comfortable. So they're starting to see that, hey, you know what? Maybe uh, it, it works for us if we continue on to do however they did it in the previous round. I agree, especially when it comes to long break, really actually help the players to have their head back in the game and just refocus about their objectives towards the next couple of maps. So whoever actually have a difficulty or some difficulties to actually get themselves their head into the game when it comes to the first day of Grand Finals, that long break in between the third and fourth game really helps so much to regain their momentum here. But MFG, this is going to be the team that always underrated but back towards the others that have actually have a first contact made and the first blood been drawn 
which can be dread, fit, um, got charged by the side of 214 Akira. Not 214 Akira, we do know they love fight. They, they, don't, they don't really go for strategy. They're always going to go for fights for 214 Akira. Yeah, and 214 Akira, the team that generally likes to take fights. And uh, so far, in general, I think they're, they're not too bad when it comes to taking fights. So this also brought them their first blood here. So happened to be in the right position to get a pick up out of drag esports. But we did talk about Enigma as well. So they got the first uh, knock, but not secured the point yet. But it shouldn't be a problem. They should be able to get this point and they'll finally be joining the double digit team. Speaking of double digit, Enigma. YG Loki bleeding out. Here comes a Nate coming up from the side of Cloud, Tossing it out, cooking it up. It's going to be less than one second. Mid explosion was a perfect time. Well cooked, Nate. Unfortunately, it didn't, collect, didn't click or connect so far. Caps like Enigma. Spotted on one there. It feels like this is going down the drain for Enigma. Down to no percent of health. How is that he's still been alive? Coca Cola managed to secure another. Oh. But Enigma, this might be digging their own grave here. Oh ho ho, Enigma. Pretty much not too bad, I must say. But Romeo Boy might be the one to end them. Let's see here. And Enigma goes out. It started off not too bad, right? They got the first knock. And they seemed like, okay, until when Yaku Gaitikos came, the rest of Enigma came, it seemed like they had the numbers. But then again, it's about the execution of the fight that didn't work out for them. Oh, they do have to question about the execution. It just seems a bit too messy right now instead of Enigma. It was way too much. He, they managed to score one, but at least they got themselves up a digit into the game here. And they have the same standing as DQ, but that's not actually should be taken as a praise. Not something to be proud of as well. But on the side of Dread and the others, now we do have a lot of teams that have very similar numbers on across the board here. Enigma and DQ both got at 10 points for now. Dread and AI spot at 18. But there's going to be a bit of a jump between the um, 12 and 13 plays here. But the one that they should actually aim for by end of today for all the teams up across the board to have a minimum amount of at least to finish off the day at 30 points and above. Because if they're being left up too far, tomorrow will be a big problem for them to just catch up to top 8. Yeah, it's going to be real hard uh, with this sort of uh, not so momentum for them. But for Young Gaticos, at least they won the fight, so that's four points. And with their four points, they pushed down Genesis Esports just by a little. And now they're at second place. 53 points in total with more points to collect since they are still in this. But they, they'll be playing the rest of the round with three players. But we have seen it before. Three players getting chicken dinner. It is possible. So still, it's okay for Young Gaticos. But for YG, I do have a lot of expectation. This is a legacy team and a legacy org. They lost one man early on, but Myth Clan. This is going to be another underrated team. There's so many good teams, by the way. Myth Clan and MFG, very similar when it comes to the gameplay. Aggressive indeed. But the next circle will determine who will be the most aggressive. We're quite having a general circle here. Very common one as well. Like once upon a time, a classic circle like that. Between St. Martin and St. Patron. When we see in this kind of circle, you have to pick between St. Martin or St. Patron because we do know it will be divided between the street and the circle up to stage number eight. We do know the circle might end up right in the middle of the street as well. Mm, and uh, this is a GE circle because St. Martin is their home. They know this place like the back of their hand, but their home has been invaded by other teams. You can see Young Gaticos coming through Hacienda, AIE Sports. Coming through the right side of Hacienda too, so I guess uh, everyone might want to try to get into St. Martin to secure, to book their own home. Speaking of booking, a lot of teams start to book a lot of compounds down there. Whoever's it's late, good luck to make an entry. Myth Clan just happened to be uh, swapping a um, couple of bullets in between with Armour Bros. Possibly there's also G GE nearby on the side of GE. I mean, GE is one of the teams that we do know. If we talk about the other teams that love that can be represented by GE in the very last minute, I, I assume it's going to be Face Clan, how the way they play. Like, they're pretty good at Mirama as well for Face Clan. Very similar with GE playstyle. And not just that, maybe even Vampire can actually compare to GE because they love to make a one game a wonder. That's what GE special, uh, specializes about. So I'm not surprised if GE can just shoot up to first place in the very last day here. 
Yeah, I mean, GE can definitely come up with surprises, and they are a very good, high-quality team. But of course, realistic-wise, when it comes to points, you don't want to be left too far behind. But uh, GE, realistically, right now, on the overall charts, they are still within reach of the number one. So teams above them or around them cannot be comfortable. They have to collect as many points as possible. Even if you're PBE and your numbers look kind of shiny, you still cannot drop the ball yet at this point. True. And PBE do have some difficulties when it comes to the last map here. Right, we have a very challenging circle of Erangle. But it's not stopping any of the teams that happen to be in the middle pack that are striving for more to get those chicken dinners. TQ, sadly I have to say I'm quite disappointed with their performance. Same goes for AIE Sports because of how aggressive they can get in the final few days of league. But when you have to restart and having a clean slate all over again, these teams do reset their minds as well, apparently. Not just the points and the board happen to be resetting to zero. Their momentum and their league performance seems to be just leaving them behind as well. So that's quite surprising to see some teams that just on fire and heated up in the final week just happen to be so cooled and so cold down. In the first day of Grand Finals here. Yeah. yeah, momentum is definitely a thing here. Especially when it comes to bringing on the pos positive mentality for the teams. So, so far, momentum-wise, have been shifting towards Austria Esports after that one chicken dinner. And if you look at their current position, they are on the left side of the map, just coming in. And like what you described about their play style, they like to come in a little bit later. So now we do see the presence of them in the circle. But because a lot of teams, they try to get into the middle. So by the side right now, Austria Esports is pretty okay. But we got a knockdown onto one member of uh, CU soon. No elimination yet as of now. So I guess it's uh, another one of those long range. Yep. Uh, same goes for the side of two on four. Kira feels like they are struggling for both teams, yeah? And I assume it's going to be PBE. See you soon, Marama Bro, having exchange of grenades. I think PBE is nearby, or maybe it's just the tech happened to be popping uh, around the edge of, uh, of the screen down there. But Harami bros, they want to shut down CU soon. Who happened to be losing uh, a couple of members just now? But they managed to pick them back up after that, uh, that knockdown, which was zero. I'm not sure if they got themselves first eight. Yeah, they definitely do. They just reset themselves in the very moment. But 2 on 4, Akira, Dread, and YG leaving out with only three players left. The rest of them. Well, we do have a bit of slower start in Mirama, maybe because it's the first Mirama of the entirety of the Grand Finals, plus a little bit of change of dynamic with their drop spots due to the relegation of the other four teams. And also, they don't want to make too many mistakes like how they did in Wrangle. Well, speaking of mistakes, not too sure if this is one, but STE, Stranger Esports, lost two players. Now, down with only two left for the rest of the round. As we can see here, Playbook Esports, full squad coming from Impala, so it's a little bit of a later rotation for them. Passing by Hacienda de Patron, it's just that they need to cut across the road. But they do have a representative there, so you need to be careful of the team above them that is Dread Esports coming into PBE. Yeah, coming in. Definitely will be PBE. Crushing even, possibly. Right, Mom? Bit of a hike to be done. But problem is, the angle's a bit awkward for him to actually open fire. The AKM will not work at his best due to how awkward the sharp angle is. A bit steep for this hike. So you have to go back with the rest of the team. But the problem is how to get out from there once he's in. Dread Moy also split it out like how Gerald did. They do know the pivotal plays of these two uh, off-angle players. Such an important part to keep everything at bay. But <clears throat> the Blue Zone would not be that forgiveful. Talking about less than five seconds, it's gonna be a bit of a shift. Will Dread Moy spot out Michi? But I don't think he will be shot down at this distance. But at least they got one minute to figure out how to leave for PBM both right because they are in the same boat. Yeah, locked in with each other on the outside of the circle. What the blue is onto them, that is not the best of scenarios. But they still need to go through it as long as they don't want to let go of each other. But we can see here, Dread Esports making a rotation up north, so they're gonna let PBE go. Gerald, back to a side of Moy. Oh, he got himself stuck quite in the center there. They will take a bit of a northern rotation for Dread. They don't want to just commit themselves to the fight. 
that happen to be overextended in the blue zone as well. Got shots by a couple of bullets from afar. I'm not sure who. But see you soon. Harome bro and GE. Even one more team at the back. This is going to be a bit of a mess. It's going to be real interesting now, especially when the circle is not there by the range all alone. Knock it out, Kaya. Now it's up to him against the John. Zero is on his knees. So range 1v1 with the John now. With range coming on the outside, the John is prepping out his day. He thinks that range is still across, but range is now behind him. Well, I see keeping the sprays on to the unknown of smokes. Back to a set of our bro range. Wasty just keep the pressure onto a side of range, but see you soon. The Johnny will be wrapped around by the side of Arami, bro. But they'll take in the damage of those mollies quite a bit for himself. Now, Rage will return the favor, giving back John to us those mollies. The problem is, they're losing more men than they hope for. Arami, bros, this is not working out well. Wow, Arami, bros. Oh. Just as when we thought they're working out well, but actually they have only one active player left at the front of long range. Got some help. So it looks like range will be able to reset himself in the house for now. That was a lucky, lucky one, I must say. But just as he spawns, all targets coming in front of them now. And West spots one now. Ichi, one last tick of health, will reset in the house. My name in 14, back to a side of Scardi with eight times scope at that. And GE got himself quite a solid compound. I said no Dipatron, but the problem is. If the circle shift them away, it's going to be difficult for them to find another good spot. But Scardi, on the other hand, barely have enough to work around. He's a lone, lo he's a lone ranger for now. Same goes for the side of a squeezed last player. While well, two on four accurate, despite the loss um, opti quite early on, that's still going to be okay for now. While the other teams start to fight against each other, we do know fourth stage, which means a great migration happens. The circle shrinks half of its size before. It's going to be 50% off land that's left from the initial first stage down to 40 more seconds we're down to stage number five which getting even smaller space like it or not these teams have to prepare themselves for the fight hopefully they just replenish the resources because there's going to be any time now oh bbe mom boy takes out naughty boy but shroud knows that super because it's just right below him tries to land that nade into the shack but it's not going to be that easy for the anger plus the smoke is blinding his sight and now shroud on his vehicle but he's being shot at 50 percent of health but he has his teammates across, so he should be able to land nice and safe. PBE. Quite clustered into this, around this building. With AIE spot showing himself as well. But lucky enough, this building right now where this stands actually inside of a circle. We do, do have to deal with two players, or not two players, make it three teams here. It's going to be one player from the northern side, which is going to be Dread players, while the rest of the team Dread Esports will join in Holy Lanju. AI Esports are going to be left with Duo, where PBE might want to take the five day. Actually, no, exactly. That's going to be AI players with only two players. While the rest of the other teams do take a bit of a northern, which also Dread Esports decide to, cam to come in slow as per usual. They rotate all the way from south up to the north on the left side, outside of the circle, just to be a bit more safer. So we can expect also E-spot. Never mind. And just take it, but FMFG just spotted them out. Well, they're fighting back though. But SOX went down. Now it's that the Red Bull and Dewey, the two tie players. As Dewey goes down, that's only the MVP player, Red Bull, to try and fight it against MFG. Get the members of MFG, Mewtwo and Yahiko, coming in on their vehicle. So their reset needs to be quick. Will be quick enough. And MFG oh. just goes flat it down. TTQ, Oja Esports now trying to finish off the rest of MFG. I don't think the roundup just now actually works out right for them. Three of them being knocked down oh. all of a sudden. MFG Mewtwo, what a detrimental mistake just now for Oja Esports and MFG at the same time. But on the side of TQ, that's the loss of them as YG Rain triumph. And we're down to 12 team. In an instant, three teams went down back to back. Oh, wow. All of a sudden, we're seeing a lot of fights and a lot of teams eliminated just like that. Next, could it be MFG? Because now, time to quick esports is onto them with Zuki. Knowing where the members of MFG is, that he even knows that Mewtwo left. Yahiko is still around the corner, and Zuki is closing in onto Yahiko. Mewtwo. He's not healing himself up there. Maybe he's doing it right now. I'm not sure. Or oh, he's using just band-aids. 
A bit slower for those heal ups. Definitely using band aids for now, yeah. Don't have anything on him. No health utilities. Yahiko is not going to share it off because it's just a bit too far apart. Miyahiko, the one that actually do have a lot of utilities, cannot even stand up at this point. The one that actually have to do so much work is going to be Mewtwo, but still healing up with those bandages. My God, speaking of the circumstances and the situations, it's unfavorable for MFG. And that's going to be the first thing being popped off. But the moment the smoke clears up, it dissipates. It's going to be clear as day for TTQ to shut down on Mewtwo. Yo, well, whoa, wait a second. Oh, it's Young Radicals. Romeo boy actually stealing that elimination away. So, time to click eSports could not secure that one extra point. So, they will still remain as a team with one point now. Instead, Young Radicals has 10 out of that elimination. Romeo boy, keep it going. With a couple of taps and sprays from a bubble. The Braves are going to go for more. YG keep hunting people down. He got himself 10 eliminations right now. With WTZ leading at the board with four eliminations individual uh, by himself. Myth clan on there then. Being quiet for quite a bit after they got himself that compound and they're rushing early on. PBE, Raimon will be knocked down by the dread. Full guys, which could be holy land you even though as a trio they're still gonna go for more one eliminations in the back, but they need more, hence they want to go more aggressive here. But how to spot the player you out with this sort of terrain just so uneven to visualize with their hands, which can they're playing as hand and also their eyes. Yeah, that's where the scouter will play a big role. But if you have three players, then it's gonna be kind of difficult. But what you eat, they do see 2-1 for Akira from their angle. And LGE will be approached by Mufflan as they approach. Wild well, got knocked out by West. Wako take it out. And now Smile will come in with his own nade too. The members of Mufflan just below them. Michi will be the one to secure Joseph with M249. So right now the defense for GE looking not too bad. But they still need to clear off some other players to get in. What? Well. Pleasant enough with at least six eliminations out of GE. That's more than enough. And if they score another four, I mean, that's definitely more comfortable for a chicken since they got themselves those eliminations. But top G, or oh, smile. Trying to just cook up the name and make sure nobody will bridge. It's a perfect spot. That's going to be doubled down. Make a triple go. And GE smile is definitely smiling from air to air with those explosions. Here comes Ooh. another the finishing touch. There you go. That should do the job. Plus... Shots from Smile with the Scar L. And there's only H2R there. Crawling for help. But Master Ichi will let the hand to Smile and take it back home. That extra point for Genesis Esports now. Looking for this comeback. But they're not over yet because Wako is still around the corner. Wako all alone in the circle though. But Wako! Nice long nade by Smile to eliminate the final member of 2 1 4 Akira. Just like that, Smile just scored himself five eliminations. And there was a huge angle as well. Didn't actually break any sweat at this point. Easily just tossing those nades at the same particular trajectory. It's just something that effortlessly just gaining him so much contribution towards the team. GE Manane has spotted RPBE just rushing to AIE spots. Sizex got caught by surprise. And the ding dong bell oh. they go down as PBE have a bit of a trade. But lucky oh. enough, but wait, how wide? WTZ. Oh. Oh man, Yangu Gaiti goes from behind. My goodness. What a surprise shot. And this is not the first time that they did this kind of surprise shot in this round. They stole away one elimination point out of the hands of Time to Quick Esports. And now they will be the one to eliminate Playboy Esports from afar. Opening up the chance for Justice Esports themselves. And also Time to Quick Esports to maybe be the number one. Nasty by WTZ, but that was brilliant. Genius even. Very sneaky indeed. Finish off in an unpleasant way to as a team that's just being eliminated just now. Now yeah, eSports, they tried their best. They didn't score any eliminations by him today. Down to the five teams that we've seen. Feel so we do have uh, not really the same teams that kind of got themselves in the top five this time, except for GE. Well, GE, they had a really rough run when it comes to Rango, but we do know Miroma has always been their preferred map in this case. But look at how they're spreading out. Devon being uh, actually spotted out, maybe by YG players, because Master Ichi, if I'm not mistaken, from each, uh, GE actually being shot down. Now, Devon can be the, the snake 
that they have no clue that's still alive about behind GE. This is going to be the t poison for two teams at the same time. YG and GE didn't spot out Davan. That's going to be the end for their life. Yeah, Davan always the last man standing. Always the one to survive it for his team, Myth Clan. And like what you said, seems like for the teams in front of them don't know that he's there. So it's his call on how to try to slide into the circle. This is still on the outside. He has to decide fast because now time is on his side. The zone will close. Romo boy. I'm trying to find any anybody that stands. Nobody willing to stand here. Davon have to just march forward just a tiny bit. Advance just around 10 steps. It's going to be more than enough space for him to get into the circle. But Monet spotted out. Dead. Here comes a spray. A bit clipping. It's like a mid-air explosion. It's a bit too short for those explosions happening. They're actually a bit long enough. But here comes the second round. This time oh. it will hit. And they mm. return the favor. Moy is just running around in circles. Hoping to take covers around his days here. But GE, you can never let them see you. And you shoot them down. You just cannot not knock them down. Because they will chase the heck out of you. If you don't just shut them down first. Yeah, and they already got 11 eliminations. Very different GE performance from the previous round. Let's see if they can score the chicken dinner. Young Gugaticos doing really well as well. 13 eliminations for them as they try to shut down. Time to quick esports. All of them in front of Young Gugaticos. WTC with this high ground. They could potentially get all four points out of time to quick esports. And down to only one plus player coming out from the side of TTQ, but at least. Liquid can pick up a couple of members, but why do you want to wrap things around? Did it actually make it through it down to three? Three v three v three is a trio battle here between the three teams. Oh, look at this. Loki, not too sure what happened to him. We got blown up, but we got Dread Esports as well. Let's not forget about them because they have three players active. But with Romeo Boy's position, it's going to be easy for them to try to lock them all out. Including GE. Look at Dread Esports, my boy! Look at our West. But because they have the compound, they should be able to reset. Disgrace coming up. Moy. The pixel shot will hit him deadly, even. It's gonna be a deadly move if Moy just have a very wrong step. Trying to orchestrate on a very thin eyes here for Dread Esports. GE, will they finally get their first chicken in the grand finals here? A lot of fans have been waiting for the right time to celebrate. And here comes a nade dropping on oh. to make it three and make it even and make it done deal at a distance. Only Holy Lunge 11. YG managed to score in what? And 19 eliminations a day number one. Are you kidding me? Wow, they might break the season record right now with 19 eliminations already in their hand. Can they top it off with a chicken dinner as well? But their uh, opponents are not pushovers. Jess's eSports is still in this. Holy Landu, right in front of WTZ. They can make it 20 though. Okay, they're heading towards Holy Landu. Holy Landu with a UMP, WTZ with an M4. Just right in front of each other. But because of the terrain, they don't see it. Holy Landu praying for his life in the center of the war zone. He is the only one that nobody actually spots out. But I have a feeling that YG do hear a bit of his twitch here and there due to how he moves when he's snaking down. A GE or the side of YG being favoured. Nobody knows. Whoever actually be closed down by the blue zone first will have to go down. They'll be forced to actually leave their compound. And it feels like, for me, GE do have the short end of the straw. Because the blue zone just seems to be nearer towards them than the side of GE, uh, YG. Holy Landy on the other hand, if he happened to be the one that lucky enough and start to just pray for the best of himself, he actually might last long enough to get the chicken. Oh man, this is so crazy. Holy Landy does do it because he's in the middle of these two teams now. But the focus is between GE and Yangu Galacticos. GE now closing into the inner side while Yangu Galacticos still holding on to the high ground. Nate's end to the side of Merna will push him back. Merna needs to reset 50% of health. Young Gugatico, still pretty focused on the Genesis, he's on this ball! Knocked out by Loki! 
Oh, here comes the cleaning up crew. Loki just giving himself the best angle ever to finish off. So pivotal for the rest of GE. But only Lange also being spotted out by Romeo by YG. Nothing to stop them. They even break the record. Are you kidding me? Can they score at 23? They can actually do that. They will. And they score mm. the most elimination out of this season. PMCL with the chicken in, it in the grand final in the first day. YG blowing our minds out. Mind-blowing performance at 23 eliminations. Yeah, remember this lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Loki, Saint Cloud, WTC, and a Romeo boy from Yangu Gatticals breaking the season record for the most eliminations. And it only took them this first day in the grand finals to do that. I mean, the grand finals puff, the grand finals motivation. That is probably what got into them, and they scored it big. This is... Big is an understatement. This is beyond that. This is heavenly. This is radiant. This is otherworldly. we never seen this sort of eliminations these days. It's impossible. Maybe like, what, two years ago, it's still possible. Not this year, not last year, not anywhere near in the future even this is the most eliminations in any tournament we've casted together across the 2024 even 2023 oh yeah but and because of that we have to relieve the best moments through these highlights and if you somehow somehow just join us yes the numbers are correct you are not looking at it wrongly 23 eliminations for young guys that 33 points a whooping 33 points I mean, they, they kind of overshadowed GE's performance right? because he also got a lot of eliminations, but because of 23 eliminations, that is like what, one third of the lobby that they've taken out and they are definitely the highlight team, not only for this round, but for today. Third population to be finished off by YG only, by themselves, these players, I mean, look at the numbers, all got themselves a triple seven magical number, that was insane. Nobody actually pull off this sort of trick anymore. There's no such team that we've seen across that can score as much as they do here right now. I mean, every single person in YG was the MVP if you can actually put up more than one MVP. Because every single one of them scored seven eliminations. Yeah, seven eliminations. Yeah, that's the average for each player. Man, I wish we could see the breakdown. I really want to see like how did the others fare exactly. But anyway, MVP Romeo Boy with 1,036 damage, one knockout and a six assists. Only 183 heal. And since they survived as a full squad, so it's maximum survival time for all of them. 28 minutes and 14 seconds. And Romeo Boy is not the player that we always see getting the uh, MVP. We normally see Loki, but for this round, when it's going big, it is Romeo Boy with the MVP. I don't know why, but whenever I cast, it's always going to be Romeo Boy. It's so hard for me to see Loki, but sometimes they are alternating between each other. But YG, as a team, as a whole, what just changed him so much? It's not just the map change just now. It was the entire team fam up, something to do with Mubama. They, they just so, so darn good. Look at the damage. This is going to be the most. I've seen this sort of numbers before, but it was ancient times ago. 3,095, that's a huge number. If you had the average, it's always 1,000, 9,000, and we hardly break into the 2,000s for the total damage. But this with 23 eliminations, 3,000 damage, 13 knockouts with 14 assists, that's crazy numbers popping up here. Yeah, I know, right? And they didn't give away any points to other teams, so it's... Can't get any more perfect than this for Young Group Articles. So, yeah, this will shoot them up really, really high in the overalls. This is what I really want to see. Because last we saw them, they were at number three. And yes, they do have a gap with Playbook Esports. But with this sort of number, I mean, they could potentially be number one. We'll get the official numbers soon, ladies and gentlemen. But before that, we'll be checking out the overall stats from this round. And here are the numbers. So, despite it being a big map, we don't see more than 300 throwables used. Yep, um, I guess it's going to be still the standard so far. Uh, surprising, it actually should be the longest mission distance, but we had it in a rank at 393. So it's, this is where we're supposed to have the sniper rifles to put up so much work. But surprisingly, for headshot, it's not so much. By sticking it over, uh, I just cannot move on. The fact that 33 scores 
for one single round, that's definitely going to be YG at number one spot right now. Mm, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Because Playbook Esports uh, didn't really last that long. They got eliminated somewhere in the middle. So it's highly likely that GE, even though they had a good round, but I mean, it's 23 eliminations. So that should be enough to overtake Genesis Esports. Because the last time we saw between Genesis Esports and Yaku Gatikos, the difference is only one point. So it's not going to be significant enough for GE to be above Yaku Gatikos with this amount of eliminations and obviously you can did it together but uh, yeah it's a matter of holding on to it but if you look at how it's been today for Yaku Gatikos especially ever since the reset they haven't been too bad so this is obviously the best round I mean like we do know for a fact that uh, the first place just got themselves sort of like what 60-ish points and why G I, we do know the gap between the first and second is just 17 points if you can actually score 33 points you're pretty much at number one i mean this is the first day i just want to know how much of a gap between the first and second place that's where it becomes crucial because pbe is still spot something out of here they got himself eight, eight points when ge kind of closing up the gap i have a feeling that ge are still not overtaking uh, this other pbe for now but the gap is just so so minor the margin is just too close but how much the gap and margins between the top three and that's a question that everybody have to ponder yeah we'll get to know that in a little bit more but unfortunately for some of the other teams like Austria esports only one point and they thought they joined the double digit club with that one point so a little bit of progress for them but for young Gugatikos this is the official number here 82 is their number and they are above playbook esports by seven points now what a great catch up considering that playable esports have a decent gap now also when it comes to pbe versus ge uh the the point difference is not too much either it feels like <clears throat> around seven points is still not too much and still not too far also the coming up from the side this is where we do have uh, a bit of a gap 14 between ge and ttq but it can be closed up any time now when it comes to the first to sixth place i feel like it's still going to be sort of same momentum as before just the big amount of difference there's going to be yg and pb swap places here because yg they came out short before they were in a sort of eighth place or at the very bottom of first page but never this high hopefully they can remain where they at till the end of the grand finals oh yeah oh yeah i mean we've seen like uh at least two swaps now we started the day with GE number one and then Playbook Esports took the number one and now Yaku Gaitikos overtaking the both of them to be number one so at least three different teams have sat on the throne so you can see how tight the competition is among all these teams maintaining it to the end will be the biggest challenge now for Yaku Gaitikos now um, also they took away the highlight and spotlight against PvE just now who got himself a double chicken back to back for the first day of the Grand Finals. Not just that, they even stamped their name in the most elimination in this PMCL. So, I mean, today first day has been crazy. We're talking about explosive and bombastic performance with the double chicken back-to-back, -back, first, second map. And then down to the last two map of Mirama, we do have the record breaking of 23 eliminations plus a chicken dinner. That is just an insane amount of surprises here for our first day of Grand Finals. I know, right? So much has happened in day number one. That is crazy. I mean, how much more crazier can it get, right? We got one more game to go. Maybe another record elimination. I don't know. It's going to be tough, but you know, it is mathematically possible. But let's see what happens in the final round. Before that, we'll head on to a break. See you guys in a bit. sixth birthday is just around the corner a merry sixth anniversary to all friends old and new in version 3.1 we have lots of new content and updates for players may you have a wonderful sixth anniversary celebration in the sky high spectacle themed mode the gigantic nimbus island appears on the flight path if you'd like to begin a mystical journey then grab a parachute and drop on in Nimbus Island is a magnificent city in the sky. The Day Island offers a wide field of view, 
making it the perfect place to show off your gun skills. The Night Island boasts charming scenery, but veils itself in fog. Extra caution is advised. Eliminate all enemies on the island, harness all the blessings you can from the magic lamps, and collect ample supplies along with an extra respawn card. These are your crucial measures on the road to chicken dinner. Don't fret if you're unable to enter Nimbus Island. You can board the Sky Treasure Ship and unlock crates. Or with the aid of the treasure map, find crates that grant extra supplies. The all-new two-seater vehicle, Flying Carpet, is sure to become your trusty accomplice on this adventure. Aside from this, plenty of mystical items will aid you in eliminating your enemies or in pranking your teammates. On this 6th anniversary, the battleground will be full of interesting spots to check out. Treasure lies where fun begins. Hurry and gather your teammates for an adventure. As for classic mode, the Miramar map has been majorly updated in this version. We have integrated two new districts, Shrugstop and Partona. Furthermore, with this update comes a special weather condition, Sandstorm. Players caught in a sandstorm will continuously lose health, so be sure to avoid them. As for firearms, the P90 SMG has received a major revision and will be the first airdrop submachine gun posing a significant threat. The new version of the P90 is available through airdrops, uses unique 5.7 millimeter ammo, has a fast rate of fire, and has very low recoil. It comes with a suppressor and laser sight. The sight can switch between two different magnification levels, but it cannot be equipped with other firearm attachments. Hurry and try out the new P90! Many new maps are coming, including a new blade ball gameplay, where you can now use flying pans to deflect balls back at opponents. New grenade blade balls have been added, so beware of blade balls detonating after the countdown ends. The character switch device has added a new zombie transformation feature. The option to transform into a zombie and infect downed players is now available. When editing as a team, teammates editing the same object is no longer a concern. There are still even more improvements to check out that support your creative freedom. An option to retain the equipment from a match has been added, and the match-wide detectable action management system will help you retain your items and progress for an improved gameplay experience. A new smart generator function has been added that invites players to enter any text and the game will automatically generate a grouped object according to the prompt. Come over to World of Wonder and write what you'd like to say. Enchantopia will continually be updated and in these updates, players without creator authorization will be able to enter the progress hub, challenge map creation stages, experience the joys of map creation, and will even have a shot at becoming an authorized creator. In the new version, we are also launching a major feature, the all-new home system. In the home system, players can freely build their dream homes and interact with friends. In Cheer Park, we have also added the home shop and create a space that highlights their personality. Home building mode will also support collaborative editing by up to four players. Have fun building a house with your friends. Gather your friends and start building a home together. That's a wrap for the main sixth anniversary content. Update PUBG Mobile for more exciting content to explore. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. See you next time. Just been the first day of the Grand Finals PMCL 2024 Spring Split, and it has been amazing, mesmerizing, even entertaining with so much record breaking games that we do have for our first day. And it's a treat, we will be your casters here today, which are going to be me, Chuchu, and Circle Up. My god, today, how will they wrap things up for day number one? 
Oh, I can't wait to see the final game because, well, just as when we thought that, okay, the highlight today is Playbook Esports Double Chicken Dinner at the start, but oh well, Yahoo Radicals just topped that off with the most eliminations in a single round the entire season so far with 23 eliminations. And just to recap how much they have jumped up to number one, this is it Yahoo Radicals 82 points in front of Playbook Esports. And not just that, they got themselves the most eliminations across the board as well. If you look at the numbers, the 44 elimination numbers is the winning point where they start to get themselves in number one here compared to the placement ranks, which they only have one chicken in compared to PB who had that double chicken back to back. Now, despite Ozja Esport do get themselves a one chicken for the day in MFG, but they didn't actually push themselves in the top four or top five either because um, except for MFG, of course. Maybe Austria, they have a bit of a problem to get themselves those eliminations if you compare across the board. Austria just start to build up the momentum here. Yeah, number seven still. Same before they started the uh, bef the Mirama round and after they got the chicken dinner. So it's still chance for them to go up further. But uh, yeah, that's I guess that's kind of like the good thing or the good news for teams on page two and uh, second half of page one, right? Is that teams on top they are like cancelling out each other. One time you see Playbook Esports on top, one time you see GE, and one time you see Young Red goes by cancelling out each other. They kind of even up the the points, so opens up more opportunity for the mid table teams to catch up later. But personally, I feel like this season is a bit more special than the previous few like last year because of how improved, uh, how much they've been growing for all the teams when it comes to the World Cup uh, region. Back in the days, we do see a bit of domination in certain ways of certain teams, like example, GE or OG Esports. We, we did have West Pomamba back in the days. So these three teams are always going to be the one interchanging. Even YG was having a hard time in last year. But this year, everybody grows so much. It's just incredible to watch. Yeah, and this year, we do have this Bentley collaboration, ladies and gentlemen. It is still up, and you can check it out inside the game. Nine amazing cars for you to collect here. And make it part of your applicable vehicles, one of them, which is a UAZ or Dacia or the Coupe RB or the Mirado. So this is a chance to ride inside the game in style amongst your other friends and explore diverse range of vehicles that they have here with the Bentley collection, nine different cars for you to put in your inventory and keep it forever. Now, I do notice about the grills though that the only is it only three vehicles that have their grills light up in red? The two one in the front and the one in the center at the back, they have a bit of a tint of red when it comes to their grills. The rest of them, not so much. You have this normal Bentley uh, silver silver colored grills i think that's going to be the different uh the differentiation points of between the skins one of the uh, perks of it maybe it comes at different level of tiers possibly as well when it comes to different side of how fancy the skin can get for bentley collabs yeah probably so you guys out there whoever who gets it make sure you create content put it in social media Type up your mobile tigers because we really like to see how it is from a player's perspective that is but other than the uh, bentley collaboration we still have right now live the new rpa6 and if you get it right now you stand a chance to get a maximum rebate of 720 uc available for a limited amount of time until the 17th of may and if you get this Make sure you play the missions because you don't want to miss out on the opportunity of getting one of these amazing Lilac Fitness set. Yep, and also it's to commemorate the 6th anniversary, the 6th anniversary of PUBG Mobile. It's been 6 years that we had esports in PUBG Mobile. PUBG Mobile lasted longer than that. I think it's, it's like 7 or 8 years now. But also when it comes to your RP, like uh, Cyclops mentioned, you do need more time to finish off your mission, so make sure you buy it way before they expire, which is going to be 17th of May. So if I calculate it around minimum, or the, 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 like the fastest you can actually get all those missions done, it's probably going to be by a month if you have the time to cram up all to push the missions in a month, like playing non-stop back to back. Maybe a month would be suffice. But if you don't have that much time, you better start buying it now. If not, you won't finish off the mission. 
especially when you have a royal pass but you didn't actually finish off at level 100 to unlock the lilac finesse set it's going to be unfortunate it's really going to be pointless to buy the rp if you didn't actually finish off the mission because it's going to be a limited amount of set here we're talking about they never going to repeat this out anytime soon or anytime ever I'm sure you have more time after the tournament ends by this weekend and then you can start like, okay, replacing the tournament watching time by grinding the RP. And I can tell you it's definitely going to be worth it. If you had any one of these RPs before, you know what I'm talking about. It's worth it. You reward yourself while you play. You enjoy the game. At the same time, you enjoy the goodies that come together with it. So no reason not to get it right now. Remember, this is the RP A6 limited amount of time. Get it in game, PUBG Mobile. Now we're done with the ads. We're down to the last Miroma map of the day. And Miroma is where all the magical happens as well as the first wrangle. But the magical happens more in Miroma because everybody just desperate to get those numbers up, especially the team in the middle pack. And the middle pack is just so determined, so willfully want to get themselves up there compared to teams that really have a floating time in the league stage. We're talking about Ozja Esport. They're having a bit of a slow momentum compared to League, but YG, a different beast entirely. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, only There was only one round that they dropped the ball, which is the first Irango. But other than that, they've been doing fairly well. I mean, we'll kind of think about it, right? Um, third place in the final Irango. Um, and the second Irango, that is fourth place in the final Irango. And now... A record-breaking chicken dinner, 23 eliminations. And Yanko Gatticals, even though they didn't score the, the chicken dinners before, they have been showing up on screen, meaning that they have been in action. So it's a matter of time till they score that, but hey, they scored it big the moment they got it. What I worry for YG, they have the tendency to drop it really cold for the next one. Because that happened before, we saw how they got themselves not the biggest, not the this kind of a big number back in the days, like during the league stage. But the moment they score themselves, the chicken, the next one, they go not cold. Really cold. We're talking about turkey cold, where it's going to be the first one to be eliminated without any points whatsoever in 16th place. I hope that's not the case for YG, because we saw the fact that they do, they do feel more confident in Mirama. Now, if a circle just favors the same like previous, maybe they have a shot to push it more further. Yeah, I mean, the circle was also a contributing factor because it was like in the middle of the map, so it gave teams the opportunity to rotate in and they had more space to play with but let's see if we get a tough circle and how would it overcome the kind of challenge you want to be the best you got to beat the rest including beat the circle let's head on to mirama this is gonna be the last map of the day when it comes to grand finals day number one with are excluding this map we still have 12 more to go which gonna get lesser and lesser as the time passes by but we do have the flight path is quite still generous just like how last one did but last one was way more perfect it, this this is but we do have a very generous uh, circle as well in St. Martin and <clears throat> I said that the Patron which we didn't have for the longest time cloud but this time will be the same sort of circle will be a wonky one in time well, I wouldn't mind a wonky one since we got a nice one previously. So tuck it in the corner, anywhere, I'm pretty fine with that. But for the teams, they definitely wouldn't like the kind of circle. But hey, you gotta overcome the challenges at the end of the day. And so far, we speak about challenges. Hmm, kind of nice circle. Uh, the challenge, I guess, will be on the high grounds around the area of uh, power grid. That could be one of the focal points. Might be. Usually, but if it ended up on top of the Machero, it's going to be funny though. But the Machero is going to be see you soon. That's where see you soon actually spot himself the most elimination last time. He had it around to the one line for the league stage. This is sort of this sort of circle for them. Ended up right where they are loving it so much at on top of the Machero. But if the case of YG, I do want to see where they're actually dropping, who actually nearby. It's going to be TPU, STE. Which around Opposa? Opposa is not that famous anymore. He used to be one to come in time, but not so much here. But on the side of the other team, Ozja Esport do have themselves in a circle. Now, I don't know if Ozja Esport want to play Yo Yo or not, because they're not a big fan to play it way early. Well, uh, let's see if they want to do that or if they want to like remain calm and chill. 
since they can wait for the second stage to shrink and then they don't really need to go back out and and coming back in depends how far the circle will be next maybe it's a hardship circle maybe it's not we'll we'll kind of get a sense when it comes to stage three but if you have the circle like how they do have right now we have them on screen i guess you know, just take the time to loot and uh, wait and see it's very dependent on this how the circle goes it's kind of true. This this sort of circle is really unpredictable. By the way, we're talking about extremely unpredictable. If it was like it, it now this one of the things that I really want to mention that nobody actually put it into equation when you compare the teams like the um, the legacy teams or the legendary teams. Like if you guys been in um, PUBG Mobile long enough, like RQ, Athena. <clears throat> BTR until here until now they still have those uh, BTRs the same lineup still and also like Arov or these kind of names right uh, if you guys remember even Golden Cats I think some of you guys do know it happened to be from Myanmar or Cambodia teams now if you compare those times of teams performance and now it's incomparable one of the many reasons is because how the circle behave during those first few seasons of PMCO and back in five or six years ago the first few circles not really the first few circles. the circle for the past few, for the first few years it's always been the same there's no um heart shift there's no transition that's so hard to read out the circle is always shrinks in the center regardless of how many stages there have been so it's quite predictable for the movement of a circle they come back with now it's a very different story of how, how it's a heart shift, how the blue just some ways is just uh, actually turned down the players first or just drowning the players in the blue, uh, depending on which angle they were at. It's so different. There's so many factors uh, impacting the game if you compare it with five or six years ago. So some teams love to compare like oh, I used to, uh, I love those um, D2E or RQ, Ernie, RQ, Athena, Leno. they are more better than now. Personally, I feel like the game have been getting more challenging. It's more difficult to overcome and to read out the uh, rotations due to how erratic the circle behaves and how unpredictable the blue zone is. Oh, but uh, this wasn't predicted by Fern as his back tire is punctured. Not the situation. Oh, not only that. Knocked down by Astro X. So, first blood has been given to Ostia Esports now. No way that Feng is going to be safe on his knees. It's just a matter of time now. Astro X. It's going to be the time to go. And that was a brief one. Well, at least Feng got a bit longer rest than the rest of the team now. <laughs> This is going to be the last map, but at least it got a longer rest before we head into day number two. Yeah, I'm not too sure the rest <laughs> that he wants, but okay, okay. I guess uh, if you want, you want to be positive about it, then yeah, he'll be chilling at the <laughs> sidelines now. I can imagine his phone is like on the desk and he's just like, you know, just waiting for his teammates to, to kind of finish there. Uh, or however position he is in his uh, at, at, at the gaming house. But uh, for TQ, because of that one early elimination, now they need to find more ways to get back. But for Yangu Guy Ghost, doing really good and not have the opportunity to take points out of CU soon. Inside of Loki. Oh, oh. oh my god, he whipped oh. it! Oh, I made it through. I was so close of whiffing to the end, but Loki didn't anticipate the one actually from the outside. See you soon, just finish off Loki. Uh, this is what we just mentioned earlier on. Are they dropping the balls here again for YG? The moment they got so, so high in the sky performance in the record breaking 23 eliminations. Is this the cold turkey that we talked about? Man, that was real scary. Yangu got to go now. Try to fight back. Romeo Boy, second floor, Mr. MVP. No healing utilities. It's going to be real hard for him. And I guess, like, what you kind of predicted. Bought the chicken dinner and now became one of the early teams to be eliminated. Yes, they got one point, but um, the gap within them and uh, Playbook Esports is only eight points. God. Uh, this is where we don't like to be right in this certain circumstances. Ah, oh, YG. 
Well, at least the entire team get to rest a bit longer. <laughs> that's something that bright that's going on, right? You get to see the brighter side of this story. And that's going to be them having a very good night and a very good dinner a bit earlier than the rest of all the teams that's competing right now. Yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's the bright side of it. But uh, yeah, um, besides that, they'll be sitting at the sideline hoping for uh, teams to not catch them. And uh, that's the best that they can do for now. Nothing much that they can uh, do about... Uh, Changing the course of how that might change um, the points, just depending on the other teams. But for Enigma, now we have them in San Martin, and that is within the circle still. Best part about San Martin is that they will have easier access to the power grid area. So as long as they can keep teams away from them from behind, uh, moving into the power grid area will put them in a strong position. Well, for the side of a squeeze, it possibly that's the case for them. The way they're actually rotating and directing themselves. And you mentioned about Power Grid. So far, it's still inside of a circle. But nobody actually see this one coming. If they just pull the circle... If the circle just pulled into uh, some, onto Nova till the end of it, and Tiku decided to stay, that's going to be a big win for them and gatekeeping because it's just such a huge shift later on. They've just a hard shift towards the left side because all the teams, like how you were thinking before, Cloud, is just focusing on Power Grid. And everybody just... Make sure they will be on top of PUBG as soon as they can. But that's going to be overcrowding at this very moment. We're 15 teams. We still have stage number two. But it's just too little space for all the teams to share. With TTQ players being shot from a fighting out. What might be snipe. We don't see the execution done yet. So there's no translation of points. But TTQ, I mean, they don't have to rush too much. But they definitely need to think about how to defend this. Yeah, I mean, uh, power grid. Um, might be the focal point, but because of the hardship to the left, right? So I'm not sure if Power Grid will still be the the area that all these teams want to access now. If you're already there, then that's fine. But if you're not, then maybe, maybe not. So we'll see. It really depends on the choices of these teams and the timing of their rotation too. Like what MFG is doing right now. I guess they're scouting for their next spot, but they haven't really found one yet. That's why they're split out. And uh, yep, that was uh, another confirmation in case you just join us. Yangu had to go from glory of 23 eliminations, this time only one at number 16. I see you right on top of see you soon here. Yeah? Got quite a view up on the side of Star uh, Stranger's eSport. But it's just, it's a bit of uh, more rock than we hoped for on top of this mountain. It's a great view from above. Yes, but you can see directly whoever actually sharing the foot of the mountain with you. But they spot out if players give a couple of taps from afar. If only you actually do have the eight times scope, it would be way better this circumstance. But six times is more than enough. But for Myth Clan, on the other hand, they will take the patrol for their, a bit of a pit stop. And everybody will wait for the next circle. I have a feeling maybe we have another team drop in stage number three. But major drops as per usual is going to be stage number four. We're going to possibly down to only nine or eight teams when it comes to stage number four. Yeah, it might be it might be that kind of gameplay this time. Because um, it is looking to be a faster Mirama as compared to before. Even though like you have 100% land kind of circle. So maybe it's also the fact of like, oh, it's the last game. Or maybe some of the teams realize that, you know, we got to start to put in the, uh, the risk whether it uh, returns to us or not, if not, we'll be just too far away. That's why we see a lot of eliminations happen. Expect more to come because there is a circle around here happening by Enigma. And there are a good amount of teams around them if we look at the minimap. And looking at the circle again, nobody is in, the, uh, in that area just outside of Power Grid, that unnamed area where that, there's a compound. So maybe if they can rush in there and if they can evade the quarter, could probably be a nice spot. I wish TQ actually take that one spot right on the northwest, right, of Power Grid there. They actually do have a chance around Montenegro either. They didn't stay. Nobody actually coming up from that side. The angle's too vacant. If somebody actually wants to take advantage of it, it's going to be TQ. But I think TQ is just way too deep with their navigation on the northern side. They might actually not back down. Now we do have a squeeze, it do lose a couple of members along the process, but it's going to be a, a okay, no problem. So Lufa will try to pick up their members. Myth Clan, 
also seems to be having one member down here. I'm not sure what is happening. It's going to be Ozja Esport boxing down to Myth Clan with two teams taking them out at the same time. Another one's right on top of them, but it's going to be hard to view since they are on top of them and they are inside the warehouse. Okay, here we go. Another big fight is about to happen. Astro X knocked down. And uh, Myth Clan probably looking at him. Ozja Esports. Oh, okay. There's a uh, Skyrim coming in, but he didn't stop for Astro X because the risk is just too big. Now that Stranger Esports is on Tardis Hill looking at these two teams. Koopa. <coughs> TTQ. Astro X next. Ozja Esports start losing members, and TTQ, they just wanted to step into the safe zone on Northern side. Being denied their entrance entirely by the other teams. Ozja Esports, on the other hand, quite a difficult rush here towards Myth Clan. Devon bleeding out. There's going to be two members left for Devon and Joseph still alive. But Ozja, they need to move in, in as a unit. If they start to give away their bodies one by one, then Sky just start to push solo. They're going to start to lose men in vain here. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so I guess because of the false fight. They must find a way to win the fight. And uh, no choice now. Let's see if Skyrim can get an opening. Nade across. Oh, evaded. Okay. So no knock onto Davan. Davan's still alright. And Davan has Joseph on the other side too. And now Davan has this wall. Okay, Joseph. Okay. This could be the surprise. Wait. Waiting for Ozja. Okay, one goes out. Starts to shoot. And he gets one knocked down. But the rest follow now. Davan. Myth Clan still have a fight in them, but Red Bull cannot overpick. Too many eyes watching on this side. They definitely attracted too much unwanted attention. It's going to be the compass for all the teams with their, sh their shooting around the corner. The audio has been heard over. And Scotty definitely interested in this as well. Strangers, if they're not being careful, there's going to be another team creeping up behind. So they cannot be too tunnel vision to us. What beneath them? Monster Esports, on the other hand, trying to take out on the bomb. Myth Clan last player still stand. Joseph finished off and Devon have to flee, but where? Oh yeah, no space behind him is Stranger Esports. He probably is Austria Esports. Ah, oh, Devon! Sandwich now. It's just a matter of who will get a point out of him with the last, last tick of health. He makes a jump shot, but he knows that that's his last ditch. And a Myth Clan out at number 13 without any points. Devon not able to pull off the insane win against Austria Esports. MFG next, possibly. But now, PB is spotted out. Oh man, another team that seems to be in cold turkey mode right now is going to be PBE. Despite they got a good run in early of this stage in the Grand Finals today. Back to back chicken and now finishing it. Ending the race of day number one seems to be it bit more difficult than did they hope for for the start of PBE. Oh man, PBE. Just as when they had a good start this round, it's not the round that they would have wanted. Okay, exit passes by, but Michi alone, but I guess right now MFG is probably just one of his troubles because he has the blue to deal with too. The nade will be evaded. Yahiko tries to pin him back, but the blue will do its own work. So Yahiko can focus on to getting across the road into the circle. Well, now he swapped places with Mewtwo. Mewtwo is now the one to guard Michi from getting across. Definitely in play and wonderful user. But PBE being limited with zero eliminations, it's going to be cost them quite a bit. But the gap in between them and YG is still going to be open up. And it's still going to be there. YG is still going to stand number one unless GE start to step up their game here with trio that remains on the and on the list that we have right here plus two for the elimination 68 to catch up to 82 is within reach but they have to close up with a chicken plus a double digit elimination yeah what's not helping them is that they have three players only but they do have the uh, power grid so they can come from this high ground to the low ground but the next challenger will be harami bros in front of them so this will be an interesting fight as well harami bros with a full squad and they have the 2-2 split and oh, it's not a 2 -two split there's another team the ai esports on the northern side so they have ai esports on the north on the south is harami bros so either way they might need to clear the sides of clearing why just randomly clearing things that don't need to be cleared i mean like it's great but sometimes wasting too much resources is not so great 
um, being a bit more paranoid, it's going to be not reflecting productiveness in this map as well. Holy Lounge on Dread Esports. We're thinking about how to get into two of Akira's lair here. They have their eyes locked into a side of Holy Lounge. He's thinking about if I try to wiggle it out. Well, they start shooting. Well, they're definitely shooting. Yeah, you can see those splashes on the floor on the ground. But Holy Lounge realized that he cannot cut across straight. He needs to make a bit of a witty navigation. Yes, just to make sure that everything is not too straightforward and predictable by 2 on 4. Akira. But Moy, on the other hand, thinks mm. differently. He wants to go straight for it. It's not really that, uh, you know, bits around the bush person for Moy. Well, to one for Akira, not beating around the bush for sure. Because now they're going up to finish up the job here. Now Moy is going to be the first one. But the counter came in onto his two eyes. Who are not red kid had to do his business. But the splat on the red kid by Holy Lanju. But oh, oh, oh. Holy Lanju don't land onto the blue because he's super duper low. But luckily enough for him, he's able to break in time. Now it's only Wako for 2 1 for Akira, who's gonna come in next. Holy Lanju. Only got gyps there. At least he got himself some upgrade of loot, but he has to be fast and careful. Because it might be a bait, buggy on top, and gyps are gonna go as well. He's gonna leave gyps to be on foot. It's a bit too risky for both of them to be on top of that buggy for now. GE spotted out the audio cues, and Jep, well. Well, they try to make do here for Dread. It's not going to be easy for them to just step into the safe zone. As MFG is slowly closing in the gap, here, Montenovo already left the circle. It's going to be in between Montenovo and Power Grid. Those high mountains in between those two towns. It's where every single team wants to be at. MFG, here it comes! Wow, okay, but the top is really behind. Providing the support. Let's get the knockdown, but now unnoticed there, the top one last hit will be able to take him out, but he's able to land the final blow onto exit, and the top wins the fight, and he'll be able to revive all his teammates. Speaking of his teammates, still bleeding out, but exquisite it here comes once more. The opp opportunity to get himself a chicken dinner is here for the take. Two teams, a tree, make a full spot. And Rami Bro is going to be one of it. As well as Guzit. And as well as Stranger Z Sport. But Drat Oli Lanju, this is going to be tough for him to be alive. As GE with a trio will force themselves forward and try to finish off the rest of the bleeding out and the dying team of Dread. Oh, Oli Lanju. Oh, Wes. Oh, wow. Okay. But they have Exquisite actually on top, shooting down. So that kind of helped as well. But somehow GE still won the fight and they only got one knock so they can still reset even though the other teams are looking at them from the high ground. And now Ichi comes in just to make sure that no one else is around but they're still in the side of Exquisite. GE. Five eliminations. It will be enough for them to close the gap. Not still not. They still need to secure at least 20 points be up there minimum is going to be around 16 points whatsoever but back to us also jay sport sde newbie sde lost one man they had a full squad before uh, we haven't seen the see you soon to start to take any actions a lot of fights those actually in the northern side but less than 20 seconds now we're heading into stage number six and when it comes to stage number six the ones that's been quiet for all this well will start to be loud after this yeah, it's definitely going to be a banger here. Now that the GE has this chance to take the number one, but without the circle, it's going to be a big fight for them between them and Exquisite. And yes, Exquisite now with the high ground. But GE, they managed to slowly hike up, pushing back Exquisite. But this is a fight that they cannot avoid. But do keep an eye on the south side too. You ask about see you soon. You're asking where they are, where their action is. Well, they might be showing it soon. Speaking of soon, soon is now at the very current moment since time is taking off. 20 seconds to go and it's going to be less and less land for these guys to play. Lucky the terrain is uneven. There's going to be a bit of a pits and ditch down there for them to take a bit of a hide and covers for themselves. Axe QS spotted out Master Ichi GE in trouble. But a bit too busy for pushing forward for the side of the exquisite where they didn't actually realize that some teams watching them at their back GE Smart reposition himself on top spotted out Nathan but there's AI Esports on the other end he has to be extra careful for GE 
Yeah, and GE now, they need to save Ichi though. But Ichi finished out by Super Pickles and Smile almost knocked. It was a close one for Smile. Now it's only Smile and West and they don't have the circle. The blue is closing in. No space. They do have this vehicle, this smoked up vehicle, but it's going to be a big risk if they choose to use that to drive past by Exquisite. Here it comes. Waiting for Smile to start to make an opening to the side of Exquisite, but Exquisite, bash shot at getting those chickens now. And a bit too hesitant to climb themselves up towards the high elevation, but see you soon. They're playing at the foot of the mountain. Arami, bro, here comes the Nates flying over, and they responded well and answered. Hit on Lulu Tiv, and see you soon. We're trying to shut down on Dill, who got himself a quite an angle down there and around oh. the corners, and he do it well. Oh man, Dill and the rest of Harami bros are defending the ground well against see you soon. Only Lulu Tiv on the other side. And Federales looking to land this nade across, hooking it up, tossing it, but Federal shot down by JJ Esports, they have to come in as third party. Speaking of third party, Miner coming in, a man in problem. Strangers have been up in the ground and in the mountains for the longest time. Now all they need to do is take a couple of actions and start to do something. Make sure their eliminations will actually go up when it comes to those numbers. What the outrage! Here comes a spray! He whiffed it! Wait, how? Imam is actually giving so much support. We didn't see that one coming. Oh, but we do see CU soon eliminated now. Now, Stranger Esports, newbie against Dale. Just right below him. Don't know how Dale is going to make it out of this. MM is on the other side. Rage is on his knees as he makes his way towards a range. Tosses the nade on the Miner. This nade could be on top of him. Whoa! Into the face of Miner! Oh, newbie down on the ground next, bleeding out. Mem and the rest of Arame bro have to pick each other up. They don't have enough time. They need to make it fast. But lucky enough for them, strangers also in the same boat. They'll have to heal themselves up, going for the flank side, going for the north angle shot. But Scud is not making it easy for him. And Mem, on the other hand, have to take the pressure in with those nades flying over his head. Here comes a return of the favor, but didn't hit nobody. This is vital for Harami Bros this round. But oh. STE will not go down without a fight. Oh, but Dale shot 762 for the side. Now alerting 762 about someone just right below. And now it's only Dale with range already knocked. Now Dale. No way for him to get out of this. High ground against him. The blue behind him. Still, probably just a matter of time. And Miner will make sure the time is now. Harami Bros out. Close enough. But at least he still got himself in the top seven here. Yeah, not the, the result we hoped for. But it's way better than the last one where they were one of the first few to get eliminated early. It's definitely an improvement compared to the last one for Harami Bros. But next is going to be a squeeze. Can they finally finish off with a chicken? With TQ gathering around, trying to take dominance over the circle. In the center, it's going to be between these two teams. Uh, Austria are going to stack up as a four or three at the very bottom. It might gatekeep Stranger Z spot. But GE, look at the spread. Despite the only two players, can they hold their ground? Yeah, I still. Amazing that GE is still in the game, if you ask me, because Exquisite, the last we saw them, they were right on top of Genesis Esports, but now they're making their own moves as well, as the quarter is facing up against Exquisite on the other side, but because of how rough the terrain is, not going to be easy to have a good sight, but uh, we're back onto GE, sharing the same compound as AI Esports, who we have not seen the entire round. Master Vape, here comes Nate, crossing over the other side. Naughty boy, I think he got no clue where are these players. It's so hot to be in the center here because it's going to be 260 degrees and you are running out of supplies and resources. Tough spot to be a naughty boy, but at the same time, this is what it takes to take and uh, just to kill those chickens away. Osja Esports, on the other hand, playing a bit of a fight. Oh, we oh. saw that name flying from LCE across the sky. 7 6 to hit the mark and hit the spot right at the perfect time. My god. Oh. And Red Bull with a perfect nade as well to knock down Miner. But from the other end, the top, knocking out the MVP, Red Bull of Osja Esports. Doing their opponent a favor as well. And now Skynet pushed down to the lower ground. Stranger Esports still take the high ground, but the day <gasps> from the top eliminates Osja Esports. I mean, these two players, 762 and 
top is just amazing when it comes to calculation of the trajectory distance and velocity when it comes to physics they are incredible but can the same do for the side of popeye tq they lost one man bleeding out here comes another nick coming from us it is going to be fun to watch it from this view thank you so much observers but look at it flies right on top and scotty finish off from the top below coming up from the side of a sea the one that the sidelines here having some trouble the one that did not they See it coming, GE and Naya Esports, it's not engaging at all. Oh man, but speaking about engaging now, Exquisite is engaging with teams just on the left side of them. Lufa is going to come in onto Popeye, Popeye, DBS. And now he has backup too, Nathan, scouting, gathering information. They, they know they have the numbers, so they have the man advantage now against the teams just right across them. Stranger Esports, first of the members of TQ! Just like that, minor one spray is all he needs to eliminate all of them. Turn eliminations. Asti E has been amazing. I cannot wait to see 762 to toss another nade here. And Super Peacles being knocked down. Excuse us. I really hope it's crazy. Can't secure one chicken. But Lufa, boy, that magazines of those DBS will, will not work at this distance. He needs to swap over to his rifles. But he's a bit worried if there's somebody nearby. And swapping over to his rifle, but his magazine clips his reserve is running low as well. And they have to be extra careful, but AIE spawn and GE happen to be right on top of them across the other side. As oh, TE and XQS, only one team will emerge for victory here. Oh yes, because right now we're at stage 9, as newbie knocked down by Super Pickles, Lufa. At the forefront, he will lead the charge now against Gardi. That's it, DBS game time! And DBS, bang, 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 boom, 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 but he still went down. The follower came by. Nice back up there. And now Yue is super duper low. Yue needs to reset as well. Super pickers behind him. Let's win the fight. The high ground does favor on the minor. On the right side, there's still newbies. Super picker push back. And now looks like they're going to swap positions. One day set across. And that will knock down 762, leaving minor alone at the top. Minor, he lasted so long in the last few games, but he can do it again. Here comes a push. He wants to spray. He misses. Exquisite. They got four men this time. There's no way things can go wrong here. Oh, man. Exquisite. What an amazing fight they had earlier on. But now they need to reset quick still. Two players now, but they should still have time. Genesis Esports on the other end of the circle. Wow, we still have the final member of AI Esports. Not moving yet, but the flu might force him to go. Let's hear uh, that's Master Vape on the right side. But focus now is on to GE. And exquisite as GE comes in. And GE gets knocked out the UA. Nathan comes in. Ooh. Nathan dancing with Master Vape, but Nathan lost the fight. Oh my god, that's two-way fight just now, but that was just unfortunate. Exquisite is down to mana to mana. Super Pickles don't have any sort of uh, healing uh, utilities. Lufa trying to be picked up, but Super Pickles will finish off by the blue. Not like this! Not like this! The chicken! Oh, oh my god! AI Spot just might pack this chicken with the help of the blue zone. They don't oh have any god. healing items. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a round it was! AIE Sports with Master Vape, Naughty Boy, Zizek, and Tofi to get this chicken dinner. We always talked about it for multiple rounds now. That one guy, that one guy, maybe can score the chicken dinner. It didn't happen until the final round. What an insane day it is! <sighs> I feel like. Exquisite and chicken just don't mix, man. It just, it won't mix, no matter how the condition is for them. No matter how hard they try to get the chicken, it's just the blue zone. I'll have to spoil it. And I won't play it. It's so much work. Oh my god, they don't have any healing items. And if that player just there who pushed in, in the very last minute, didn't actually go down. They can actually still score those chicken. I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not pointing, but it's just... There's so many factors into that. What kind of chicken is that? I mean, if you want to look on the bright side, there's no bonus for 100 US dollars bonus for the chicken dinner, but yet still, it's a chicken here. And the best moments are here now shown on this highlight with AI Esports. No, this is Master Vape Esports. Nine eliminations in this round. Man, this is insane.
I can't even comprehend this game here right now. Today has been just a mixed feeling of everything. So, I mean, the ending was amazing. Congratulations for the start of AI Esports. Definitely well, well deserving, I guess, in this case, Spice. Well, his perseverance is a virtue, and it just seems to be fruitful to be playing as a patience game, but. When I said that there's nothing can go wrong when Exquisite have a full squad here, you can see it so clear, as clear as a day. But they still did not score that chicken. What the heck is happening here? Man, yeah, I mean, if we just look at the highlights, right? Okay, if uh, Master Wade didn't win that 1v1, then it would be a totally different multiverse. But he did, and all of a sudden, I think he didn't expect this to happen as well. He didn't expect that. Just look at Master Babe. Like, he's still looking around like, okay, where's my opponent? I'm ready to shoot. But all of a sudden, he got the chicken dinner. But the one that got MVP is from Stranger Esports. Scotty, three eliminations, 1,130 damage. That is a whooping a lot of damage for three eliminations with three knockouts and two assists. But man, Master Babe, he is my personal MVP as well. Crazy stuff. For me personally, it's gonna be 762 for STE. The way he actually dropped the was huge one. It was well perfect time uh, hand grenades. But for Scotty, I feel like a bit sad. Because I look at the damage dished out, if you compare it with the players that got the MVP around seven or eight eliminations before, this is way more than that that he actually contributes to the side of the damage. It just shows that how many players actually steals away his um, halfway through damage players or the enemies and then being knocked by a different team entirely. There's so many teams that actually try to steal away his praise that he actually invested so much on. But when it comes to <coughs> even the total damage of one single player of STE, it's more than the total damage of the entire team of AIE Sport. You know what? I don't know what to say. But this is a chicken is a chicken. Regardless of what the situation, a chicken is a chicken. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be at their gaming houses, like, thinking to themselves that, what? We got the chicken dinner? Really? Man, two eliminations and 724 damage. That is a lot for two eliminations, uh, three knockouts. Who needs assist? I mean, you already got two eliminations, so that is... <laughs> it, it's hard to find an assist from there. But anyway, I mean, you can imagine like how crazy they are at the gaming house. I wish we have a footage of how they celebrated this insane chicken dinner. No. Usually, if that's the case, we've seen it before and I've seen it before. The players will not celebrate, they will laugh about it, laugh their ass off because of how incredibly unexpected kind of chicken that they might end up getting into it. So I think they're probably gonna laughing, uh, they're gonna laugh about how they ended up getting those chickens instead of the other side of the team. But we do have. Um, all the players actually get finished off by the by by the the other players. Nobody actually got finished off by the blues at this time. Yeah, but uh, on the other stats, right? If we look at this, eight headshots. So that's on the lower side. We normally see more than ten, but we got four airdrops looted. This is the highest so far. Normally it's about two, three, one, but four is also another record here. I must say. And uh, for the others, I guess, um, longest elimination distance at 375, it is Mirama anyway. So I guess a number that is uh, kind of expected. Well, yeah, I mean, um, I was hoping we hit the 400 over for longest elimination distance since it's Mirama map. But for headshots, I mean, maybe because of the very big map that they kind of have difficulty to spot it on for those headshots. But when it comes to those chicken and those unpredictable ending that we have well uh, uh, squeeze it still ended up at number one but <laughs> regardless of how they got themselves those chicken AI spot land themselves at number four due to how little of elimination they actually scored in the very last minute now now I don't blame them because there's not many teams coming out where they came from around the northern side before yeah I mean a chicken's a chicken right so you definitely take it and uh, for the others hmm so, Stranger Esports, 14, elim 14 points. They had a good position in this round. That's how they got the uh, 10 eliminations. Genesis Esports with 13. AI Esports with 12. Oh, man, they're number four. You've got to think about it. So, this is the lowest ranking for a team that got the chicken dinner that I have seen. And other than that, uh, the quarter seven, also Esports seven, 
And I'll see you soon 6 Harami Bros 5 But on the other end though Playbook Esports 0 So that's gonna change a little bit With uh, the overall charts Now that Playbook Esports is at number 3 Now push down two games in a row In the very last minute when it comes to Miramar YG Now they have to be glad the fact that GE Did not survive as long as they hoped for I mean they definitely not hoping for GE to last that long anyways Because of the two points gap that, That's a super small margin but if you look at third and fourth, this is where the gap have to, a bit of a stretch in between them. So top three, it's going to be a different tier entirely. But we're waiting for tomorrow, a bit of a comeback moment for the mill pack, especially when it comes to second page here. I have a feeling tomorrow is going to be a different, different momentum will be displayed by the teams at the very bottom. We're talking about maybe 11 to 16 plays. Yeah, looking forward to see that because we still have very, very uh, good teams there. And like to work well here as a good team as well. And uh, see you soon, have their moment, so they could probably catch up. So keep an eye on those teams on page number two because we have 12 more games to go in the grand finals. And with the 12 games, probably more insane things can happen. <laughs> you don't have a word for it because I'm looking at the numbers, right? AIE Sports, the only team that's on the second page, is called the Chicken. I still at 13 plays, but maybe tomorrow will be a different story. But yeah, I don't, I can, I, I cannot move on from that last map still. But it is, I agree with the notices that have been commented below. It's a back-to-back -back contradicting of elimination when it comes to these two games. Very high eliminations with Chicken Dinner, and the lowest elimination in the Chicken Dinner moment between these two Mirama maps. Very contradictory, but man, today has been amazingly entertaining. Yeah, you got like what? The double chicken dinner back to back and then you have the most eliminations in a single round and then you had the least eliminations with the chicken dinner. And that was an insane chicken dinner just to top that off as well. I mean, there, there's everything in package just within six games. I don't know what else can come up tomorrow. It feels like a roller coaster ride. The moment we see it's a wow, it's gonna be oh in the next one. But it's done for day number one of Grand Finals. We still have more to go tomorrow. See you guys, same place, same time for tomorrow. Bye.